हेलो हेलो आवाज आ रही है हेलो हेलो अरे सम स्टूडेंट्स स्टार्ट कर दो हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लेट मी नो इफ माय ऑडियो वीडियो इज फाइन आई नो यू आर स्टडिंग सिंग्स लॉन्ग लॉन्ग टाइम सो प्लीज लेट मी नो If the audio video is fine, please let me know in the comments. Okay, on my side it's absolutely fine. Can we start? Just give me one uh comment, nod, something like that, so that I can start the class. Comments. Can I start, bicho? Just give us a minute. I'm not happy. Take it. I'm not able to see your uh, comments, so that we are just fixing that thing. All right, now I can see your comments. So let's start. All right. Fine. Thank you. Good evening, Aditi. Good evening, Aditya. Rehan, Doctor Sneha. So okay. Let's start. Good evening, Bacho. Very good evening. Very good evening. Let's start the class. All right. Not all the positive changes feel positive in the beginning, right? I know it's the end of the day and you're studying since long, long hours. But yes, we have to continue, right? The courage to continue that matters. So we have to continue, you know. So I'm going to give you a very smooth kind of four hours of session, right? So if you want a bit of break, we can start with the uh, nerve muscle physiology. Uh, the recorded videos are available. I know whenever you need a break, just note down the timing of the video. You take a break. It's okay, right? And tomorrow, just watch that part only. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's start with a positive smile. Smile, everybody. Smile like anything. Okay. And let's. Uh, start with the nerve muscle physiology because I know the general physiology is going to be easier for you guys. So we are going to start with the nerve muscle physiology, then respiratory uh, and the CVS CNS first. And as soon as our efficiency is going to go down, we are going to cover the rest of the topics which are less important, but definitely the questions are going to come from them. So let's start with the nerve muscle physiology. We know our cell membrane is going to be partial. That means it shows partiality. Why I'm saying so? Because some ions are able to diffuse through the cell membrane during the rest and some ions are not able to diffuse. So we are going to convert these two things into diffusible ions and non-diffusible. We are going to divide them into these two groups, right? So who are the friends to whom this VIP pass is given by the cell membrane? This is nothing but the potassium and chloride. So please remember the potassium is fully permeable. It is fully permeable during the rest and each and every word of mine is important because we are going to uh, you know read with the whole of enthusiasm all the important things will be told here okay and the question paper has been already made <laughs> and please remember you have to put all the right answers over there I want my bacha party to get 17 out of 17 marks in physiology at least okay so potassium 
fully permeable during the rest and please remember potassium is more inside wants to go outside and that's why my cell polarity is going to be negative most of the time right no personal questions are allowed over here right then comes the chloride chloride is partially permeable right it's like 45 percent permeable so yes it is important for the rmp but not as much as the potassium is important so if i have to choose between chloride and potassium whom should i choose i should choose the potassium all right what about the non-diffusible ions all other uh, ions even the protein phosphates they are non-diffusible so i hope you got the and annotated PDF. So you can just mention over here, protein, phosphate, bicarbonate, everything is non-diffusible except the potassium and the chloride, right? Gibbs Jonan, what it says that because of this non-diffusible ions, because of this non-diffusible ions, my permeability of the diffusible ions or the distribution of diffusible ion is going to be hampered. So please remember, if it talks about diffusion and distribution or the diffusible ion, non-diffusible ion, it cannot be any other than donance effect. If you have DDD, then it is going to be donance. D for donance. Please remember if they talk about diffusion, distribution, diffusible ion, non-diffusible ion, it is going to be donance effect. Please remember that diffusible ions are also known as permeant ions. So non-diffusible can be called as non-permeant ion also. So either they can give you diffusible, non-diffusible or give you permeant, non-permeant. It is going to be the same thing. Now, two things you have to remember for this slide that the cell is a bag of potassium. What is the cell? Cell is the bag of potassium. Sindelafil, <laughs> you should change your name though. But yeah, absolutely right. Cell is a bag of potassium. And the second thing is our cells are floating in a sea like water. Sea water is salty, right? And the salt means sodium and chloride. So please remember the cell. Inside the cell, I'm going to call that fluid as ICM. That is intracellular fluid. Cell is a bag of potassium. So cation. T is looking like a positive, N is for negative, right? So negatively charged ion is called as an ions, positively charged ion cations inside the cells. Positively charged ion, which are the maximum uh, positively charged ion? Potassium followed by magnesium. Why I'm writing magnesium? If the question is asked, which of the following divalent cation is more inside the cell? If the potassium is given in the option, you're not going to mark the potassium because they're going to ask the divalent. Even if the potassium is given in the option. If they ask divalent, you are going to mark the magnesium. If they just asked about which of the following is more inside the uh, cell, then you are going to mark the potassium. What about the anions that are more? Please remember the maximum ion anions are going to be phosphate followed by proteins, right? Which are non-diffusible. What about ECF? We have talked about the salt. Salt is sodium and chloride, right? With that, please make a note of the calcium also as well as the bicarbonate. All of them are more outside. Why this is important? This is important because uh, as soon as these cells are going to move, that means whenever I'm going to open up the channels, there are going to be changes which are going to occur and that is important for the signs that are going to be given for my nursed equation or for their equilibrium potential per se, right? What I mean by that, uh, let me check. All right, so... Let's uh, solve that over here itself. That if I say that I open up the sodium channel via giving the stimulus, sodium is more where? Sodium is more outside, right? And where it wants to go, we always want to go on the other side, right? Ek bar exam ho jai bas. Hum us taraf jana chate hai na? So we always go on the, uh, want to go on the other side. So sodium also wants to go inside the cell. Whenever I open the sodium channel, the sodium is containing the positive charge. As soon as the sodium channels are going to be opened, High concentration to low concentration movement is going to occur. Sodium is going to come inside, which is a positively charged ion. Positively charged ion coming inside the cell, the cell will become positive. Also, same with the calcium. Calcium is more outside. We know that. And as soon as I'm going to open up the calcium channel, what is going to happen? Calcium also enters inside and make the cell positive. On the other hand, if I open up what thing? If I open up, they only gave me two colors. Okay. Minimalism is followed over here in the cerebellum also, I see. Then the chloride, what is going to happen in the chloride? The chloride is negatively charged and as soon as it comes inside the cell, what is going to happen? It will make the cell negative. 
please remember that same with the potassium potassium though it is a positively charged ion but it wants to go outside and as soon as it goes outside what is going to happen the positivity left the cell the cell will become negative so please remember if i ask you who create the inhibitory post synaptic potential the opening of which channel the efflux of potassium and the influx of chloride is going to cause the ipsp right so uh beta three classes are going on simultaneously niche just is floor ke niche jahan par main studio hai wahan par na smiley ma'am ki class chal rahi hai so time being ke liye manage kar lo 8 o'clock mein hum studio change kar lenge aapke liye all right pp fine all right so next uh epsp if i talk about epsp excitatory post synaptic potential what is going to happen so please remember the sodium and calcium sodium and calcium they are going to be what thing they are going to create the excited potential right be excited next equilibrium potential or nernst equation please remember this is of single ion that cannot be the rmp rmp is different equilibrium potential is different equilibrium potential may we are going to be only worried about one single ion right so net flux whenever the net flux is going to be zero we are going to call it as equilibrium potential that means the equilibrium has been reached right so that is called as no flow that is net flux is zero you have to remember one formula what is that formula the formula is rt by zf upon rt by zf into log of natural log of uh, concentration outside upon concentration inside but we have simplified that formula for the calculation that is 61 upon z 61 upon z this is for the equilibrium potential is equal to 61 upon z log 10 of concentration outside upon concentration inside concentration outside upon concentration inside please remember outside is going to be on the top and inside is going to be on the bottom and how many zeros are going to be there that is going to be my value what i mean by that let's say iska value aaya aapka 10 hai na so what is the log 10 of 10 how many zeros are there one so this value is going to be one right if i say log 10 of 100 that is going to be two right if the value came somewhere in between let's say 50 or 60 that is going to be one point something you know that right so that you have to multiply with 61 and you are going to get the value because the calculation can come as the question in the exam so please remember this formula ultimately important now what is the difference between equilibrium potential and rmp equilibrium potential yes abhishek it is enough don't ask this question whatever you can grab just grab it and keep it at least till the exam all right rmp ep and uh, the permeability you have to take the permeability into the consideration also which were not bothered about the uh permeability into the equilibrium potential and we are going to submit all these ions which are permeable during the rest so please remember this is given by the ghk equation that is nothing but goldman hodgkin katz equation nobody is going to ask you the equation just remember goldman's hodgkin katz equation just remember the name okay he gave the rmp rmp is of three words so please remember ghk it is of three alphabets also right equilibrium potential given by the nernst equilibrium all right now solve this question fatafat says all this question dusting membrane potential of the nerve fiber is mainly because of which one of the following ion uh its equilibrium potential fatafat say yes absolutely wonderful 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 all right so i got the answer from jay abhishek gautam dr smiley okay <laughs> prakash pandya all right everybody absolutely wonderful so you are going to mark the potassium if i don't give you the potassium as the option then if the potassium is not there what you will mark then you are going to mark no 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 you are not going to mark the magnesium no you are going to mark the chloride please remember divalent cation more inside that is magnesium but that has nothing to do with the rmp rmp pe agar main puchu to kya bataoge potassium followed by chloride followed by sodium potassium atps all right now we have talked just now about the positivity and negativity i told you ipsp that means inhibitory potentials are created by Uh, chloride influx and potassium efflux so see over here potassium ke aage value ke aage negative sign is there and even in front of the chloride value the negative sign is there 
राइट दैट मीन्स दे आर क्रिएटिंग द नेगेटिव पोटेंशियल है ना नेगेटिविटी को बाहर करना चाहिए देन वॉट अबाउट द सोडियम एंड कैल्शियम दे आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट द पॉजिटिविटी दैट मीन्स दे आर गोइंग टू एक्साइट द सेल right you have to remember the value s for sodium s for 60 so please remember sodium ke sath sath kaun chalta hai value mein the chloride but it is having negative 70 mv value all right then comes the potassium that is minus 90 which is also the rmp of cardiac muscle as well as skeletal muscle please remember these are same values similar similar easy to remember and calcium is going to be having the maximum value how to remember it is having two on the top so please remember it is going to be almost uh, maximum that means almost double that of the sodium so please remember that ipsp epsp humne already discuss kar liya tha chloride and uh, potassium is going to be causing the ipsp whenever i'm going to open up these channels right and epsp is because of the sodium and the calcium sodium and calcium all right can we move on myocardium mein aa rahe bachche aa rahe abhi नर्स पोटेंशियल ऑफ सोडियम इज फटाफट से आंसर दो वी डोंट हैव टाइम राइट एब्सोल्युटली वंडरफुल 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 व्हाई यू आर सेइंग पॉजिटिविटी व्हाई बिकॉज़ द सोडियम इज पॉजिटिवली चार्ज आयन एंड माय बच्चा पार्टी नोस दैट व्हेन द पॉजिटिवली चार्ज आयन कम्स इनसाइड द सेल द होल एनवायरमेंट बिकम्स पॉजिटिव है ना सो दैट्स हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न विद द पॉजिटिविटी राइट एंड नॉट द -61 यू आर गोइंग टू राइट द approximately nearby values hai you na know? a little progress each day adds up to big results right the exam is nearby everybody feels anxious even i feel anxious for my bachcha party if the exam comes i become nervous ki kya result aayega mere bachche pass honge nahi honge right so even we feel the anxiety even before the class we feel the anxiety kaise manage hoga kya hoga ye hoga but we know everything is going to be okay hai na everything is going to be okay you don't have to give up hai na it's like a war and you are standing right on the field right you don't have to give up just continue right coming to the rmp i told you rmp mein we are going to summit all the equilibrium potential multiplied by their permeability two things are taken into the consideration just remember these values very very important they can be asked as a direct question neurons ka minus 70 mv neuron bolo nerve bolo one and the same thing all right so neurons nerve minus 70 skeletal muscle cardiac muscle fourth generation ke liye we require a lot of higher potential difference so please remember they are going to be maximally negative that means minus 90 mv talking about smooth muscle it is going to be minus 50 mv smooth muscle little bit uh, contraction is there force of contraction is not that much high as compared to the skeletal muscle so please remember it is going to be minus 50 and what about the sa node and br what is br br is nothing but basal electrical rhythm basal electrical rhythm which is seen in the git and please remember who produce this basal electrical rhythm the interstitial cells of kahal kahal was the name of scientist he was spanish jaise hum mohito bolte hain waise kahal bolte hain you can remember the way you want to remember just mark it correctly in the exam hai na kajal bolo kajal bolo jo bolna hai bolo just mark it correct okay so please remember this is having fluctuating rmp how i used to remember base maker cells of heart है ना एंड पेस मेकर सेल्स ऑफ जीआईटी खाना और दिल लगाना किससे दिल लगाना है पढ़ाई से राइट दीज टू थिंग्स आर फ्लक्चुएटिंग ऑल द टाइम है ना खाने की चीजें बदलती रहती है और दिल लगाने की चीजें भी बदलती रहती है सो फ्लक्चुएटिंग आर एम सो प्लीज प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट है ना सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी माइनस फोर्टी टू माइनस सिक्सटी दैट इज दर एम पी विच इज फ्लक्चुएटिंग दैट इज नॉट द एक्शन पोटेंशियल प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट next who now tell me the answer of this genesis my maximum contribution is given by which i am bachcho it is going to be the potassium followed by chloride followed by our nokia pump sodium potassium atpas right minor contribution is going to be there if i ask you what is the role of sodium does the sodium has any role in the rmp yes or no answer me only sodium has any role or no tell me na 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 mai hai na 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 so it has no role absolutely no role in the rmp kis mein role hota hai bachcho 
where uh, the sodium role is more important in the action potential. Please remember resting may the sodium is going to be saying no, 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 no. But as soon as you come in the action, they are going to make you reach till the spike potential. So please, please, please remember action potential may. Yes, role is there, but not in the RMP. What is this Nokia? Please remember Nokia means sodium out, potassium in. ATP is how many sodium out which sodium two alphabets are there in the symbol just add one into it that is become three right three sodium out and only one alphabet of uh, potassium the symbol is there so add one into it that becomes two so three sodium out two potassium in what is going to happen if I give you three thousand rupees you return me only two thousand rupees so three positive out and two positive in. So I'll be in the loss of one positive, right? I'll be in the loss of 1000 rupees or I can say I got one or I can say the gain of one negative, right? So that's how it is adding up into the negativity during the rest. And that's why I said that minor role is there of the sodium potassium ATPase. ATPase may role hai, sodium alone is going to have no role. Please remember that. Coupling ratio. What is the coupling ratio? 3 is to 2 is going to be my coupling ratio. 3 is to 2. Absolutely right, Dharam. 3 is to 2. Aditi, superb, right? Then maximum ATP consumption at the rest. All the nucleated cells are going to have the sodium potassium ATPase pump on their cell membrane. So please remember on the cell membrane, they're always active. Even if you're sleeping, they are going to be active. And please remember, they are active. That means they are using the ATP. And please remember when I say BMR, that is basal metabolic rate. I'm going to calculate that during the resting condition. Even in the resting condition, all the cells which have this pump that is going to be active and that is going to use the maximum ATP and that's why my BMR is going to be dependent on this pump, right? And since it is present on all the cell, I'm going to call it as universal pump or the omnipresent pump, right? Omnipresent or universal pump. Maintain this high sodium out because it is continuously thro uh, throwing the sodium out. Why? Because we don't want the sodium to accumulate inside the cell. What is the problem? If I allow the uh, sodium to accumulate inside, what is the problem? Absolutely wonderful MS. That is going to be followed by the only crush. That is water. Water has crush on the sodium. So wherever the sodium goes, water is going to follow. We have problem with the water. If water start to accumulate, my cells are going to, cells are going to burst. I don't want that. So that's why sodium is going to be thrown out, right? And potassium is taken inside. So RMP genesis may it has a minor role, electrogenic pump because it creates one negative charge inside my cell. All right. Let's move on. Solve this question for Tafat say. What is our cutaneous sensory neuron may? Site of generation of action potential. We are turning from the RMP into the action potential. Kya hoga answer? Answer is hidden into my next mnemonic. That is nothing but Miss Senor. What is Miss Senorita or Miss Senor? Bacho? Miss motor neuron may. If they ask initial segment, initial segment is going to be the site for the genesis of action potential. You have to remember this miss senor, right? And sensory may be that any sensory neuron. Sensory neuron may, I'm going to have NOR that is nothing but nodes of Ranvier. Nodes of Ranvier. Ranvier was the scientist who discovered this. So the gap between the myelin sheet that is known as nodes of Ranvier in that I'm going to have the generation of action potential in the sensory neuron. Since they have asked about sensory neuron, my answer is going to be D. Jino ne answer A ya B diya hai, reconnect that. Hai na? Ye mistake baad mein nahi honi chahiye. Do as many mistakes you want to do in the class. Just do not repeat those mistakes in the exam. Hai na? All right. Watsil and Foyes, I hope you got the answer and you got the uh, correct uh, this thing. Right? Question nahi dekha, ab dekhna hai aage bridge, okay? 
Now, answer this question for Tafford say, phase three of action potential, need 2023 question, right? I know it's a question of need, but my bacha party is going to solve this question. Yes, absolutely correct. They have asked about the uh, three, uh, phase three, that is going to be the repolarization phase, repolarization phase right and let's see the answer is going to be potassium efflux over here potassium efflux let's see how the action potential works you know revise if i say this is the action potential of uh, this is the rmp of the neuron rmp kitna hota hai minus 70 mp if i give the stimulus of stimulus of plus 15 over here what is going to happen i'm going to reach to a firing level as you are reached to firing level right that is going to be the minus 55 mv which is said to be a firing level right what happens when you reach to a firing level when you are into a momentum what happens study becomes easier isn't it so what is going to happen definitely i'm going to open up a lot of sodium channels sodium influx will start right up to what point the sodium is going to come inside unless and until i reach a peak that peak is known as spike spike potential as soon as you reach to a spike potential you have to do two things close whatever channel is open and open the potassium what is the channel which is open right now this this was the sodium channel you are going to close the sodium channel open the potassium what is going to happen the potassium wants to go outside isn't it so once the potassium wants to go outside the potassium start going outside potassium is the positively charged ion leaving the cell will bring my cell towards the negativity the problem with the potassium is that it is a kachua potassium k for kachua it's a kachua channel it takes a lot of time to close so slow closure of the potassium during that time when it was closing right some potassium leaks out and because of that slow closure ke vijay se we do have hyper polarization but after some time it is going to come back to my rmp how to remember there is a mnemonic dinkar what is dinkar bachcho depolarization whenever i'm going to go away from the normal negative polarity i told you the rmp of most of the cell is going to be negative right if i'm going dur d for dur that is nothing but the i'm going in the positivity i'm going to remember this is known as depolarization away from the normal negative polarity if i'm returning back if i'm returning back towards the rmp returning back repolarization right and if i'm going more in the negativity than the rmp it is going to be called as hyperpolarization so please remember the depolarization is because of the influx of sodium that is depolarization is because of the influx i for influx n for sodium kar kya hai potassium this kar is potassium efflux Potassium efflux causes repolarization. Question I guys pay GT me galat nahi karna kisi ne hai na? If you do wrong in this also, to kya karna hai? Shaam me jaise pata chale ki galat kiya tha ye question, ek chullu bar pani lena, aage kya karna hai aapko pata hai, hai na? So don't do the mistake in this, all right? This was the question came in the FMG exam 2018 as well as 2020, hai na? So what is this? You have to identify this X and Y. This is the permeability of the ion. Tell me what is x, what is y, what is x, what is y. The x is nothing but your sodium. See over here, the sodium, as soon as you reach to a firing level, what is going to happen over here? First of all, your sodium permeability start to increase. The permeability, din kar, usme n pehle aa hai. So, sodium is going to increase first, right? And then comes the uh, y, that is nothing but the potassium. It is going to be the sodium and potassium. Please, please, please remember, Twice the question has been come, right, as the diagram. So, please remember, pehle sodium aata hai and then comes the potassium, right? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Right? Next comes the refractility. What do you mean by refractility? Refractility means no response, no response. That means refractility. But it can be absolute refractory, right? That means as my bacha party is absolutely refractory to the distractions, right? You are not allowing the distractions to come, right? So that means you are absolutely in the refractory period. That means you don't give a damn to the distractions, right? So absolute refractory period is going to be start from the starting of the action potential till one third of the repolarization is complete somewhere down here, right? If I just give you... 
the scenario over here. So let's see. This is one third of repolarization, which is completed. So from here to here, from here to here, I'm going to call it as ARP. ARP, right? On the other hand, if I ask you from one third of repolarization till the time I come back to my normal RMP, I come back to my normal RMP, this is going to be my relative refractory period, right? One third of repolarization from there, once I come back to the RMP, that is going to be my relative refractory period. What is the difference between two? Absolute refractory means you are not allowing any distraction. You know, that is going to be during the class. You're not allowing any distraction to happen. That is no response absolutely whatsoever, no matter whomsoever calls you. You know, koi ladki bhi bole aapko ya aapka girlfriend, boyfriend, koi bhi bole ki chalo bahar ghumne chalte hai, chalo ye karte hai. You are not going to give any response till the exam time. You know, so that means no matter how strong stimulus you give, there will be no response whatsoever. What about the relative refractory period? Exam ke baad you are going to be somewhat you know slacky ki chalo ab enjoyment kar sakte hai na so that is relative refractory if you give a strong stimulus you are going to get the second response that is relative refractory period please remember that what is the benefit of that the arp is longer in the heart muscle longer in the heart muscle that means if i give the another stimulus during this phase i'm not going to get any response so my heart cannot go in the sustained contraction tetanization means what it means sustained contraction my heart cannot go in the sustained contraction and if it cannot go in the sustained contraction my heart cannot be tetanized and my heart is prevented from going into the cardiac arrest so cardiac arrest is not possible because of the ARP thanks to the ARP all right ARP is the reason is sodium channel inactivation okay khushi just remember ARP is because of sodium channel inactivation if you want this answer right which becomes closed later on close se open karna asaan hai inactivation se open karna asaan nahi hai so that's why this is the reason for ARP and what is the significance what is the benefit of RRP or why the RRP is important because RRP mein if you give a strong stimulus you are going to get the second response it can be abnormal response it can break your rhythm of the heart that's why it is the most risky period for the arrhythmia and please remember abnormal contraction can happen during this period and that is going to give rise to something called as premature ventricular contraction that means the systole was going on uh, of the first uh, this thing stimulus and the relaxation was about started just now but suddenly the heart rather than relaxing completely it started contracting again that is known as the premature ventricular contraction premature ventricular contraction isn't it so that is going to be um, Koi baat nahi medico, just study whatever you are able to do, do it right now. What I tell you always that convert your worry time into study time, hai na? So convert your worry time into study time. That is the only mantra I can give you, hai na? So whatever we are discussing over here, just focus on to it, right? Just relax. All is going to be well, okay? Just relax, all right? You're going to do well, okay? Next, axon. Dekho uh, par what is shown? Axon is shown. The CNS and PNS shown. Why they are shown? They are shown because to show you the myelin sheet. Myelin sheet is nothing but the covering. CNS mein kaun karta hai covering? The CNS. In the CNS, the covering is done by my oligodendrocyte. Oligodendrocyte. And what about the PNS? In the PNS, the uh, myelin sheet is formed from the Schwann cell. Now, my question to you guys is, if I form the antibodies against the PNS cell or CNS cell, who is going to be more severe? Obviously, if I form the antibodies against the oligodendrocyte, it is covering lot many areas. So, you can see they are covering lot many or they are forming multiple myelin sheets. At multiple sites, they are going to form the myelin sheet. So, that's why it is going to, if I damage this cell, almost uh, the six sites will be gone from the myelin. So, this is known as multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis. Please remember, this is going to be very, very dangerous. Why? Because one oligodendrocyte is gone. That means multiple myelin sheets are gone. Now, the velocity of my neuron is going to be slower down. Hai na? So, please remember that Schwann cell, peripheral uh, nervous system, mein, it is going to cause the myelination. All right. So, so this question, Bachapati.
रेबीज वायरस के बारे में पूछा है राइट एंड दे हैव आस्ट अबाउट द मोलिकुलर मोटर कौन है ये मोलिकुलर मोटर विच इज इम्पॉर्टेंट हाँ जी क्या आंसर तो के वट इज योर आंसर बताइए बताइए जल्दी जल्दी बताइए और राइट सो Absolutely correct. It is going to be dynein. Rabies, you cannot treat it if that happens to a patient and after the disease, the patient comes to you, you cannot prevent it. Yes, vaccination you can give. That is prophylactic uh, purpose, right? But once the rabies uh, patient came uh, comes to you, he is going to die. So who help him to die? It is dynein, right? So the patient is going to die. Why I am saying so? Because see over here, this is the neuron and this is the soma of the body and this is the axon see over here if i'm going from the soma towards the axon terminal this is the axon terminal if i'm going to go in this direction my cargo is going to help me out this cargo is none other than the kinesin kinesin right kinesin is going to be going forward that's why i'm going to call it as anterograde anterograde transport and which transport i'm talking about this is happening inside the axon so can i call it as axoplasmic transport yes this is the axoplasmic transport so please remember anterograde is going to happen with the kinesin kya kya jata hai anterograde transport se what all things can go there neurotransmitter vesicles nerve growth factor different different even the mitochondria can be transported sometimes there right so please remember all these proteins that is going to go towards the axon terminal but let's say my vesicle got empty but i want to recycle it back hai na we are indians we follow our culture right we respect our culture and in our culture wastage is not allowed hai na so we can oh, what we do we recycle it we reuse it to prevent our beautiful nature hai na so what we do we try to recycle it back hai na so if i'm coming back from where if i'm coming back from the axon terminal towards my soma for the recyclement of the vesicles on the nerve growth factor or whatever neurotransmitter is left i want to reuse it right so it is going to be helped by the dynein okay this cargo is nothing but the dynein but please remember some toxins such as rabies virus herpes virus not only that the polio and tetanus toxin they can come through this uh, dynein and that's why remember once the dynein is there reach to the soma my all factory is there inside the soma what do you mean by factory i have mitochondria i have golgi apparatus i have uh, the uh, endoplasmic reticulum i have nucleus if the virus comes there they get whole party like environment and they are going to grow and proliferate there because they have everything whatever they require for the proliferation so please remember the person is going to die if my uh, this virus is reached to my soma so please remember that is going to happen with the help of dynein dynein so please remember this is coming back so i'm going to call it as retrograde transport retrograde transport via the dynein all right next erlanger gasser classification what is this classification this classification is of nerve fiber erlanger and gasser they were two scientists who said that there are three different types of major nerve fiber a b and c thankfully they don't give any other name hai na a b c aasan hai hamare liye aasan hai right so a b and c these are three type of nerve fiber but the a fiber is subdivided into four different other types that is alpha beta gamma delta a alpha a beta a gamma a delta right let's see about the b and c fiber they are easier right b is pre ganglionic ans fiber easiest that's all right c fiber is post ganglionic ans fiber what do you mean by ans autonomic nervous system you must have studied that in the sympathetic system the pre ganglionic fibers are smaller and the post ganglionic fibers are longer on the other hand in the parasympathetic system what happens in the parasympathetic system the pre ganglionic fibers are longer and the post ganglionic fibers are smaller right so you must have studied that this pre ganglionic and post ganglionic that we are talking over here all right not only that the c fiber also carries the pain and temperature pain and temperature right so pain and temperature is also carried by my a delta fiber please remember that pain and temperature is also carried by a delta fiber right 
ए फाइबर को याद कैसे रखना है हाउ टू रिमेम्बर द ए फाइबर यू हैव डिवाइडेड दैट इन टू फोर टाइप राइट उस फोर को आप टू टू के ग्रुप में डिवाइड कर दो टू आर मोटर टू आर सेंसरी राइट विच टू आर मोटर यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड ऑफ लोअर मोटर न्यूरोन अल्फा मोटर न्यूरोन गामा मोटर न्यूरोन वॉट आर दैट अल्फा एंड गामा दिस आर दीज ओनली अल्फा मोटर न्यूरोन गामा मोटर न्यूरोन सो दीज टू आर मोटर बीटा एंड डेल्टा दे आर सेंसरी बट देर इज अ ट्विस्ट इन द कहानी what is the twist the alpha also carries the sensation of position what it is called as proprioception right medicine itni aasan hoti to baat hi kya hoti hai na do motor do sensory ho gaya kaam hai na but there are some twist hai na on which the questions are going to be asked right so proprioception is a sensory so please remember proprioception is the sense of position which is carried by a alpha right pain and temperature is also carried by a delta pain and temperature is also carried by the c fiber what is the difference between different different types of pain please remember as you go down from a fiber towards c fiber the velocity is going to be decrease the myelination is going to be decrease velocity matlab kya hota hai velocity means speed speed of conduction of the action potential is decrease so that means my c fibers are going to be the slowest and a fibers are going to be the fastest amongst the a fiber the a alpha is going to be faster a beta will be slower than the a alpha a gamma will be slower than the a beta like that okay but if i compare a delta and c fiber definitely the a delta is faster so whatever pain is carry forwarded by this a delta is going to be called as fast pain it will be carried turant se quickly right so if the mosquito give you a kiss while you sleeping that means mosquito bites you what is going to happen that is going to give you a sharp pain that is carried by the a delta fiber right so c fiber is going to carry the of course the slow pain question aata hai please remember if you want to remember one thing from this slide please remember this a delta and c fiber wala thing now what about the a beta rest all sensation just remember rest all sensation okay what are the other sensation the touch sensation pressure sensation vibration sensation stereognosis graphesthesia whatever they give you right except the proprioception pain and temperature all of the sensations are carried by my a beta fiber right a beta fiber all right so let's move on with that understood completely right abhi samajh mein aaya bachcho परफेक्ट लेट्स मूव ऑन परफेक्ट मूव ऑन ए गामा सबसे आसान है बच्चे मोटर फाइबर बस उसका कोई और काम नहीं है राइट सो लाइफ इज मेड इजी बाय द ए गामा फाइबर है ना <laughs> वरना हम गम में चले जाते लेट्स मूव ऑन स्केलेटल मसल स्केलेटल मसल में दो मेन फाइबर यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर एक्टिन एंड मायोसिन बट कहानी में ट्विस्ट तो आना ही है वट इज द ट्विस्ट दैट सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट देन विल गो ऑन फॉरवर्ड है ना क्या है ट्रोपोमायोसिन का क्या काम है What is the work of tropomyosin? Yes, bridge. Perfect, है ना You are the best student who remember all my mnemonics, है ना Papa G of myosin. So see over here, this is the Papa G of myosin who is having the gun. Who do not allow the myosin to meet his or her dash dash. That is actin, right? So what we have to do if we want this actin myosin to meet each other, है ना N B O को उड़ाना चाहिए बीच में से है ना So this is like N B, right? इसको distract करो कैसे distract करोगे We want troponin, troponin plus calcium. I need troponin and calcium to distract or displace. Troponin and calcium to displace this tropomyosin, Papa G of myosin to remove in between so that my actin myosin can meet with each other and the contraction can happen. Helps in the fusion of actin myosin. Papa G of myosin never allow us to fuse, है ना हमारे सक्सेस से जलती है एन बी सो दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल राइट नेक्स्ट कवर माओसिन एंड प्रिवेंट द अटैचमेंट ऑफ एक्टिन एंड माओसिन दैट्स ट्रू इट प्रिवेंट्स द एक्टिन माओसिन का अटैचमेंट दैट्स ट्रू राइट स्लाइड्स ओवर द माओसिन इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू स्लाइड ओवर द माओसिन एंड इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू कॉज द कैल्शियम रिलीज राइट सो प्लीज रिमेंबर द आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी बी लेट सी हाउ दिस कैन बी अप्लाइड सो द ग्रीन ग्रीन यहाँ पर जो दिख रहे हैं एंड द लाइट blue color chain that you can see over here that is nothing but actin or if you can see the pink fiber over here this pink fiber is nothing but the papa g of myosin that is tropomyosin see this dark blue color this dark blue color these dots are nothing but the active site of actin only there the myosin head can bind to each other but that is covered with papa g of myosin 
I have to remove this Papa G of myosin. So I'm going to take the help of troponin. But troponin alone cannot do anything. It requires the help of calcium, right? So as soon as the calcium is released, see over here, the calcium is going to bind to the troponin. As soon as this complex is formed, calcium and troponin, they are going to displace the Papa G of myosin, that is tropomyosin. Now you can see these dots are available for the binding of the myosin, that is active site of actin. So what do you Actin and myosin se beech mein se, you have to remove the tropomyosin with the help of troponin calcium complex. So please remember what is the role of troponin alone. It actually helps the myosin, but when it meets with the calcium troponin calcium complex displaces tropomyosin. Please remember that. Hai na? So I'm going to write over here troponin plus calcium complex. It displaces the myosin, displaces the tropomyosin, tropomyosin. And you can see actin can meet with the myosin head that is known as cross bridge formation, cross bridge formation. All right. Cross bridge formation. All right. Let's move on forward. Let's move on forward. Solve this question, Bacha Pati. Which one of the following band or zone disappears on muscular contraction? There is only one band which disappears completely disappear completely rahul hamari good evening to bahut pehle ho gayi you are late <laughs> all right very good absolutely wonderful so h zone is going to be disappear what i told you about m line and a band ma never change or mamma never change hai na ma never changes i band it is going to be yes it is going to uh, decrease in size but it never disappears disappearance kiska hota hai h H ka hota hai, H zone ka, right? So see over here, this pink are nothing but, this pink are nothing but myosin fibers. Myosin fibers, hai na? This is going to be the myosin fiber. C answer, kyu te reho pp? The answer is not C, bache, disappear poocha hai na? The answer is going to be B, hai na? Uh, myosin is going to be the pink fiber, which is the thick fiber. And these thin fibers are nothing but shown by the green color. That is nothing but the actin. If I take only actin, only actin, which is not overlapped by the myosin, that is known as I band. That is known as I band. It is shown over here. The I band is nothing but the only actin. So see over here, this is the I band, right? So I band is not covered by the myosin so yahan se yahan tak lungi mein, that is going to be the i band isn't it but see over here if i draw exactly in the middle of i band in the middle of i band if i draw a line that is going to be called as z line and the adjacent z line to z line this is going to be called as sarcomere sarcomere this is the functional unit of the muscle right sarcomere ke exact middle mein if i draw a line that is known as m line this over here you can see in middle of the sarcomere if i draw a line that is called as the m line which is also going to come in the middle of a band what is the a band it is the complete myosin it can come as overlapped part also and non overlap part doesn't matter doesn't matter whether it is overlap, it is non-overlap with the my uh, actin, it is going to come under the A band. So what is I band? Only actin. What is A band? Whole of the myosin, right? What is Z line? In between of the I band, it is going to be called as Z line if I draw a middle line in the I band, right? In the middle of the sarcomere, here, I'm going to have the M line and the H zone shows only myosin. Only myosin means? It should contain only non-overlapping part. So see over here, there should not be any green part in between, right? But as soon as I'm going to start the contraction of the muscle, what is going to happen? This green and pink color, that means actin and myosin, they are going to overlap with each other. So non-overlap part is going to decrease. So you can see non-overlap actin is decreased. So I band is decreased. And over here also I band is decreased. Z line came together, right? M line, what happened to the M line? M line was the middle line. Does it change? No. The M line is not going to be changed. Okay. It does not change. Kaun kaun nahi badalta? The M line will not change. Plus, you can see what is A band. Bacho? A band is complete myosin. That is also not going to change. 
राइट सो माँ नेवर चेंज है ना ममा की फीलिंग हमारे लिए कभी नहीं बदलती माँ नेवर चेंज प्लीज रिमेंबर एक्सेप्ट ऑल दीज थिंग्स एवरीथिंग इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज एंड इफ आई कंप्लीटली ओवरलैप द एक्ट इन मायोसिन ओनली मायोसिन विल नॉट बी अवेलेबल राइट इफ आई कंप्लीटली कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दिस मायोसिन ओनली मायोसिन विल नॉट बी अवेलेबल एंड एच जोन इज गोइंग टू डिसअपियर एच जोन इज गोइंग टू डिसअपियर प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट लेट्स मूव ऑन फॉरवर्ड वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट लाइट ब्लड इज रेड साइनोसिस इज ब्लू आई नो दैट आई गेट टैकी कार्डिया वेन आई थिंक ऑफ यू किसके बारे में सोच रहे हैं हम हम सिर्फ और सिर्फ एग्जाम के बारे में सोच रहे हैं ना हम और किसी के बारे में नहीं सोच रहे उसको सोच के इनफ टैकी कार्डिया हो जाता है ओके सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट है ना सो कार्डियो वेस्कुलर सिस्टम तो यही पढ़ रहे हैं हम टैकी कार्डिया के बारे में कार्डियो वेस्कुलर सिस्टम राइट फर्स्ट आई एम हैविंग टू टाइप्स ऑफ सेल टू टाइप्स ऑफ सेल इन द हार्ट वॉट आर द टू टाइप्स ऑफ सेल फर्स्ट इज द नोडल टिश्यूज एंड सेकेंड इज द कार्ड एक मसल नोडल टिश्यू इट हैज द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ ऑटो रिदमिसिटी डू यू टेल यूर हार्ट नाउ यू हैव टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट नाउ यू हैव टू रिलैक्स यू हैव टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट नाउ यू हैव टू रिलैक्स ऐसे तो स्लीप भी नहीं कर पाओगे है ना दैट डजेंट हैपन इट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑटोमेटिकली थैंकफुली राइट सो ऑटो रिदमिसिटी मीन्स इट क्रिएट्स इन द रिदम ऑटोमेटिकली ऑन इट्स ओन हाउ दिस इज पॉसिबल दिस इज पॉसिबल बिकॉज ऑफ द पेस मेकअ पोटेंशियल वॉट इज पेस मेकअ पोटेंशियल वॉट वॉज द आर एम पी ऑफ द नोडल टिश्यू आई टोल्ड यू द पेस मेकर सेल्स का क्या होता है फ्लक्चुएटिंग आर एम पी राइट सो उल्टा लिख दिया क्या है माइनस सिक्सटी इज मोर नेगेटिव मैडम है ना आपकी कॉफी लगता है पहुंची नहीं अभी माइनस सिक्सटी टू माइनस फोर्टी है ना दैट इज गोइंग टू बी योर पेस मेकअ पोटेंशियल एंड यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द आयोनिक चेंजेस ऑफ द पेस मेकअ पोटेंशियल वाया द न्यूमोनिक फनी कैट पिक यू हैव टू रिमेंबर हर है ना क्या है ये फनी कैट पिक पेस मेकर पोटेंशियल फनी क्या है फनी सोडियम चैनल दैट इज नथिंग बट बड़ा बड़ा एन निकाला है दो एन है प्लीज रिमेंबर सोडियम लीकी चैनल्स और सोडियम फनी चैनल्स वन एंड द सेम थिंग राइट सो सोडियम फनी चैनल्स दे आर गोइंग टू हेल्प अस दैट मीन्स सोडियम टू लीक इन साइड विदाउट गिविंग एनी स्टिमुलस इट इज गोइंग टू लीक इन साइड विच विल मेक सम वॉट पॉजिटिविटी ओवर हियर right some what positivity but that was not enough so we asked the calcium to open up for some time hai na so transient opening channels of the calcium t cat t ko alag kar do t ko alag kar do t is for calcium transient channels right so they are going to open for the shorter duration and calcium entry will also give me the positivity inside my myocardium cells so calcium t channels please remember that transient opening channels and i told you the potassium usually p is for potassium potassium k for kachua humne baat kari thi but over here this is a modified muscle right in that what happens the potassium closes early the early closure is there that means it is not kachua in my myocardium i cannot allow it to close slowly so i'm going to close it faster so what is going to happen the potassium closure channel closure causes the potassium to accumulate inside my cell positivity accumulating in my cell so definitely it is going to cause what depolarization i'm going to reach to my firing level i'm going to reach to my firing level so please remember potassium early closure or agar humne pick likha pick pick kya hai immediate closure immediate closure as soon as you reach to minus 40 it is going to close immediately all right so early closure ya immediate closure is going to be Helping us in what thing? In the pacemaker potential. एक बार ड्रॉ कर लेते हैं फटाफट से क्या होता है नोडल टिश्यू का बच्चों बताओ फटाफट क्या था ये माइनस सिक्सटी टू माइनस फोर्टी कौन कौन से थे फनी सोडियम चैनल एंट्री हो रहा था सोडियम का कैल्शियम का एंट्री हो रहा था थ्रू वॉट चैनल टी दैट इज ट्रांसजेंट चैनल कैट एंड पिक पिक का पोटेशियम इमीडिएट क्लोजर और अर्ली क्लोजर so potassium accumulation is going to occur which will reach me the firing level of the pacemaker tissue and jaise i am going to reach back to my firing level what is going to open up please remember over here calcium l channels are going to open up calcium l channels it is not the sodium please remember right and as soon as you reach to a spike potential i told you two things you have to do whatever channels are open close those channels and open the potassium always do that thing hai na so close kisko karoge bachcho close the channels that are open you close the calcium l channel and open the potassium as soon as i open the potassium potassium efflux will start and i'm returning back to my rmp please remember the rmp is nothing but minus 40 to minus 60 this is again the rmp so i'm again going to go and cause the 
funny cat pic over here and this is known as autorhythmicity autorhythmicity isko yaad rakhna bhulna nahi nodal tissue mein it's different than the neurons and cardiac muscle this was about the nodal tissue hai na nodal tissue kya kya hota hai bachcho sa node av node bundle of his bundle branches perkins fibers these are nothing but the um, nodal tissues right they are going to give the stimulus to my cardiac muscle muscle they are like a labor they don't have their own brain so they require nerves right they are acting through the nodal tissues now cardiac muscle ka action potential how it is going to differ it is going to differ like this okay so let's see that how it is going to differ why it is not adding it's not adding the page why right of course this is going to happen in my class all right fine ek bar ye question solve kar lo i have some space uh, in the wala slide i'll i'll call them so iska answer kya hoga bachcho phase 0 phase 0 ka answer kya hai kya hai iska answer aur batao fatafat 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 it is absolutely wonderful it is going to be c c and c right it is going to be c c and c only all right even if they do not give you the option so please remember this is the phase 0 phase 0 hamesha depolarization hota hai bachcho aur rmp hamesha phase 4 hota hai please remember rmp is always phase 4 repolarization is always phase 3 phase 3 is going to be repolarization all right so please remember that okay iska answer solve karo kya hai tab tak main cardiac muscle ka bana deti hain bana deti hu Right. This is minus ninety was the RMP. Yes, you have told me the answer. Now concentrate over here. This is the RMP. RMP, which phase is it? Tell me. RMP, which phase is it? Is it phase zero or it's phase four? It is phase four. Absolutely correct. Abhishek, right? And uh, Adi Sishan and Prakash Bridge. Yes, it is phase four. Right? Why I'm focusing because they have given the questions directly. Two question in INICT, two question in the NEET in one exam itself, right? So remember, as soon as I my nodal tissue stimulate my cardiac muscle, what is going to happen? The sodium channel is going to open, right? Cardiac muscle and uh, this neuron is similar, similar. You just have to add two phases in between. I'll tell you how. Sodium influx will start till what point? Till I reach to a peak. Peak को हम क्या बोलते हैं? Spike. स्पाइक पोटेंशियल इज इट एंड एंड एज सुन एज आई रीच टू स्पाइक पोटेंशियल आई हैव टू डू टू थिंग्स क्या करूंगी मैं टू थिंग्स दैट मींस व्हाट एवर चैनल्स आर ओपन आई एम गोइंग टू क्लोज देम क्लोज द सोडियम एंड ओपन द पोटेशियम राइट व्हाट एवर चैनल्स आर ओपन वी हैव टू क्लोज देम सोडियम आई क्लोज्ड पोटेशियम ओपन व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन दिनकर में पोटेशियम क्या कर रहा था पोटेशियम वाज कॉजिंग द repolarization the repolarization will start but 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 there is a twist in the kahani what is the twist there will be something known as plateau plateau phase two two changes are going to happen during the plateau what are the two changes first thing you have to remember this is plateau so phase two and two ionic flows are going to happen two 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 yaad rakhna two 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 right so what are the two changes that are going to occur potassium will continuously start going outside but during this phase the calcium channel is open so one positively charged ion coming inside the cell one positively charged ion leaving the cell they balance each other they balance each other and that's why i'm going to get a flat line in between if i check the action potential that flat line is called as plateau and this is the phase 2 please remember two ionic change phase 2 plat 2 2 2 2 remember that now but the calcium channels are not that stubborn they close uh, relatively early so these are calcium l channels only but they are going to close you know so write down calcium channels are going to close after some time but potassium continue to glow outside potassium continue to go outside unless and until it reaches to the rmp what i told you about repolarization repolarization is always a phase 3 this is phase 3 right what is phase 1 phase 1 is this one phase 0 is always the depolarization phase 4 is rmp this is phase 3 and this is phase 2 
please remember that when you give calcium channel blockers it is going to block the phase 2 plat 2 block karenge all right so please remember that let's come to this question s3 s3 kiske wajah se hota hai please remember it is due to rapid filling early rapid filling you have given me the answer already this is because of rapid filling all right wonderful i am loving your loving your what thing responses and it feels lively it doesn't feel stupid when because if you just talk to the camera it feels very stupid <laughs> so s1 s2 s3 what is the first alphabet bacho we have studied in the lkg ukg a b c d a for apple padatana so please remember a is the first alphabet and my s1 sound is going to come whenever the valve is going to close please remember the valve closure is going to make a sound opening of the valve will never make a sound so always the valve closure is going to make the sound all right so a comes first so av valve closure is going to make the s1 sound what about S2 sound? Second, S for second, S for SL valve. SL kya hai bacho? SL is nothing but semi-lunar. It looks like a half moon shape. So that's why we are going to call it as semi-lunar valves. What are the semi-lunar valves? My aortic valve and pulmonary valve, they are nothing but the semi-lunar valve. Again, the valve closure is going to make the sound. Opening of the valve will never make a sound. So, please remember S for second, S for SL valve closure. All right. Coming to the S3 and S4, please remember always the filling is going to, as you fill the bucket, if the tap water is open, if you fill the bucket, it makes a sound. Right. So, similarly, if you fill the ventricle, that is going to make a sound. But that sound is relatively lower frequency, uh, lower than the 20 hertz. That's why uh, with the human ear, we cannot hear that unless and until you open the tap very forcefully. That means in the pregnant female, in the pregnant female, what happens? A lot of plasma is produced, right? So the force is going to be produced. More water you want to fill, right? Into your ventricle that is going to make the sound which can cross the 20 hertz and that can be audible. So this is the only physiological condition where the S3 is going to be normal. All other condition, the S4 and S3 are abnormal. That is pathological, pathological, right? Please remember that. Coming to the cardiac cycle, let's come to the cardiac cycle. We know that systole and diastole, systole, diastole, that completes a cycle and this continues unless and until we are alive. Right? One cardiac cycle normally is of 0.8 seconds. Atria ka different cycle is going to go on, ventricle ka different cycle is going to go on, right? Atria karta hai kaam only for 0.1 second, it is going to do the work and rest of the 0 0.7 second, second, it is going to relax, chill mother, chill, right? On the other hand, um, my ventricles are going to contract for 0.5 seconds, sorry, 0.3 seconds, they are going to contract and for 0.5 seconds, they are going to relax. This is the approximate value, all right? What is the exact value? No need to remember, I just wanted to show you, I just wanted to show you what thing, that uh, how much the difference is there if you multiply it by two it is going to be your relaxation time that means in a day your heart works only for eight hours and 16 hours it is going to chill right so please remember double the amount of time it contracts it is going to relax for the double amount of time right so systole is for eight hours diastole is for 16 hours in a day, right? So please remember that. That's why whenever I talk about systole and diastole, this is going to be the thing that systole is of one time and diastole is going to be for two times, right? Why I'm saying and why I'm focusing on that? Because whenever I have to make the average of this, I have to take this time into the consideration, especially if I'm measuring the mean blood pressure or mean arterial pressure, I have to take this duration into the consideration. I know that the diastole is double uh, for the double duration. So I have to take diastole for the two times, diastolic BP for the two times and SBP for one time. So one third of SBP plus two third of diastolic blood pressure, that is going to be the formula for mean blood pressure. We'll see in the blood pressure. Just remember this diagram over here. All right. The formula comes from this. Okay. Now duration of cardiac cycle is inversely proportional to it is inversely proportional to the heart rate that means if you increase the heart rate the duration for each cycle is going to decrease that means 0.8 major contraction relaxation ho rahi thi. now that is going to happen in the 0.7 or 0.6 seconds itself because you have to contract the heart for more times in a same duration 
right so please remember that when you do the exercise the cardiac cycle duration is going to be decreased and when you are chill you are relaxed at that time the duration of cardiac cycle is increased the heart uh, heart rate is going to decrease they are inversely proportional inversely proportional absolutely right doctor send in a film <laughs> okay let's move on so uh, cardiac cycle is having two parts we saw that systole and diastole please remember systole is from s1 to s2 and from s2 to next s1 that is going to be diastole we are not going to talk about the diastole right now we are going to focus on the systole we all know that the systole s1 sounds come because of the av valve closure okay ji maan liya av valve closure is going to give me the systole just give me one second because i need a blank slide but okay so we are going to divide this s1 to s2 s1 se s2 mein i'm going to divide it into three parts why because i want to know if the murmur is there early mid and late what is this early mid and late it is nothing but the early systole mid systole and late systole isme slide nahi add ho rahi hai okay early systole mid systole and late systole all right all right thank you so what you have done okay just give me a minute bachcho just give me a minute are you okay all right so now we are getting the blank slide i'm very very happy so see over here thank you so okay. okay first thing this is my av valve this is my me uh, semi lunar valve okay av valve and semi lunar valve av valve and semi lunar valve all right just right so av valve and semi lunar valve av valve that means it is it will it is in between the atria and ventricle and semi lunar valves uh, aortic and the pulmonary valve now i have closed the av valve but the semi lunar valve was closed now tell me what is the pressure in the systole in the aorta the pressure in the systole in the aorta is going to be 120 maximum and during the diastole it is going to be 80 right this is about the aorta What about the left ventricle, bacho? Systole me kitna hota? Yes, it is again one twenty. But during the diastole, it is zero to five mm hg. Very very less as compared to the aorta. You can see over here, it's almost zero. If I want to open these doors, there is one prerequisite: terms and condition apply. Yeah, na. What is the terms and condition to open this valve? I require ventricular pressure more than the aortic pressure or pulmonary valve pressure. Let's say this is the left atrium, left atrium and left ventricle, and this is the aorta, right? I need to have more ventricular pressure to open this valve because this is a valve which can open only one side. Another side, if the pressure is high, this valve will be closed forever. now i have such a low pressure how can i increase pressure how can i increase pressure bachcho doctor saab bataiye kaise badhaun pressure i'm going to contract i'm going to contract this ventricle and that's how doctor saab i'm going to increase the pressure right so if i start contracting this pressure from 0 it is going to go up to 10 up to 20 up to 50 up to 80 over here it is also 80 right till that point my valves are not going to open but my ventricles are contracting what should i call it sir what should i call it just please let me know kya bolna chahiye hame yahan par we are going to call it as iso volumetric why because the volume is not changing kaise karu change volume i have both the valves closed hai na so the volume is not going to go outside of the ventricle it is not going to come inside the ventricle so volume of the blood is going to be same i'm going to call it as iso volumetric contraction isovolumetric contraction right now because of this what is going to happen my prerequisite is going to be met right that was aortic pressure se zyada mera ventricular pressure chahiye nb jitna tough question paper banayegi usse zyada ka knowledge hame chahiye right to cross that threshold and definitely we are doing the job for that right so nb se zyada pressure hame banana hai ki aise kaise sare bachcho ke 200 se 200 correct aa rahe hai na so shock mein aa jani chahiye nb bhi hai na so ventricular pressure is more than aortic pressure that is met now what is going to happen 
if i cross this 80 it becomes 81 what is going to happen but so definitely my this valve is going to be open and as soon as this valve is open what is going to happen the blood started to go outside which i'm going to call it as ejection ejection right so please 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 remember that you know so over here my sl valve are going to be open open and what will start which oh what will start the ejection will start i'm going to write the ejection in between over here of the mid systole and late systole why because ejection has two parts early ejection which is also called as a rapid ejection during which my ventricle is contracting and for the contraction I require the energy. I'm going to call it as active ejection, right? Active uh, ejection, early ejection or rapid ejection. In that, I'm going to throw out two-third of the stroke volume. Two-third of the stroke volume will go out. Later on, what happens? They say, if you are driving a vehicle, what happens? If you put a brake suddenly, what is going to happen? Your, uh, your vehicle is stopped, but your body goes forward and then you come back, right? That is known as momentum, right? So same happens over here in the late phase or in the slow ejection. What happens? The blood was in the momentum. The ventricle stopped contracting. It has done its job. It fully contracted during the mid systole itself. But now the blood was in the momentum and that's why through the momentum it is going to go out. I, am I using the energy to contract my ventricular muscle? No, this is because of the momentum and that's why what is going to happen? Yes, this is going to be called as passive ejection and how much blood will be ejected? One third of the ejection is going to occur in the late systole. As soon as all of the stroke volume is ejected outside, what should I do? My ventricle's job is done. Now I'm going to relax. And after the class, what you're going to do? I know. <laughs> what you're going to do? You're going to wait. Bas karo. Ab mujhe bed de do, <laughs> so you're going to chill. <laughs> so as you are going to relax after this class, the same is done by the ventricle. As soon as he, he throwed out all the stroke volume, his job is done. Now he started to relax. But there is a problem. What is the problem? As soon as it starts to relax, the ventricular pressure is going to be lower than the aortic pressure. And... Now, no longer this uh, terms and condition is met and that's why what is going to happen as soon as this uh, ventricular pressure is going to go down, my SL valve is going to close. The SL valve closure is going to occur. SL valve closure which makes which sound? S2 sound, S for second, S for SL valve, right? Are we on the right track? Yes, we are on the absolutely right track, S2 sound absolutely right all right so i hope you understood the right you understood the systole let's move on to the diastole let's move on can i move on yes thank you thank you prakash right so s2 kya hota hai s2 bacho s2 is from s2 to s1 i'm going to have a diastole but 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 what happens is my when my ventricle was started relaxing during that time sl valve will start to close but for complete closure of the SL valve, it takes 0.04 seconds. Kitna time lagta hai? 0.04 seconds is required to close the SL valve. During this 0.04 time, it is called as protodiastole. Protodiastole. Kya hota hai protodiastole? At that time, the SL valve was open. It was not completely closed. And the ventricle started relaxing. And the ventricle started relaxing right? It happens in the diastole. I'm going to include that in the diastole. Why? Because my ventricle is going to go and relax, right? So it is coming in the relaxation phase, but my SL valve is not closed. It is not the S2. It just happened just before the S2. Kitna before? 0.04 seconds. Mil milliseconds. Volti millisecond. 4 milliseconds oh, hota hai ye phase. That is known as proto. Pro means before diastole. Just before the diastole, it is going to happen. Then the S2 sound is going to come. That means the SL valve is going to come, right? And I'm again going to divide that into early, mid and late phase. Early diastole, mid diastole and late diastole. Don't get confused between the late diastole and the late uh, filling, right? Don't get confused between mid diastole and the uh, filling which is early filling don't get confused between early diastole and early filling both of them are completely different this early mid and late is for murmurs you are going to learn in the medicine early uh, diastolic murmur mid diastolic murmur late diastolic murmur pan diastolic murmur for that this is the phases all right s2 
Now my S2 valve is closed. So see over here. Again, left atrium, left ventricle. Let's say this is the aorta. My AV valves were already closed, right? Now I wanted to do the filling. My SL valve is closed. SL valve just closed. Hua, my S2 sound is going to come. Now I wanted to do filling. Filling ke liye, this was the pressure. 120 was the highest pressure at the beginning of the diastole, at the uh, end of the systole, 120 was the pressure in the ventricle, right? How much is the pressure in the left atrium during uh, the diastole and systole? It is going to be 0 to 10. 0 to 10 is going to be the pressure inside the left atrium. Let's say it is somewhere in between, let's say 5. Why? Because some amount of venous return is also there. Now, what is the prerequisite to open the AV valve? This is the AV valve, atrioventricular valve. Iska kya terms and condition hai? What is the terms and condition? Over here, I require atrial pressure should be, atrial pressure should be more than ventricular pressure. Then only my valve is going to open up, right? But over here, see, 120 is the pressure. What should I do? What should I do, bacho? I should ask my ventricle to relax so that the pressure comes down. Hey na? So that the thakavad goes off, right? As the class is going to over, what you're going to do? The same thing is done by the ventricle, right? So 120, from 120, as soon as my ventricle start to relax, the pressure is come down. Let's say 80 ho gaya, fir 60 ho gaya, fir 20 ho gaya, fir 10 ho gaya, right? But this is going to take time. During that time, my uh, ventricles are relaxing, but the volume is not changing. What should I call it? What should I call it? Iso volumetric relaxation. Hayana, bolo fatafat. I know you are tired, but let's run through it and let's call the day very, very productive. Hayana? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Benning. Thank you. Kolkata se aya mira dos. <laughs> From where you get these names? Huh? Iso volumetric relaxation. Iso volumetric relaxation. After that relaxation, see over here, the pressure is going to decrease. And as soon as from 10, it becomes 8 or 5, let's say 5 or 0. What is going to happen? My prerequisite is going to be met. And I'm going to open up the AV valve. AV valve open, what will happen? It starts to fill the ventricle, right? First thing, what are the two things which are going to happen as soon as the AV valve is open? Pella, yaha par pressure gradient hai. Delta P means pressure gradient is there. And second, if I'm sitting or I'm standing, that means I'm in an erect po position. That means I'm standing or sitting. The gravity is also helping me. Why? Because my ventricles are going to be down and my atria is going to be on the top. Right? So atria se ventricle mein blood aega. So two things are helping me out. Even if I lie down so fine, what is going to happen? The gravity is not going to help me out, but the pressure gradient is still there. Right? Yaha par 10 pressure hoga, yaha par 0 hoga. That means from high pressure to low pressure, the blood is going to come. So please remember, in this filling, my atria is not going to contract. Right? As soon as the isovolumetric relaxation is o over, the AV valve will be open. And let's write with this pen. AV valve is going to be open. And what is going to start? The filling is going to be starting. Which filling? Ventricular filling is going to start. As soon as the ventricular filling is going to start, it is going to again have a two parts. Early ventricular filling is going to go in the mid diastole. Please remember. And late ventricular filling is going to go in the late diastole. All right. Now, I just now told you that the early filling is going to uh, happen with the help of gravity and pressure gradient. It is not. During that time, my atria is not going to contract. So, I'm going to call it as passive filling. But it is going to be faster because of these two things. So, I'm going to call it as rapid filling also. Right? Now, please remember, late filling is during that time, what is going to happen? As soon as I start filling my ventricles, this pressure inside my ventricle from 0, it becomes 5, 6 like that. Let's say it became... 5. And because my atria is getting emptied, so that's why the pressure from 10, it becomes 5.5, let's say, right? So the gradient of the pressure is decreased a lot. Now, still some amount of blood is remaining inside my atria. My atria want to fill all the ventricle, right? As the cerebellum wants to do all the things for you, right? We also want you to push, right? Push till your best limit is reached. Hai na? Jab tak na mein se, tab tak hai na? So that happens, right? So what we are going to do? We are going to contract. We are going to contract the atria. So that is going to be using the energy. I'm going to call it as active. But there is a twist in the story. What is the twist? 
in between there is a phase which is going to come when the delta p is almost negligible almost negligible at that time it looks as if my heart is stopped in the diastole my heart is stopped in the diastole so i'm going to call it as diastasis stasis means stop in the diastole this is the best phase to do the echo if i want to measure the diameter of the valve diameter of the myocardium right so in that phase uh, the diastasis phase it is going to be the best because the movement of heart is almost negligible all right so please remember that hai na isme in dono mein mila ke two third amount of blood is going to go and in this phase one third blood is going to go i don't want to confuse you between the late rapid and early rapid and this and that this phase is also known as rapid and some amount of blood go in this phase which is almost negligible so slow phase is going to come in the diastasis so please 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 remember that hai na don't get confused slow ye wo just remember early and late and passive and active slow hota hai jab diastasis hota hai because the pressure gradient is very very less and it takes some time to atria to contract okay so that's why it is going to be happening that once the atria uh, filled you with all the knowledge and once the cerebellum took the class till 10 o'clock or 10 20 let's say we are going to stop the class hai na so what is going to happen the filling is done now what is going to happen it's the time to close the studio hai na so we are going to close the av valve the av valve is going to close hai na As soon as you start to relax, we are going to close the studio, है ना? So कब relax करना start करेगा? Once your work is done, once you have done, you reach your target. What is the target? Whatever till whatever time the class is going on, I'm going to study no matter what, which is going to make you to sit, and that is going to improve your concentration later on also, है ना? So please, please, please remember that, है ना? I'm sorry, I know you are going through a bad phase. I have gone through that also, but please remember every penny, every second is going to be worth it when you are going to uh, say that yes finally i can write doctor in front of my name all right let's move on let's move on so this is the uh, thing that we have studied okay and uh, we haven't solved any question on this so if i have to give a small chart so please remember ye chart bana lo bachcho isko matha tek ke sona hai har roz hai na systole and diastole systole and diastole and over here i'm going to write a uh, isovolumetric phase isovolumetric phase and i'm going to write volume change over here volume change over here right so please remember isovolumetric phase systole mein hua to i'm going to call it as isovolumetric contraction diastole mein hua i'm going to call it as isovolumetric relaxation volume change mein i'm going to do two third early phase right first and then one third late phase okay now early if there is a systole i'm going to call it as early what thing early ejection early ejection and late ejection i'll write in between early ejection or late ejection right and if i'm having the cyst or diastole i'm going to call it as ventricular filling है ना इसको रोज मत्था टेक के सोना इंपॉर्टेंट है एवरी ईयर एवरी अदर ईयर दे आर गिविंग दिस क्वेश्चन सो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट और राइट लेट्स मूव ऑन लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ये वाला सॉल्व करो बच्चों प्रेशर चेंजेस इन द चुगुलर विन ड्यूरिंग द सिंगल कार्डियक साइकिल मेजर किया और व्हाट दे हैव आस्ट फॉलोइंग डिनोट द पीरियड ऑफ एट्रियल सिस्टॉल एट्रिया कब कॉन्ट्रैक्ट करता है एट्रियल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन में कौन सी वेव लवली लवली दर इज समन नोन एज ओपन हाइमर ऑल्सो है ना प्लीज अगर बॉम्ब बनाया तो एनबीए पे एक डाल ही देना है ना सो एट्रियल सिस्टॉल एट्रियल सिस्टॉल इज गोइंग टू गिव मी द ए वेव एब्सोल्युटली वंडरफुल है ना <laughs> so he's giving the permission <laughs> hopefully no one is there in from the nb and i wanna mai mujhe wo gana gana padega mai chali mai chali jail ke piche mai chali <laughs> so let's talk about this we are going to attach the transducer in the into the uh, jugular vein which is going to give me the right atrial pressure and i have the right atrial pressure as the central venous pressure so isi ko jvp bhi bolta hai that is jugular venous pressure isi ko i can call the central venous pressure and this pressure is also known as right atrial pressure because i'm going to attach the transducer at the jugular vein right and there is no valve in between so that's why it is the same kaise yaad rakhoge a a for the atrial relaxation so please remember over here a for the atrial 
uh, contraction, sorry, A for the atrial contraction. Whenever the pressure inside the right atrium is going to increase, I'm going to get the upstroke or upward deflection, right? Whenever the pressure inside the right atria is going to decrease, when the atria is relaxing, at that time, I'm going to get a downstroke. Okay, so please remember this depicts the pressure is increasing or decreasing into my right atrium, right? So C, C kya hota hai bacho? C is when the tricuspid valve, when the tricuspid valve bulges, you know, tricuspid valve bulge, bulging into the right atria, right atria at that time what happens? During, during the isovolumetric contraction what happens? The uh, ventricles are contracting, but both the valves are closed. So what happens in the tricuspid valve? The tricuspid valve cannot open into the atria, right? But but it bulges into the atria. And because of that bulge, what happens? My atrial pressure is going to increase for a time being. And that is known as the C, C wave, all right? So please remember that. What is the X? X and Y, they are down strokes. So I'm going to call it as descent. When we go down, we call it as descent, right? X descent is because of the atrial relaxation. Atrial relaxation. And what is the Y wave? Atrial emptying. Atrial emptying, right? How to remember? How to remember over here? See, atrial relaxation, atrial emptying. X and Y is coming. So, please remember that. Atrial relaxation. That means the ventricle must be contracting. And please remember, if I draw the ventricular thing over here, it is going to be called as ejection. Ventricle ka mene red pen mein likha hai. Ventricle mein kya chalega is time pe? Ventricle mein ejection is going to go on. What about the V wave, bacho? V wave. Please remember V for venous return. Venous return, hai na? Venous return is going to be there. Venous return mein kya hota hai? From the veins, the blood is going to come back to my uh, right atria, right? And my atria is getting filled up. So can I write atrial filling over here? Yes, absolutely. The atria is filled up over here and that's why I can write it as atrial filling also, all right? Please remember that. And if I draw, if I ask you V, V for IVR, that means isovolumetric relaxation. In the ventricle, isovolumetric relaxation is going to go on. Agar IVR aaye, VR aaye, to please remember it is V. Y is because of atrial emptying, X is because of atrial relaxation. Please remember that ejection ke time pe X descent aayega. There is something known as X dash, hai na? X dash. Isko hum X dash bolte hai. Kya hai ye X dash? Is pure ko X bolte hai aur isko hum X dash bolte hai. Alright? Pure ko X bolte hai aur isko hum X dash bolte hai. All right. So what is this X dash? X dash is nothing but the tricuspid valve uh, bulged into the right atria because, uh, which, because of which the C wave came. That as soon as the ejection will start, just the semilunar valve is going to open up, this uh, bulged uh, TV is going to come back to its normal position. As soon as it's come back to normal position, this X dash is going to come. So this X dash is because of, I'll just wrap this up. This X dash is because of what thing? This X dash is because of, yes, please, tricuspid valve returning to its normal position. And for normal, please write it down, normal position. All right, simple. Need pe pucha gaya hua hai, that's why I have mentioned over here. All right, Haan, pressure decrease ho jayega, that's why. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. We have discussed about a lot of, uh, discussed about a lot many pressures. Let's discuss about some volumes. Ab, naam mein iska kaam hai. See, see over here. End diastolic volume. What do you mean by end diastolic volume? At the end of the diastole, whatever amount of blood is there, whatever amount of volume is there inside my ventricles, at the end of the diastole, I'm going to call it as end diastolic volume. What do you mean by diastole? What do you mean by diastole? Diastole means relaxation, right? During the ventricular relaxation, whatever volume was there, right? So amount of blood volume filled into the ventricle, kitna hota hai? 120 to 130 ml, right? And that is dependent on the preload or ventricular, uh, this uh, venous return, venous return, hai na? Jitna venous return aega, 
जितना वेन्स रिटर्न करेंगी उतना ही तो मुझे मिलेगा राइट हाउ मेनी मार्क्स यू आर गोइंग टू गेट इन द एग्जाम दैट इज गोइंग टू बी द वीनस रिटर्न फॉर मी है ना जो आप मुझे रिटर्न दोगे दैट इज माई अचीवमेंट इफ माई बच्चा पार्टी गॉट ऑल द क्वेश्चन करेक्ट आई एल बी द मोस्ट हैप्पीएस्ट पर्सन है ना सो दैट इज गोइंग टू बी द वीनस रिटर्न यू हैव टू रिटर्न मी ऑल हंड्रेड परसेंट बैक है ना सो दैट इज द ई डी वी नाउ वट इज द स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम इज इन वन स्ट्रोक in one stroke my ventricle how much blood it can eject that is in the one stroke that is nothing but the per beat the blood amount of blood that is pumped by my ventricle in one beat that is called as stroke volume kitna hota hai stroke volume that is going to be 60 to 70 ml 60 to 70 ml is slide se ek question pakka aayega so please 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 remember this slide very very important roz matha tik ke so isko hai na it takes only 5 seconds to go through this slide so ek bari matha tik ke so jana hai na so please remember that end systolic volume is nothing but at the end of systole that means jaise hi maine contraction complete ki at the end of systole whatever amount of volume is left inside it how i can calculate that see over here see carefully that yahan par edv matlab jitna blood aaya during the diastole and jitna jaane ke baad jitna gaya that is stroke volume jitna bacha after the stroke volume that is called as end systolic volume so how can i calculate the stroke volume kya hoga stroke volume ka formula kitna aaya tha EDV, राइट एंड उसमें से सॉरी ई एस वी का फॉर्मूला क्या होगा ई एस वी का फॉर्मूला क्या होगा हाउ कैन आई कैलकुलेट द ई एस वी ई एस वी स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम भी आप लिख सकते हो कि ई डी वी कितना आया था उसमें से मैंने ई एस वी माइनस कर दिया राइट एंड इफ आई कैलकुलेट द ई एस वी ई एस वी को उधर ले जाओ स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम को इधर ले आओ द सेम थिंग ई एस वी कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड एज ई डी वी माइनस एस वी ADB minus SV that is going to be ESV. SV is going to be equal to जितना blood आया था और जितना बचा है इसका मतलब बीच वाला कहाँ गया That is going to be ejected outside. So remember this formula. You are going to require this formula. I have put up the question on this. So please remember that ejection fraction. Ejection fraction always the percentage is going to be better, है ना? Let's say किसी को पांच mark आए किसी को सौ uh, marks आए राइट इफ वन पर्सन गॉट फाइव मार्क्स वन पर्सन गॉट हंड्रेड मार्क्स हु इज द विनर आई डोंट नो द विनर बिकॉज आई डिड नॉट आस्क द क्वेश्चन पेपर वॉज ऑफ हाउ मेनी मार्क्स है ना सो इफ ही गॉट हंड्रेड मार्क्स आउट ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड देन इट इज ओनली द ट्वेंटी परसेंट मार्क्स ही गॉट राइट सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू बी कॉल इट एज पासिंग परसेंटेज राइट ऑन द अदर हैंड ही गॉट हंड्रेड परसेंट सो परसेंटेज इज ऑलवेज बेटर सो आई एम गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट द परसेंटेज अगर फिफ्टी फाइव परसेंट से ज्यादा है तो यू आर पास है ना सो दैट मीन्स इट डिफेक्ट द वेंट्रिकुलर एफिशियंसी यूर वेंट्रिकल इज एफिशियंट यू हैव स्टडीड एफिशियंटली देन यू आर गोइंग टू पास दैट इज फिफ्टी से ज्यादा आया फिफ्टी फाइव परसेंट आया यू आर गोइंग टू पास है ना फिफ्टी से कम आया दैट इज गोइंग टू बी गिविंग मी द साइन ऑफ फेलियर हार्ट फेलियर right if my ventricles are not going to contract even फोर्टी परसेंट दे आर नॉट एबल टू इजेक्ट द ब्लड आई एम गोइंग टू कॉल इट एज failure right 50 se kam aaya that is 45% or 40% it is going to be ventricular failure how to calculate the ejection fraction formula yaad rakhna it is going to be sv upon edv sv upon edv and if i have to convert that into percentage i'm going to multiply it by 100 that is going to be the ejection fraction kya hai ye it is the percentage of blood pump percentage of blood pump ek stroke mein kitna gaya that is going to be stroke volume परसेंटेज कैलकुलेट किया उसी का दैट इज गोइंग टू बी इजेक्शन फ्रैक्शन पर मिनट कैलकुलेट किया व्हाट यू आर गोइंग टू कॉल इट एज पर मिनट कितना मेरा ब्लड बाहर डाल सकता है दैट इज गोइंग टू बी योर कार्डियक आउटपुट कार्डियक आउटपुट इन वन स्ट्रोक हाउ मच माय वेंट्रिकल इजेक्टेड द ब्लड दैट इज कॉल्ड एज स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम हाउ मेनी सच स्ट्रोक हैपन्स पर मिनट दैट इज गिवन बाय द हार्ट रेट राइट सो स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम इन हार्ट रेट इज द फॉर्मूला फॉर माय कार्डियक आउटपुट If I take the cardiac output per unit body surface area per unit body surface area, it is called as cardiac index. It is called as cardiac index. Cardiac output calculate करने के लिए I need something known as fixed principle. Just नाम याद रख लो. Fixed principle. Fixed principle. It's not the fixed law. यहीं पे लिख लो. Fixed law कहाँ पर काम आता है? Fix law is useful in the calculation of diffusion. Diffusion, 
right and fixed principle is useful for the measurement of cardiac output remember that okay please please remember that all right let's move on let's move on frank starling law is also known as heterometric regulation that means i'm going to change the length hai na heterometric that means hetero means change change the length and measure or increase the output kaise hoga initial length what it says frank starling law says that jitna initial length badhaoge na muscle ka within the physiological limit it is going to give you more output for example if the rubber band is there more i stretch the rubber band more with the more force it is going to contract but that is within the physiological limit if i stretch it too much it is going to break away that is not going to recoil back okay so please remember this should happen within the physiological limits so if i increase the venous return what is going to happen venous return is more that means end diastolic volume is going to increase as the end diastolic volume is going to increase what is going to happen my initial length is going to be increased too and as soon as the initial length is going to increase what is going to happen there will be stretch stretch of the muscle fiber it's like a balloon if you fill the uh, water in that balloon the balloon is going to stretch right during that time two things are going to happen there will be increase in the actin myosin cross bridge formation jitne zyada cross bridge banenge utna zyada force of contraction banega the force of contraction is dependent on what is this foc foc is nothing but force of contraction i'll write it completely force of contraction is going to increase bachcho and that is going to give me the more stroke volume more stroke volume that is nothing but the output input kya tha input was my venous return input to my heart is the venous return output from my heart is going to be the stroke volume ab input increase karo output is going to be much much more right increase the input uh, increased to will be the output all right and the another thing that is going to happen the troponin sensitivity trop uh, trop t sensitivity or trop c sensitivity troponin c that means where the calcium is going to bind troponin c sensitivity is also increased yaad rakhna hai rakh sakte ho otherwise you can just let it go okay at least remember that the actin myosin cross bridges is going to increase and please remember for the contraction we always require calcium calcium is ultimately important okay the calcium is going to increase and the calcium binding to the troponin is going to increase and hence the contraction will be increase are you with me are you with me or you have slept okay tell me Yes, okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. एक और चीज देख लो यहाँ पर क्या दिखा रही है ये This is depicting what law. It is तन तनुज तनुज इज सेइंग स्लेप तो मैसेज कौन कर रहा है डॉक्टर तनुज है ना सो सी ओ भैया ओवरलैपिंग इफ यू इंक्रीज द ओवरलैपिंग विद इन द फिजियोलॉजिकल लिमिट कॉन्ट्रैक्शन में क्या होता है बच्चों कॉन्ट्रैक्शन में द लेंथ ऑफ द मसल इज डिक्रीज सो आई एम गोइंग टू कम फ्रॉम द राइट टूवर्ड्स द लेफ्ट ओके सो सी ओ भैया यहां पर ओवरलैपिंग कम थी एज यू इंक्रीज द ओवरलैपिंग व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन एज यू इंक्रीज द ओवरलैपिंग the more and more cross bridges happens but it should be within the physiological limit if you overlap a lot what is going to happen rather than actin myosin overlapping the actin both the sides actin they are overlapping each other so actually it is not the efficient overlapping i want actin myosin to overlap not actin actin okay so that is not going to be heterometric that is going to be homo jo ki aajkal legal hai but we are not going to talk about it hai na so please remember we are talking about heterometric we have to contract it in a uh, physiological limit right so hum hamari limit mein reh ke baat karenge all right so yahan tak kya ho raha hai you can see over here till the time i contracted in the physiological limit my force of contraction has increased but later on if i go beyond the physiological limit it is going to decrease so please remember that okay so this is showing the frank starling law aisa kuch graph aaye and if they ask the law please tell them that this is the frank starling law iska answer do fatafat se mujhe what is the answer of this question which uh dr lion it is nothing but jitna aap contract karoge na utna oh that uh, previous slide mein kya nahi samajh mein aaya bache previous slide mein i have shown this that if you contract this is shown the force of contraction dekho ye resting length of the muscle dikhaya hai और ये टेंशन दिखाया है टेंशन क्या है कि कितना आपका स्ट्रोक वॉल्यूम होगा दैट इज नथिंग बट योर टेंशन राइट एंड दिस इज शो द 
the resting length and this is nothing but yet graph kya depict kar hai? this is depicting the force of contraction right this is depicting the myosin fiber this is depicting the actin fiber jitna actin myosin cross bridges hoga kaun sa cross bridge actin myosin cross bridge hoga jitna zyada cross bridges banenge utna zyada force of contraction hoga but if i go beyond the physiological limit isse zyada contract karungi bahut zyada contract kar liya to actin actin overlapping hogi yahan par actin actin they are overlapping on each other if you can see over here i don't want actin actin overlap i want actin myosin overlap and that's why the force of contraction is going to reduce over here it is going to reduce beyond the physiological limit so please remember jaise aap over stretch karoge ya over contract karoge aapka force of contraction kam hoga but agar aap physiological limit mein reh ke karoge then the efficiency is going to be maximum i hope line you understood this hai na you have given the absolutely correct answer that is arteriol we talked lot about the heart hai na but we have talked scientifically hai na aise humne baat nahi kiya ki tumhare dil mein rehna hai ye rehna hai wo nahi hai we are not strepto focus to live in someone's heart hai na we want the place in the limbic system why limbic system because the emotions are generated by limbic system another question hai na so please remember that do dil hote to do dil hote to pehle hum aapko emergency mein bhejte hai na kyun because it's a gehra wala mutation a big big dangerous mutation hai na we don't want that hai na let's move on types of blood vessel types of blood vessel there are five types of blood vessel depending on their properties wind castle vessel wind castle vessel mein kya property hoti hai bachcho it has the elasticity elasticity and how it is helpful elasticity say i'm going to get the diastolic blood pressure let's understand that via the diagram suppose this is your ventricle and this is your aorta as soon as the ventricle contracts as soon as the ventricle contracts what happens is it is going to throw the blood in the aorta aorta is like a rubber band it has a lot of elastic fibers right what is going to happen as soon as the blood hits this aortic valve this aortic valve is going to stretch it is going to stretch like this and the blood start to accumulate inside this as the blood is coming out of the ventricle the aortic valve is going to stretch but as soon as my systole is over systole over hone ke baad kya hoga at that time what is going to happen let's say this was the condition now my systole is over now this sl valve that is aortic valve is going to be closed no one is there to put the more blood on to my aorta the aorta which was stretched before which was stretched before what is going to happen now it will come back to its normal position it will come back to its normal position and please remember when it was coming back to the normal position what is going to happen whatever blood that was accumulated whatever blood that was accumulated in the aorta it is going to come back and it is going to come into the flow right so please remember at that time my ventricles are relaxing that means it is the diastole which is going on hai na but still the blood pressure is maintained thanks to what thanks to the aortic recoil aortic recoil is going to be the property because of which i'm going to get the diastolic blood pressure ventricles themselves are relaxing if you are relaxing you cannot put the pressure of study on to some other person right you yourself are relaxing right so jo khud relax kar raha hai wo kisi aur pe pressure nahi dal sakta please remember this is not because of the ventricle this is because of the aortic recoil the diastolic blood pressure is because of the aortic recoil all right so what is the property elasticity kis mein hota hai aorta and all large arteries large arteries aorta and all the larger arteries they do have this wind castle effect kya hai wind castle stretch karo to contract karta hai pressure jaane ke baad elastic rubber band remember that hai na next capacitance vessel what do you mean by capacitance vessel it has the capacity to store the blood it has the stretchability but it is like a chewing gum if you chew the chewing gum and you stretch them they will not come back as the elastic rubber band do right so what is going to happen they will remain in that stretched condition unless and until you compress it back right disgusting example but yeah that is how it is going to occur right so they have a lot of high compliance so please remember high compliance is going to be there and whenever you want to contract them you can contract them who is who is having this property the property is there property is there in uh, what thing property is there in the veins larger veins hai you na know? you want break 
विल टेक मोर टाइम देन टेन थर्टी तक चलेगी क्लास है ना वो बहुत लंबा हो जाएगा बच्चे आई गो विद मैक्सिम स्टूडेंट वॉट दे आर सेंग दे आर से नो आई एम गेटिंग दी नो कमेंट्स इन द जूम है ना बिकॉज लंबी हो जाएगी फिर क्लास आप थक जाओगे है ना थोड़ा सा पानी वानी पी आओ यू जस्ट नोट डाउन दिस स्लाइड है ना यू कैन वॉच इट लेटर है ना पांच मिनट आप खुद ले सकते हो वेन्स आर गोइंग टू हैव स्पेशली द सिस्टमिक वेन्स सिस्टमिक वेन्स है ना प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट एक्सचेंज वेसल हु इज द बेस्ट एक्सचेंज वेसल हु आर पोरस पोरस मतलब क्या होता है जिसमें होल्स होते हैं है ना परमेबिलिटी परमेबिलिटी इज गोइंग टू बी Uh, the property of the capillaries and they are arranged in a parallel so that's why they have the low resistance low resistance you know low resistance is going to be your capillaries capillaries right so capillaries are going to be helpful in the exchange because ye bahut thin hoti hai there are very thin vessels thin and porous vessel ye kya ho gaya इसको भी ब्रेक चाहिए लगता है थिन एंड फोरस वेसल है ना थिन एंड फोरस वेसल्स दे आर नथिंग बट योर एक्सचेंज वेसल्स राइट एंड वेन्स के बारे में एक और चीज याद रखो जब हम शॉक में जाता है कोई पेशेंट जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल समन हैड द एक्सीडेंट एंड दे वेंट इनटू द शॉक दैट इज हाइपो परफ्यूजन कंडीशन ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू कॉज द एक्टिवेशन ऑफ सिंपैथेटिक सिस्टम व्हिच इज गोइंग टू कॉज वीनो कंस्ट्रिक्शन एंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट व्हाटएवर ब्लड वाज स्टोर्ड नाउ दैट कम्स इनटू द फ्लो सो इट prevents us from the shock so please remember that also okay kon prevent karta hai veins prevent karti hai hame shock se resistance vessel who is going to give the resistance maximally jisme maximum smooth muscles honge who is going to have the maximum smooth muscle they can contract the vessel maximally so please remember whomsoever is going to have maximum smooth muscles smooth muscle in the tunica media they are going to give me the maximum resistance and who are they bachcho who are they arterioles my bachcha party already gave me the answer i'm very very happy hai na conduit vessel yahan par humne already pad liya tha why because they have asked about the maximum resistance you already gave me the answer i'm very very happy hai na conduit vessel conduit vessel kya hota hai conduit means conduction hai na just conduct karna kahan se kahan tak पॉइंट ए से पॉइंट बी तक ओके वॉट वी आर डूइंग वी आर डूइंग द कंडक्शन है ना हम बुक से नॉलेज लेते हैं एंड वी कंडक्ट इट टूवर्ड्स यू है ना सो दैट यू कैन पास द एग्जाम सो दैट इज द रोल ऑफ द आर्टरीज स्मॉलर आर्टरीज वॉट दे डू दे जस्ट ट्रांसफर द ब्लड ट्रांसफर द ब्लड फ्रॉम वन पॉइंट टू अनदर पॉइंट दैट इज द फंक्शन ऑफ द कंड्यूट वेसल सो प्लीज प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट ऑल्सो राइट डन आगे बढ़े आगे बढ़े फटाफट बढ़ जाते हैं आगे इसका आंसर दो मुझे क्या है वॉट इज द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन देखो ध्यान से देखो यहां पर क्या बोला है वो है कोई हाइपोवॉल्यूमिक कंडीशन में आया फाइन 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 डिक्रीज ब्लड फ्लो टू द टिश्यू ब्रेड फ्रॉम द फॉलोइंग ऑप्शन इफेक्टिव पैरामीटर मोस्ट इफेक्टिव पैरामीटर पूछा है ब्लड फ्लो को कंट्रोल करने के लिए विच इज द मोस्ट इफेक्टिव पैरामीटर हां जी बताइए क्या होता है उसके लिए एक लॉ सुनेंगे हम है ना आंसर्स मुझे डिफरेंट डिफरेंट आ रहे हैं किसी ने ए बोला है किसी ने बी बोला है किसी ने सी कोई डी भी बोली दो है ना मैम आप चूज कर लो है ना कौन सा चाहिए ओके सी ओ भैया देर इज सम फॉर्मूला विच इज नोन एज फ्लो फॉर्मूला फ्लो क्या होता है फ्लो इज इक्वल टू डेल्टा पी डेल्टा पी क्या होता है बच्चों इट इज द प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट है ना अगर मैं ऐसे एक वेसल निकालू यहाँ पर जो प्रेशर है आई एम गोइंग टू कॉल इट एज पी वन एंड पी टू ओवर पी टू माइनस पी वन इज गोइंग टू बी माई प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट एंड अपॉन रेजिस्टेंस है ना ना दिस रेजिस्टेंस का फॉर्मूला इज गिवन बाई दिस पॉइजले है ना दे वर द साइंटिस्ट हु गेव द फॉर्मूला फॉर द रेजिस्टेंस दे सेट दैट The resistance का formula is eight eta l upon pi r raised to four. Pi r raised to four. That means the radius is are going to have the fourth power, है ना? So ये eta क्या है? Eight eta. Eta is the uh, viscosity. Uh, eight eta l. Eta is the viscosity. L is the length. L is the length and R is the radius, है ना? छोटा वाला R is always radius, बड़ा वाला R is always resistance. Please remember, capital R is always resistance, always resistance, है ना? Fine. And छोटा वाला R is radius. All right. So अगर मैं ये वाला formula यहाँ पर put करती हूँ, this formula if I put up in the flow का formula, what is going to happen? See, flow is equal to डेल्टा पी हम ऊपर ही रखेंगे आर की जगह ये वाला फॉर्मूला डालेंगे क्या है एट ईटा एल 
अपॉन पाई आर एस टू फोर डिनोमिनेटर्स डिनोमिनेटर बकम्स न्यूमरेटर है ना तो हम यहां पर लिखेंगे इसको पाई आर एस टू फोर पाई आर एस टू फोर Now, if I ask you, if I double the radius, what is going to happen? Suppose कोलो पहले r is equal to one था, फिर मैंने r is equal to two कर दिया. But जब मैं formula में डालूँगी, it is going to be r raised to four, है ना? So it becomes one raised to four, है ना? That means one into one into one into one. कितना आएगा answer is going to be one. But जैसे ही आपने radius को double कर दिया, it is if I put it into the formula, it is going to be r raised to flow four. तो flow कितना बढ़ेगा बच्चों? Two into two into two into two कितना बड़ा सोलर गुना है ना? So sixteen times more it is going to increase. When you say that, ma'am, we do not require the break, so we also get the motivation कि बच्चा इतना energetic है, we should be double energetic है ना? So our motivation goes high as sixteen times है ना? Solve आसमान पे होते हैं. Why I am saying so? Because it is very very important. पे बहुत बारी क्वेश्चन आया हुआ है अगर आप रेडियस को डबल करते हो रेडियस को डबल कर दिया तो दैट बिकम्स डायमीटर सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर द रेडियस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर इन दिस रेडियस इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर इन द होल होल सिनेरियो है ना क्यों क्योंकि इसके पास फोर्थ पावर है फोर्थ पावर चार गुना की पावर है इसके पास है ना रेडियस ऑप्शन में नहीं है आई एम गोइंग टू चूज डायमीटर मोस्ट ऑफ यू गेव द आंसर करेक्टली ओके इसका आंसर सी नहीं है याद रखो इसका आंसर ए है आर्टीरियल्स कैन चेंज द पैरामीटर बट दे आर अगेन एक्टिंग ऑन द वेसल का डायमीटर इट सेल्फ है ना सो इनडायरेक्टली इट इज गोइंग टू बी डायमीटर ओनली है ना तो रेडियस इज गोइंग टू हैव द फोर्थ पावर सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर दैट कमिंग टू द टाइप्स ऑफ ब्लड प्रेशर ब्लड प्रेशर कितने टाइप का होता है बच्चों फोर टाइप्स ऑफ ब्लड प्रेशर आर देर है ना सिस्टोलिक ब्लड प्रेशर डायस्टोलिक ब्लड प्रेशर पल्स प्रेशर एंड मीन आर्टीरियल प्रेशर हमने मीन आर्टीरियल के बारे में ऑलरेडी बात कर ली थी मीन आर्टीरियल प्रेशर मैंने क्या बताया था सिस्टोल इज फॉर वन टाइम एंड डायस्टोल इज फॉर टू टाइम्स एंड दैट्स वाई मैन एवर आई एम गोइंग टू डू द एवरेज ऑफ द सिस्टोल एंड डायस्टोल आई कैन नॉट राइट सिस्टोलिक ब्लड प्रेशर प्लस डायस्टोलिक अपॉन टू वाई बिकॉज द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ सिस्टोल एंड द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ डायस्टोल इज completely different systole is only for the one time diastole is for two times and you know, a double that of the systole so i'm going to write two third of diastolic blood pressure plus one third of systolic blood pressure i can convert it into uh, the form of pulse pressure so i'm going to write it as diastolic blood pressure plus one third of pulse pressure you can use any of the formula if you cannot remember all of that at least please remember two third of uh, dbp plus one third of sbp via this formula coming to the systolic blood pressure ventricular contraction whenever the ventricles are going to come in the systole that is going to give me what thing that is going to give me the systolic blood pressure kis pe dependent hai kitna blood pressure banega how much blood pressure is going to be put up on my vessels uh, it is dependent on two things how much stroke volume is there and how much compliant my vessels are there all right so it depends on the systolic uh, the stroke volume and this compliance okay it is due to it is due to the ventricular contraction please remember that the questions are going to be asked on the diastolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure bataiye ji ye kiske wajah se tha you are going to tell me and it depends on it depends on the total peripheral resistance depends on the total peripheral resistance pulse pressure is the difference between the diastolic and systolic blood pressure so systolic blood pressure is usually more than the diastolic blood pressure so this is going to be the formula for the pulse pressure han ji bataiye kiske wajah se tha mera diastolic blood pressure batao jaldi jaldi batao very good uh, adhish adi seshan and prakash right abhishek absolutely correct so what is going to happen over here yes it is because of the aortic recoil aortic recoil all right what is happening this is because of the aortic recoil we have saw that already in the wind kessel lesson hai na to ye to hamari ho gayi slide done hai na so please remember sbp minus gbp is going to be the pulse pressure ab regulation pe aate hain how it is regulated please remember when the bp is high you want to lower down the bp when the bp is low you want to increase the bp hai na so increase decrease ka khel chalna chahiye so when you have higher bp you have to apply the brakes who are going to apply the brake brakes are nothing but the baro receptors baro receptors are going to be the brakes and brakes when i am going to apply the brakes i am going to inhibit the motor motor ko hume rokna hai 
एंड इनिबिट्री को हमें एक्टिव करना है दैट मीन्स द कार्डियो इनिबिट्री सेंटर इज गोइंग टू गेट एक्टिवेटेड विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज कार्डियो वेगल सेंटर आई एम गोइंग टू एक्टिवेट द कार्डियो वेगल सेंटर प्लीज रिमेंबर द बैरो रिसेप्टर्स आर ऑल्सो नोन एज ब्रेक्स टू द बीपी ब्रेक्स टू द बीपी आर नथिंग बट द बैरो रिसेप्टर एक्सिलेटर कौन है अगर मुझे बीपी को बढ़ाना है व्हेन माय बीपी इज फॉलिंग डाउन माय स्पीड इज लो आई एम गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द बीपी वाई आर पुटिंग द पुट ऑन द एक्सिलेटर हु इज द एक्सिलेटर द एक्सिलेटर इज नथिंग बट माई की मोर रिसेप्टर्स की मोर रिसेप्टर्स है ना सो प्लीज रिमेंबर वेन आई वॉन्ट टू लोअर डाउन द बीपी आई रिक्वायर ब्रेक्स टू अप्लाई है ना बट वेन आई वॉन्ट टू इंक्रीज द ब्लड प्रेशर आई एम गोइंग टू एक्टिवेट द की मोर रिसेप्टर विच इज नथिंग बट द एक्सिलेटर एक्सिलेटर में क्या करोगे यार मोटर को एक्टिवेट करोगे एंड इनिबिटेशन को इनिबिट करोगे राइट वेन यू एक्टिवेट द मोटर योर स्पीड इज गोइंग टू बी इंक्रीज सो यू आर गोइंग टू एक्टिवेट वी एम सी एंड यू आर गोइंग टू इनिबिट द सी आई सी और सी बी सी easy bus itna yaad rakho there is one more thing you have to remember that what is the range range is 60 to 200 mmhg ye kiska range hai bachcho kiska range hai this is the range of mean blood pressure or mean arterial pressure right one and the same thing okay aur iska range kya hota hai 40 to 60 mmhg 40 to 60 mmhg is the range of chemo receptor activation so please please remember this chart More than enough, okay? ये कौन सा रेगुलेटरी मैकेनिज्म है फीड फॉरवर्ड है फीडबैक है पॉजिटिव फीडबैक है नेगेटिव फीडबैक बताना जरा बीपी रेगुलेशन कैसे हो रहा है यार ये कुछ समझ में आ रहा है जब बढ़ा तब कम कर दिया और जब कम हो गया तो बढ़ा दिया क्या है ये एब्सोल्युटली वंडरफुल खुशी इट इज द नेगेटिव फीडबैक नेगेटिव फीडबैक ये बताओ आपका हार्ट दुख 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 कब करता है वेन इट इज गोइंग टू कॉज टैकी कार्डिया विच इज द फॉलोइंग रिफ्लेक्स विच इज टैकी कार्डिक रिफ्लेक्स गलत आंसर बताया वहीं आके डंडा पड़ेगा है ना इफ यू गिव मी द रॉन्ग आंसर इफ यू गिव मी द रॉन्ग आंसर आई विल लीव यू ऑन दिस ब्रिजेस क्या है ये ब्रिजेस दे आर वेरी वेरी स्केरी ब्रिजेस विदाउट एनी लाइफ सपोर्ट है ना सो ऐसे स्केरी ब्रिजेस पे मैं छोड़ाऊंगी इफ यू डू नॉट स्केयर वाई आर द हाइट्स ऐसे एकदम सुनसान जगह पे एक रात के लिए छोड़ाएंगे आपको है ना सो दीज आर स्केरी ब्रिजेस वाई आर गोइंग ऑन विच यू आर गोइंग टू हैव द टैकी कार्डिया दुख 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 है ना सो प्लीज रिमेंबर कब होता है आपको टैकी कार्डिया जब आप ब्रिज पे जाते हो ऐसे स्केरी ब्रिजेस पे जाते हो सो प्लीज रिमेंबर द आंसर इज नॉट ए इट इज बी है ना सो बेन ब्रिज रिफ्लेक्स ब्रिज पे जाते ही टैकी कार्डिया होता है देर इज ओनली टैकी कार्डिया रिफ्लेक्स दैट इज बेन ब्रिज रिफ्लेक्स पता चले इसको है ना सो क्या है बेन ब्रिज रिफ्लेक्स चार्ट से ढूंढवा के मैं आप लोगों को छोड़ के आऊंगी जिन्होंने ए आंसर दिया है डोंट वरी है ना सो बेन ब्रिज रिफ्लेक्स बेन ब्रिज रिफ्लेक्स दैट इज गोइंग टू बी वेन यू गिव द रैपिड इन्फ्यूजन ऑफ एनी फ्लूड आपका वीनस रिटर्न इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज है ना आईवी फ्लूड वेन एवर आई एम गोइंग टू गिव Ultimately, it is going to go in the veins. Ultimately, it is going to go in my right atrium. What is going to happen? My heart started to do duk 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 duk. Why? Because there is a indirect and direct stimulation of SA node. When I stimulate my SA node, my SA node start to beat or start to produce action potential on a higher frequency. That is, the heart rate is going to increase. So, जब भी आप ये word पढ़ोगे bridge bridge bridge. You are going to remember tachycardia, है ना? जब भी हम ऐसे bridges पे जाते हैं क्या होगा tachycardia? Now, what is the bizarre jarish reflex? Bizarre चीजें अगर आप करोगे what is bizarre? Bizarre means some awkward things, है ना Scientists को ऐसे कुछ खुमार चढ़ता है ना And they do some bizarre things. What they have done? They have given the irritants IV. क्यों देना है भैया है ना वेन यू गिव इरिटेंट्स आई वी वेन यू गिव बिजार थिंग्स आई वी वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन योर हार्ट रेट एंड रेस्पिरेटरी रेट एंड योर ब्लड प्रेशर एवरी थिंग इज गोइंग टू गो डाउन इट इज गोइंग टू शट डाउन फॉर सम टाइम उनको समझ ही नहीं आएगा वॉट इज हैपनिंग वाई यू आर गिविंग द आई वी इरिटेंट्स दैट इज वाई यू आर डूइंग सच बिजार थिंग्स वेन यू गिव बिजार थिंग्स योर रेस्पिरेट रेस्पिरेशन एंड द सीवियर सिस्टम से कोई है दैट मीन्स यू आर गोइंग टू डिक्रीज एवरी थिंग यू आर गोइंग टू डिक्रीज द रेस्पिरेटरी रेट इवन फॉर सम टाइम इट इज गोइंग टू स्टॉप है ना तो हार्ट रेट बीपी एंड एपनिया को करना है शांत करना है सो प्लीज रिमेंबर जब भी बिजार चीजें करोगे तो जारिश रिफ्लेक्स आएगा करना है ट्रायड भूलना नहीं है ना ट्रायड भूलना नहीं 
कुशिंग्स में क्या याद रखना है कुशिंग्स इज फॉर क्रेनियल टेंशन है ना कुशिंग्स जब होता है सो क्रेनियल टेंशन बढ़ता है बिकॉज ऑफ विच योर वेसल्स आर गोइंग टू कंप्रेस एंड वेसल्स आर गोइंग टू कंप्रेस एट दैट टाइम हाइपोक्सिया इज गोइंग टू टेक प्लेस विच इज गोइंग टू स्टूमुलेट स्ट्रॉन्गली योर वेजो मोटर सेंटर दैट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द बीपी बट योर बैरो रिसेप्टर एज सुन एज योर बीपी इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज योर बैरो रिसेप्टर इज गोइंग टू गेट एक्टिवेटेड एंड दैट इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज द हार्ट रेट है ना सो बीपी इंक्रीज हो रहा है हार्ट रेट डिक्रीज हो रहा है so your respiratory rate doesn't know what to do so it is going to cause the irregular breathing irregular kabhi badhti hai kabhi kam hoti hai kabhi badhti hai kabhi kam hoti hai one is going to increase one is going to decrease and the regular irregular respiration is going to take place so aisa ulta pulta ho raha hai so that is going to be the cranial tension jab yahan tension badh jati hai sab ulta pulta ho jata hai but only tachycardic reflex is my ब्रिज वाला रिफ्लेक्स सो प्लीज रिमेंबर इन ऑल अदर थिंग्स माई हार्ट रेट इज गोइंग टू बी डिक्रीज सो एटलीस्ट ये याद रखो ये याद रखो भूलना नहीं इसको है ना बहुत मेहनत करी है निमोनिक बनाने के लिए दिस निमोनिक इज ओनली प्रेजेंट योर ओनली बिकॉज दिस इज मेड बाई मी है ना इट इज नॉट देयर इन द एनी बुक्स बट यू कैन रिमेंबर दैट वेरी वेरी इजीली चेंज ब्रिंग्स चैलेंजेस आई नो इट इज challenging to give the exam learning and the sense of new but change is full of promise that is the promise that if you learn this completely you are going to get a very very good marks ab ye question solve karo fatafat se kya hai answer iska kya hai answer bachcho all right wonderful wonderful kya hai answer iska जिसमें यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू हैव एनी एक्सचेंज टिल वॉट पॉइंट टिल द स्वीट सिक्सटीन नो स्टिल द टर्मिनेशन ऑफ ब्रॉन्क्योर दैट इज टर्मिनल ब्रॉन्क्योर्स यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू हैव एनी एक्सचेंज ऑफ एयर विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज डेड स्पेस डेड स्पेस ओके no exchange of air that is known as only conduction no exchange of air no exchange of air please remember that so weibel's classification weibel's classification kya hai let's see he said that weibel was a scientist who said that you are going to have 0 to 23 generation that means actually 24 generation isn't it so 23 generation 0 to 23 that means actually 24 generation but 23 generation is written in most of the books right trachea trachea is cartilaginous airway which is going to be called as zero generation generation zero which is always going to be open and please remember sweet 16 sweet 16 zero is trachea and sweet 16 is t that is again the terminal bronchiole so please remember terminal bronchiole tak t se t kya hota hai when you meet t with t that is only going to conduct the air only going to conduct the air so it is known as conducting zone there will be no exchange of air no exchange of air and if there is no exchange of air that air is actually like a useless air but that's why i'm going to call it as dead space dead space that air is useless to me why because there is no exchange of air over here now after the 17 to 23 generation what is 17 17 is exchange zone or transitional zone transitional zone or the exchange uh, or respiratory bronchioles are going to start over here this respiratory bronchioles are going to start so respiration uh, is going to occur over here why i'm going to call it as respiratory uh, bronchioles because the exchange is going to start and 23 kya hai bachcho 23 is my alveoli so this zone is known as respiratory zone transitional zone or this is also known as exchange zone kyun bola exchange zone because the exchange is happening over here so please remember these two things 0 se 16 t se t aayega mera conducting zone and exchange zone ya respiratory zone se exchange bronchioles से मेरा एक्सचेंज जोन इज गोइंग टू स्टार्ट और राइट मैकेनिक्स ऑफ रेस्पिरेशन एक लॉ हमेशा याद रखना है बॉयल्स लॉ बॉयल्स लॉ गिव हिज लाइफ गिव हिज लाइफ फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दिस लॉ हम कम से कम याद तो रख ही सकते हैं है ना दैट इज नथिंग बट P is inversely proportional to V. When the temperature and everything other things are constant, the pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. That is very very important. 
इज गोइंग टू बी हेल्पफुल नेक्स्ट टाइम है ना अब इंस्पिरेशन एंड एक्सपीरेशन में देखते हैं क्या बोलते हैं नेक्स्ट फाइव टू टेन मिनट्स आई वॉन्ट यूर कंप्लीट अटेंशन ओवर हियर बिकॉज आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू लॉट मेनी प्रेशर्स इन द रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम एक क्वेश्चन रेस्पिरेटरी प्रेशर से या रेस्पिरेटरी वॉल्यूम से पक्का आता है हंड्रेड एंड वन परसेंट सो प्लीज गिव फुल अटेंशन ओवर हियर Now, inspiration में याद कैसे रखोगे इंस्पिरेशन में एस इज देर सो ऑलवेज रिमेंबर वेन एवर यू आर डूइंग द इंस्पिरेशन सक्शन प्रेशर इज अप्लाइड सक्शन प्रेशर इज ऑलवेज अ नेगेटिव प्रेशर है ना सो बी दैट द आई ए पी दैट इज इंट्रा अलवेलर प्रेशर और द इंट्रा थोरासिक प्रेशर दे आर गोइंग टू बी मोर नेगेटिव ड्यूरिंग द इंस्पिरेशन एंड एक्स को ऐसे ऐसे कर दो दैट बिकम्स पॉजिटिव सो रिमेंबर दैट ड्यूरिंग एक्सपीरेशन एम गोइंग टू हैव अ पॉजिटिव प्रेशर बी दैट द इंट्रालवेलर प्रेशर और इंट्राथोरासिक प्रेशर रिलेटिवली दे आर गोइंग टू बी पॉजिटिव एज कम्पेयर टू द इंस्पिरेटरी प्रेशर लेट सी वॉट यू विल बी एबल टू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन और नॉट ये बताओ ड्यूरिंग क्वायर्ट इंस्पिरेशन वॉट इज द अलव्यूअलर प्रेशर नॉर्मली अलव्यूअलर प्रेशर क्या होता है बच्चों इंस्पिरेशन के दौरान ड्यूरिंग क्या होता है देर इज ओनली वन टू नेगेटिव वैल्यूज आर देर बट प्लीज रिमेंबर अलव्यूअलाइ A is the first alphabet. So please remember when they asked during the quiet. Normally, क्या होता है? A पहले आता है, right? So please remember it is going to be the minus one. We have seen inspiration में it is going to be suction pressure, negative pressure. So ये वाला तो out हो गया, right? Fifty fifty out, है ना? This is the intrathoracic pressure. T for two, याद रखना T for two that is going to be intrathoracic pressure. Intrathoracic pressure. टू आता है सो टू पॉइंट फाइव आया माइनस तो इट इज गोइंग टू बी इंट्राथोरासिक प्रेशर अलव्यूल आया ड्यूरिंग नॉर्मल रेस्पिरेशन इट इज गोइंग टू बी चेंज बाय ओनली वन डिग्री प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट है ना तो बात करते हैं हम इसकी तो ध्यान से देखो यहां पर क्या हो रहा है दिस इज इंस्पिरेशन एंड एक्सपिरेशन इज शोन ओवर हियर नाउ ड्यूरिंग Uh, the inspiration you can see that the pressure is going in the negative kitna negative in the minus 1 suction pressure right and as soon as the inspiration is got over what happens the air entry happens unless and until the pressure becomes zero back again so if i ask you at the beginning of the inspiration or at the end of inspiration beginning or end pucha hai to aapka answer zero aana chahiye agar during pucha hai during then only your answer is going to be minus 1 okay if i ask you at the beginning of expiration or at the end of expiration what is the pressure inside the alveoli that is again going to be zero but if i ask you during expiration the वैल्यू इज गोइंग टू बी पॉजिटिव है ना एक्स को उल्टा करा था हमने ऐसे सो इफ यू टेड द एक्स इट लुक्स लाइक पॉजिटिव सो प्लीज रिमेंबर प्लस वन ए इज अगेन अ पॉजिटिव साइन है ना सो क्वाइट रेस्टिंग में You are going to have two phases: inspiration and expiration. I'm going to write during over here. During expiration and during inspiration. Inspiration me minus one mmHg, and it is going to be plus one mmHg. But if they ask uh, at the beginning or at the start of the respiration or at the end of inspiration or expiration, it is going to be. Zero zero zero. Okay. Now, what is intrathoracic pressure? ITP is intrathoracic pressure. क्या होता है ये intrathoracic pressure? If I ask you this, this is my lung, not my lung. ये थोड़ा टेढ़ा मेढ़ा है. ऐसा मेरा lung नहीं है. मेरा lung अच्छा है, है ना? So this is pleura, है ना? Let's say the purple was the lung and this is the pleura. Inside the pleural space, whatever pressure is there, I'm going to call that pressure as intrathoracic pressure. And inside the alveoli, whatever pressure is there, I'm going to call that as intraalveolar pressure. Please remember that ITP is also known as intrapleural pressure, and IAP is also known as intrapulmonary pressure. पलमनरी और प्लूरल में कंफ्यूज नहीं होने का ओके अलवियोलाय पलमनरी सेम है प्लूरल थोरासिक सेम सेम है है ना सो so, कितना होता है सी ओ यह इंट्रा थोरासिक इज ऑल्सो शोन माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन जैसे आप इंस्पायर करते जाओगे क्या होगा इट इज गोइंग टू बी मोर नेगेटिव कितना नेगेटिव माइनस सिक्स है ना एंड एज सुन एज यू स्टार्ट एक्सपीरेशन इट विल कम बैक टू माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव बैक अगेन ओके सो अगर मैंने पूछा इंस्पिरेशन के टाइम पे कितना था दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू आस्क यू ड्यूरिंग एंड एट द एंड एंड एट द बिगिनिंग दे आर गोइंग टू आस्क यू इंस्पिरेशन एंड एक्सपीरेशन डायरेक्टली सो प्लीज रिमेंबर इंस्पिरेशन में हमारा हमेशा सक्शन प्रेशर दैट मीन्स मोर नेगेटिव प्रेशर होता है एंड एक्सपीरेशन में इट इज गोइंग टू बी 
माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव एम एच जी सो प्लीज रिमेंबर टू टू टी और टू टू है ना माइनस टू पॉइंट फाइव एंड माइनस सिक्स ये क्या दिखाया है वॉल्यूम आई टोल्ड यू प्रेशर वेन एवर द प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू फॉल तो इसमें दोनों में देख सकते हो आप द प्रेशर इज डिक्रीजिंग इन बोथ ऑफ द प्रेशर इज डिक्रीजिंग ओवर हियर हियर What should happen to the volume? Boyle's law. Volume should increase. The volume is increasing over here, inversely proportional, है ना? And when, when my pressures are increasing, see over here, the pressure is increasing. What should happen to the volume? Boyle's law. The volume should decrease. ये point five liter है. तो ये कौन सा volume होगा बच्चों? Point five liter है तो कौन सा volume होगा? It is nothing but the tidal volume क्योंकि quiet respiration में हम टाइडल वॉल्यूम की बात करते हैं सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट इसका आंसर दो इंट्राप्लूरल प्रेशर इज नेगेटिव बिकॉज ऑफ क्या आंसर होगा इसका वॉट इज आंसर देखो चेस्ट वॉल ऑलवेज वॉन्ट्स टू स्प्रिंग आउट द चेस्ट वॉल नेचुरल टेंडेंसी ऑफ द चेस्ट वॉल इज टू स्प्रिंग आउट एंड द नेचुरल इंट्रेंसिक टेंडेंसी ऑफ माई लंग्स आर टू रिकॉल इनवर्ड एंड द हाइलम Uh, that means at the hilum my parietal pleura and the visceral pleura they are going to meet with each other and that's why they are a closed system they are a closed system they can have any pressure right but the lung is going on the opposite direction the thoracic cavity wants to go in the different direction and in between there is no amount of air vacuum is clear created and that's why i'm going to have a negative pressure over here so please remember both are going in a opposite direction opposite direction mein ja rahe and that's why i'm going to have a negative pressure or suction pressure प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट प्लीज ऑल आर दी प्री वाई क्यूज सो प्लीज 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 इसमें मिस्टेक नहीं करने का अगर आ गया एग्जाम में है ना नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इंस्पिरेशन एक्सपिरेशन आई ऑलवेज टेल यू इन गोज विद एक्स एक्स गोज विद इन है ना सो ये वाला फंडा आपका हर जगह एवरी वेयर इट इज गोइंग टू बी अप्लाइड इन द रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम इन गोज विद एक्स मीन्स ड्यूरिंग द इंस्पिरेशन नॉर्मल इंस्पिरेशन एक्सटर्नल इंटरकोस्टल इज गोइंग टू हेल्प मी During the forceful expiration, internal intercostal is going to help me. Why during the expiration, during the quiet expiration, it is passive because I'm going to recoil my or I'm going to relax these muscles. Just the relaxation of the diaphragm and external intercostal is going to give me that compression pressure which is required, and expiration is going to be passive. Very, 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 very important, है ना? And accessory muscle. What is accessory muscles? They are the extra muscles. muscle that i'm going to contract during the forceful inspiration please remember that that is the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the scalene muscle which is going to increase my vertical diameter of the chest wall so please remember this chart very important yahan se do cheeze yaad rakhni hai please at least remember passive is going to be the expiration and the maximum contribution during the <coughs> excuse me <coughs> During the normal inspiration is going to be of diaphragm. It is going to be of diaphragm. Please remember that. Okay. Next compliance पे आते हैं. What do you mean by compliance? होता क्या है ये compliance? Compliance means stretchability or distensibility. Formula क्या है इसका? The formula is very very simple. कितना volume change होता है? थोड़ा सा pressure change करने के बाद delta V by delta P is going to be your compliance का formula. Please remember that इसमें calculative questions भी आए हुए हैं. The same graph will be shown over here. क्या नहीं समझ में आया बच्चे? क्या नहीं समझ में आया? Lion. Okay. Delta V by delta P है ना? हम एक काम करते हैं. You just remember the slide number or the topic. We can come back over here. Okay. All okay? चलो. Best है ना? पैसिव कुछ नहीं होता यार इंस्पिरेशन में वॉट एवर मसल यू हैव कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड दैट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज योर थोरासिक चेस्ट कैविटी है ना और जैसे ही आप एक्सपिरेशन स्टार्ट करोगे यू जस्ट हैव टू रिलैक्स दम जैसे आप रिलैक्स करोगे इट विल कम बैक टू द नॉर्मल पोजीशन है ना और आपकी हवा जो है वो बाहर चली जाएगी ओके लाइन आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दैट है ना सो वी डू नॉट रिक्वायर टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सम अदर मसल जिसको कॉन्ट्रैक्ट किया बस उसी को रिलैक्स करो राइट दैट इज द थिंग देन कम्स द कंप्लायंस कंप्लायंस इज डेल्टा वी बाय डेल्टा पी दैट इज हाउ मच अ वॉल्यूम इज गोइंग टू चेंज इफ यू चेंज सम अमाउंट ऑफ प्रेशर सो सी ओवर हियर सी ओवर हियर This is my normal thing, है ना? So if I change 10 mm hg of pressure or 10 centimeters of water, so pressure is going to be there on the x-axis and volume is going to be there on the y-axis. Whenever the graphical questions are going to come, you have to do two things. पहली चीज़ घबराना नहीं. Don't get scared. 
uh, if the question comes on the graph. Second thing, see the X and Y axis. All right. You're going to solve this question. So if I change the pressure, 10 centimeters of water, see how much uh, volume change should occur. If I draw this perpendicular line over here, almost 4.5 liters are going to be changed. Almost 4.5 liters are going to be changed over here on the 10 centimeter uh, pressure change 10 centimeter of water pressure change 4.5 liter is going to be changed but if i have higher compliance that means it is easier to stretch the stretchability is increased when this is going to happen this is going to happen when i'm going to have the disease parenchymal disease that is known as emphysema Deco. it is going to be double almost double that is 7.5 the compliance the stretchability is increased when the stretchability is increased what is going to happen the stretchability is increased that means increase in the compliance in seen in what thing increase in the compliance is seen in the emphysema condition only so as a kuch upward left shift yeah upward shift dikhe to aapka answer hona chahiye emphysema only okay and if i have lesser like fiber like thing hai na it is not uh, like a wooden thing or the steel like a thing that it cannot uh, stretch like a rubber band or it cannot recoil Jab stretch nahi kiya, recoil kaise karega? Hai na? when it is not stretch it cannot recoil so it is like a fibroblast it is like a fiber hai na? so in the all restrictive lung diseases restrictive lung diseases fibrosis is going to occur and see over here fibrosis mein aapka volume change is going to be very very low very very low volume change on the same pressure change Okay, so please remember on the basis of compliance and recoil, I'm going to mention those things. Hai na? Emphysema mein kya hota hai bacho? Emphysema mein the compliance is very good. Compliance is good. The stretchability is very, very good. But what is poor there? Poor is going to be the recoil. Recoil is going to be poor. Why is it so? Because let's say this is my normal alveoli. I do have elastic fibers. This is like a spring. I have elastic fibers which can compress the alveoli if I leave the pressure. If there is no pressure on the rubber band, if I leave the pressure, this rubber band will come back to the normal position, right? But if I break those rubber bands, hai na? rubber band break kar liya aapne, to kya hoga? If I break those rubber band, it is easier to stretch. Jaise aap socks use karte ho ya rubber band use karte ho, it becomes loose. So my alveoli becomes loose. It is easier to stretch. But the problem is, it is not going to come back to its normal position. Every time the person is going to inspire, some amount of extra air is going to accumulate inside the lung. And the lung started to look like this. Ye kaisa dikh raha hai aapko? This is looking like a barrel. So please remember the barrel chest is the phenomena, right? Aapka diameter, anterior posterior diameter is going to increase. So this is known as barrel chest. This is a normal chest, you know, normal chest aise hai, which is not looking like a barrel. But later on, if the emphysema is there, it looks like a barrel chest because of the air trapping that is going to occur, you know, which is known as air trapping that is going to occur during the emphysema. Chewing gum dikhaya hua hai, which is easier to stretch, but it will not recoil, you know. It's like that. It's like a chewing gum. Fibrosis mein kya hota yaar? Dono hi cheeze poor hoti hai. There is poor compliance because it doesn't have the stretchability and it doesn't have the recoil. Stretchy nahi kiya, to recoil kaise karoge? Kaha se aaya ye recoil, hai na? So yase nahi bolne ka ki ulta ho jata hai, ulta kabhi nahi ho sakta, hai na? That fourth possibility is not there. So please remember, fibrosis mein the compliance is going to decrease. The compliance is going to decrease and that's why ye wala graph humara niche aata hai, okay? Please remember this. Surface tension pe aate hain. Bhoat sari tension hai dunia mein. Mujhe pata hai but ye ek aur tension pad lo. Aasaan ho jai ki zindagi hai na. So what is surface tension? When you have alveoli, when you were baby, fetus hoote thai aap. Tab kya hoota tha? Yahaan par na aise ek water ki lining hoote thi. Water lining is there when we are, we were fetuses hai na. But the problem was... <clears throat> These were collapsed before. So we don't have any problem because the mother was giving us the oxygen. But as soon as we are born, now this water wants to collide with all the molecule and form a single badasa molecule of water, single drop of water with combining. There are adhesive forces and cohesive forces, which is nothing but the inward force. This water creates the inward force that is known as surface tension. Why? Because now the air is there inside it. As the baby start to breathe, it is going to be the air which is coming inside it. Right? So this air water interface. Interface means what? It is the phase. That means it is the junction where the air water interface is there. 
when the junction is there air or water ka junction hota hai in that i'm going to have this adhesive and cohesive force which is going to collapse my alveoli that is a problem inward force is generated that is nothing but your surface tension i do not want that surface tension otherwise i'll be having very very difficult to breathe hai na i'll be having lot of difficulty to breathing so what i'm going to do i'm going to attach some lipid molecules kya bolte hain isko zara batana to zinda ho mere bachcho क्या हो गया है आज का दिन का है ना बता दो जरा हो यहाँ मेरे साथ तो वेरी गुड सो दे आर नोन एज सरफैक्टन दिस लिपिड मॉलिक्यूल्स आर नोन एज सरफैक्टन लिपिड ऊपर कैसे आया अपने आप से बिकॉज लिपिड्स आर लेस डेंस मॉलिक्यूल दे आर गोइंग टू फ्लोट ऑन दिस वाटर एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट दिस वाटर एयर इंटरफेस एयर वाटर इंटरफेस इज डिक्रीज बिकॉज ऑफ दिस लिपिड लाइनिंग ओवर हियर and that's why if i decrease this air water interface what is going to happen this air water interface was the surface tension na if i decrease that air water interface my surface tension will be reduced hai na and that is going to help me in the uh, inflation of this alveoli so please please remember that if the surface tension is higher two things are going to happen first is the alveoli is going to be collapsed है ना दी अलवियोला इज गोइंग टू कोलैप्स एंड इट इज गोइंग टू ड्रेन लॉट ऑफ वाटर है ना यहाँ पर ऐसे ब्लड वेसल भी होती है राइट पलमनरी कैपलरीज आर देयर इन साइड द लंग एंड इफ आई हैव इनवर्ड फोर्स दैट इज गोइंग टू पुल लॉट ऑफ वाटर इन साइड द इंटरस्टिशम ऑफ द लंग एज वेल एज इन द अलवियोलाई सो दैट इज गोइंग टू लीड टू पलमनरी एडीमा पलमनरी एडीमा सो आई डोंट वॉन्ट दैट एंड दैट्स वाई आई नीड टू हैव द सरफैक्टेंट्स आई नीड टू हैव द सरफैक्टेंट टू प्रिवेंट दिस है ना पलमनरी सरफैक्टेंट इज सिक्रीटेड बाय खुद दो क्वेश्चन है आंसर दे दो एब्सोल्युटली वंडरफुल यार एम एस धोनी अर्पिता आई डिड नॉट एक्सपेक्टेड दैट वेरी गुड यार वेरी गुड आई कैन नॉट इवन रीड योर नेम्स यू आर दैट यू नो एब्सोल्युटली वंडरफुल सो दिस इज बी राइट दे नो दैट इट इज द टाइप टू न्यूमोसाइड बट इफ द टाइप टू इज नॉट देर आई टोल्ड यू यू हैव टू मार्क द क्लारा सेल क्यू क्यों मार्क किया क्लारा सेल बिकॉज द क्लारा सेल्स आर गोइंग टू प्रोड्यूस सरफैक्टेंट प्रोटीन्स विच हेल्प इन द स्टेबलाइजेशन ऑफ द सरफैक्टेंट है ना सरफैक्टेंट ना सही कम से कम जो सरफैक्टेंट है उसको तो स्टेबलाइज करो है ना डोंट फॉल इन टू रीडिंग अ लॉर्ड ऑफ थिंग्स वॉट एवर थिंग्स यू हैव रेड ऑलरेडी प्लीज मेक श्योर दैट उससे कुछ गलत नहीं होना चाहिए यू शुड नॉट मेक द मिस्टेक वॉट यू हैव रेड ऑलरेडी है ना सो स्टेबलाइज योर नॉलेज क्लारा सेल की तरह है ना सो इफ द टाइप टू न्यूमोसाइट इज देयर गो विद दैट एंड इफ द टाइप टू न्यूमोसाइट इज नॉट देयर गो विद द क्लारा सेल वेरी गुड एब्सोल्युटली वंडरफुल आई एम लविंग दिस कॉम्पोजिशन क्या होता है बच्चों कॉम्पोजिशन में सबसे आगे होता है लिपिड देन द प्रोटीन है ना लिपिड एंड प्रोटीन लिपिड में सबसे कॉमन होता है आपका डी पी पी सी प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस इज द कोलिन एंड नॉट इथेनोलामिन द आंसर द क्वेश्चन केम इन द नीट पी जी एंड दे हैव गिवन द फोर ऑप्शन लाइक डाई पालमिटॉइड फॉस्फोटिडाइल इथेनोलामिन then uh, some other options like spingomyelin and other uh, lipids and then they have given the lecithin the answer was lecithin the most common lipid is going to be the dppc which is also known as lecithin it is not ethanolamine choline hai tabhi mark karna varna lecithin ko mark karna iska fayda kya hai this is the major uh, सरफैक्टन हम जब एल एस रेशो लेते हैं इफ इट इज मोर देन टू आई से दैट माई दिस बेबी विच इज बॉर्न इट इज गोइंग टू हैव अ मेच्योर लंग इफ द मेच्योर लंग आर नॉट देर दिस एल एस रेशो दैट इज लेस इट इन टू स्पिंगो माइलिन रेशो इज गोइंग टू बी लेस देन टू लेस देन टू प्लीज प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट डी पी पी सी एंड लेस इथ इन अप्लाइड एस्पेक्ट क्या है बच्चों सरफेस टेंशन कम होगी किससे इफ आई वॉन्ट टू डिक्रीज द सर्फेस टेंशन आई हैव टू गिव द स्टीरोइड एंड थाइरोइड देखो ये भी एस टी दिखा रहा है एस टी क्या है सर्फेस टेंशन सर्फेस टेंशन को कम करना है तो क्या देना पड़ेगा एस टी देना पड़ेगा वी प्रेफर द स्टीरोइड है ना सो so, अगर हमें लग रहा है कि मम्मा को प्री मेच्योर लेबर हो रहा है प्री मेच्योर बर्थ कैन अकर वी आर सस्पेक्टिंग दैट द बेबी इज गोइंग टू कम बिफोर टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू गिव द स्टीरोइड स्टीरोइड है ना सर्फेक्टेंट डिक्रीज हो गए तो क्या होगा इफ द सर्फेक्टेंट लेवल्स आर लो my baby is going to have lot of problem in the respiration why my baby someone else's baby hai na jo prematurely born ho raha hai hamara to kuch hai hi nahi hai na so rds and hmd what is rds respiratory distress syndrome respiratory distress syndrome 
बेबी इज गोइंग टू बी इन द डिस्ट्रेस वाई बिकॉज ही इज गोइंग टू हैव लॉड ऑफ डिफिकल्टी इन ब्रीदिंग क्यों क्योंकि सरफैक्टेंट्स कम है इसी को आप हाईलीन मेम्ब्रेन डिजीज भी बोल सकते हो हाईलीन मेम्ब्रेन डिजीज भी बोल सकते हो विच इज गोइंग टू बी सीन इन द प्री टर्म बेबी एक बड़ा लंबा चौड़ा केस दिया जाएगा आपको रिगार्डिंग द प्री टर्म बेबीज एंड दे विल आस्क यू वॉट इज डेफिशियंट और वॉट इज द कंडीशन रेस्पिरेटरी डिस्ट्रेस इन रोम ये वाला सॉल्व करो देखो यहां पर देखो यहां पर कुछ नहीं बचे स्टीरोइड जब देते हो सामिया वेन यू गिव द स्टीरोइड दैट हेल्प्स टू प्रोड्यूस द सरफैक्टेंट फास्टर एंड दैट्स व्हाई इट हेल्प्स टू रिड्यूस द सरफेस टेंशन इफ यू वांट टू रिड्यूस द सरफेस टेंशन एंड यू आर सस्पेक्टिंग दैट द बेबी इज गोइंग टू बी बॉर्न प्री मेचरली अगर मामा आपको आके बोल रही है Uh, अगर फीटस अभी है वहां पर प्रेग्नेंट लेडी इज गोइंग टू कम टू यू एंड शी गिव्स यू द सिम्टम्स एंड यू सस्पेक्ट दैट द प्री मेच्योर लेबर इज हैपनिंग एंड द बेबी इज गोइंग टू बी बोर्न यू आर गोइंग टू गिव द स्टीरोइड ओके टू रिड्यूस द सर्फेस टेंशन टू प्रोड्यूस मोर सरफैक्टन इट एनहेंसेज द सरफैक्टन प्रोडक्शन है ना रिड्यूस द सर्फेस टेंशन नाउ इफ आई इंस्पायर आई एम गोइंग टू गेट अ पॉजिटिव अपस्ट्रोक दिस इज द थाइरोइड भी सेम करता है बच्चे थाइरोइड भी सेम करता है बट ऑन द लोअर लेवल दैट्स व्हाई वी प्रेफर स्टीरोइड्स है ना स्टीरोइड है तो दे दो बट अगर कोई कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन है मम्मी को कोई डिजीज है जिसमें स्टीरोइड अलाउड नहीं है देन वी गिव द थाइरोइड राइट नेक्स्ट कमिंग टू द स्पाइरोमेट्री दिस इज नोन एज स्पाइरोमेट्री इंस्पायर करोगे तो अपस्ट्रोक आएगा एक्सपायर करोगे तो डाउन स्ट्रोक आएगा लेट से एक्जेल है ना एक्सपायर हम नहीं करने वाले सो पहली चीज इंस्पायर करोगे तो अपस्ट्रोक आएगा राइट सो इफ आई डू द क्वाइट रेस्पिरेशन वॉट एवर अमाउंट इज गोइंग टू बी एक्सपायर्ड और इंस्पायर्ड दैट इज गोल्ड एज टाइडल वॉल्यूम कितना होता है फाइव हंड्रेड एम एल इफ आई आज द सब्जेक्ट टू इंस्पायर फोर्सफुली ही इज गोइंग टू इंस्पायर फोर्सफुली इट इज गोइंग टू बी कॉल्ड एज इंस्पीरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम इंस्पीरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम राइट आई एम गोइंग टू कॉल इट एज आई आर वी कितना होता है टू टू थ्री लीटर्स प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस इज लीटर्स दिस इज नॉट एम एल राइट इफ आई राइट इन द एम एल इट इज गोइंग टू बी टू थाउजेंड टू थ्री थाउजेंड एम एल है ना सो ये एम एल में है दिस इज इन द एम एल एंड आई आर वी इज इन द लीटर्स सेम इफ आई आस्क द सब्जेक्ट टू एक्सपायर फोर्सफुली वॉट एवर एक्स्ट्रा अमाउंट ऑफ एयर इज गोइंग टू एक्सपायर आई एम गोइंग टू कॉल इट एज एक्सपीरेटरी रिजर्व वॉल्यूम आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू राइट इट कंप्लीटली यू ऑलरेडी नो दैट इट इज गोइंग टू बी कॉल्ड एज ई आर वी ई आर वी इज यूजली ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड टू थर्टीन हंड्रेड एम एल और वन पॉइंट टू टू वन पॉइंट थ्री लीटर्स है ना बट देर इज सम अमाउंट ऑफ एयर नो मैटर हाउ फोर्सफुली यू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट यूर लंग्स इट इज रिसाइडिंग इन साइड यूर लंग इट इज नॉट कमिंग आउट सो प्लीज रिमेंबर इफ इट इज रिसाइडिंग इन साइड यूर लंग देर विल बी नो वे विच इज गोइंग टू कम एंड दिस इज नोन एज रेजिड्यूएल वॉल्यूम कितना होता है रेजिड्यूएल वॉल्यूम द रेजिड्यूएल वॉल्यूम इज गोइंग टू बी अराउंड इलेवन हंड्रेड टू ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एम एल इलेवन हंड्रेड टू ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एम एल प्लीज प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट ओके नाउ If the amount is not going to come out, I cannot measure it with the spirometer, and that's why there is no graph of it, right? So residual volume cannot be measured with the this spirometer. But residual volume is not there in the option. What we should do? We should learn the capacities, and we are not going to give up. So what is the capacity? Uh, the tidal volume plus IRV. I'm going to call it as the inspiratory capacity. Inspiratory capacity. If I add the ERV plus the um, RV, I'm going to call it as expiratory capacity. Expiratory capacity. When you add two or more volumes, it is called as capacities. Capacities, right? Now, if I ask you, if I just add, uh, sorry, expiratory capacity is this one. If I add ERV and TV. right if i add erv and tv that will be called as expiratory capacity if i add erv plus rv that will be called as functional residual capacity functional residual capacity okay to so, agar maine aapko question pucha if i ask you a question after normal expiration how much amount of air is there inside your air, uh, lungs so please remember normal expiration is over here hai hey na so the frc is going to be residing in your lungs functionally right so that's why it is called as functional residual capacity right if i add if i add irv tv and erv 
what you are going to call it as these are the volumes which are going to be measured by my spirometry and this gives a vital function that how my lungs are uh, working right so it is very very vital for knowing the functionality of my lungs so i'm going to call it as vital capacity you know so this capacity is known as vital capacity now if i add all the volumes if i add all the volumes kya bologe bachcho total total lung capacity total lung capacity total lung capacity now please remember if you cannot measure the rv if you cannot measure the rv rv se jo jo capacities banti hai whatever capacities are made up including the rv i cannot measure that also because i cannot measure the rv itself if this volume is cannot uh, this volume cannot be measured by the spirometry obviously whatever capacities are containing this rv i cannot measure them also so three things cannot be measured first thing is rv second is the frc and third thing is tlc cannot be measured by the spirometry spirometry se measure nahi kar sakte and that's why i'm going to mark a as the answer a as the answer right you have given the answers already i'm very happy i'm getting chat in the youtube also i'm getting the zoom in the zoom also so i hope you understood the phenomena jinhone nahi answer kiya i hope you will be able to answer in the gt and in the exam i'll see personally kaise kaise kaam kiya hai sabne physiology gt mein hai na next volume of the gas in the lungs at the end of the normal expiration is referred as kya bologe ye question abhi pucha tha functional residual capacity hai na normal res uh, एक्सपीरेशन के बाद वॉट एवर अमाउंट इज रिमेनिंग दैट अमाउंट इज गोइंग टू बी कॉल्ड यहाँ से लेके यहाँ तक यू गोइंग टू बी कॉल्ड यू गोइंग टू कॉल इट एज ये फंक्शनल रेजिडल कैपेसिटी अब ये क्या चीज है दिस इज अ डायनामिक वॉल्यूम है ना थोड़ी एक्शन करते हैं वॉट इज अ डायनामिक वॉल्यूम सी ओवी दिस इज द एफ ई वी वन एंड एफ वी सी क्या होता है ये एफ ई वी वन एंड एफ वी सी आई एम गोइंग टू आर्ट द सब्जेक्ट टू इंस्पायर फोर्सफुली and hold it for some time and then expire as much as forcefully possible as soon as possible right as quicker as forcefully as possible genox says that it takes 3 seconds to expire the uh, amount of uh, functional uh, vital capacity post vital capacity outside right so i'm going to draw a perpendicular line from here and perpendicular line from here where he stopped expiring the air outside and i'm going to divide this into the three seconds first second 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 and third second right whatever amount of air he expired during first second first second mein jo bhi amount of air is going to be expired i'm going to call it as fev1 fev1 the amount of air expired in first two second please remember this is not second second this is first two second combining the first one and the second one i'm going to call it as fev2 and whatever amount of air is expired in first three seconds 1 2 3 that i'm going to call it as fev3 This FEV2 and FEV3 is very very less. क्यों? क्योंकि यहाँ पर आपने याद रखना है अस्सी नब्बे सौ है ना दैट इज एटी नाइनटी एंड हंड्रेड सेवेंटी फाइव टू एटी परसेंट नाइनटी टू नाइनटी फाइव परसेंट नाइनटी फाइव टू नाइनटी एट और हंड्रेड परसेंट Don't remember that. Make it easy. Life is going to be very, very easy if you remember this way. Eighty, ninety, hundred, है ना? So eighty. That means maximum amount of air is expired in first second. Eighty plus ten is going to be ninety. That means in the second second, I only expired ten percent of the air or ten whatever ten percent uh, that is there extra amount of air. So I'm going. Don't bother about only the Fe V one and not about the Fe V two and Fe V three, right? So I'm going to calculate the percentage. I told you the percentage is very very important, not the marks per se, right? So please remember, if I uh, do this formula, Fe V one upon F V C. What is F V C? F V C. तो बताया नहीं मैम आपने. F V C is nothing but the total amount of air. Right? It can be similar to Fe V three also. It can be different also. Please remember. it can take more time to expire the air so it can be more also so i'm not going to call that they are same right they are a bit different okay but you have to multiply it by 100 all right now please remember if i have a obstructive lung disease let's say what is obstructive and restrictive if i obstruct the airway let's say yahan par problem hai it is going to take more time 
air is going to take more time to come inside so what is going to happen my fev1 is going to decrease the numerator is decreasing but all air can come out right so fvc is going to be normal if my numerator is decreased what is going to happen to the ratio the ratio is going to decrease too ye kab hota hai when you have a obstruction so old may fev1 percentage fev1 percentage is going to decrease कैसे याद रखोगे ओल्ड एज में सब कुछ डिक्रीज होता है सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस इज द ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीज इन द ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीज एफ ई वी वन परसेंटेज इज ऑल्सो डिक्रीज लेट सी अबाउट द रिस्ट्रिक्टिव इफ आई टाई यू टू योर चेयर है ना लाइक दिस You will not be able to give the exam, है ना? You will not be able to give the exam by going on the exam center, right? So that amount of air is going to be wasted. That area is wasted. I'm not having any ventilation. When this is going to happen? When my lungs are going to? Why my lungs? When anyone's patient's lung is going to be fibrosed, है ना? So please remember that is known as restrictive lung disease. Restricted lung disease में what is the problem? Is the problem in the airway? No. So my FEV1 can be normal also? Yes, absolutely right. It, the numerator can be normal, and but the FE uh, FVC is going to be decrease. If my denominator is decrease, or it can happen on in the severe cases that. the fev1 start to reduce a bit but remember at that time my fvc is going to be reduced much 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 more so please remember in the rld the fev1 percentage that means the ratio is going to be increase yaad rakho ek cheez old may it is going to be decrease and rest you are going to know that it is going to be increase okay please please remember that All right. So see over here. If they give the value like this, आपको बस इतना ध्यान रखना है what they have given over here as a percentage. If the percentage is decreasing, doesn't matter. It is going to be OLD only. है ना? If you can see over here, the percentage FEV1 percentage is increase. That is going to be your RLD. RLD. समझ में आ रहा है? हाँ या ना? कुछ बोल दो यार. है ना? Perfect. 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 All right. यहाँ पर तीन चीजें याद रखनी है आपने. फ्लो वॉल्यूम को इसमें तीन चीजें याद रखनी है वॉट आर द थ्री थिंग्स फर्स्ट थिंग इट इज द अपोजिट थिंग दैट दे हैव गिवन व्हेन यू गो फ्रॉम द राइट हैंड साइड टूवर्ड्स द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड द वॉल्यूम इज इंक्रीजिंग यहां पर उल्टा हो रहा है सब कुछ उल्टा पुल्टा है ध्यान दो यहां पर सो इट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज ओवर हियर है ना लाइन यू आस्क मी द क्वेश्चन एट द एंड बिकॉज इट्स ऑलरेडी टेन ओ वी हैव अराउंड एटी स्लाइड्स लेफ्ट है ना इजी है बाद वाली स्लाइड्स बट इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट है ना Now the volume is increasing. What is this, bacho? This is the effort-dependent part. Just remember whatever I am telling you. This is effort-dependent part, and this is effort-independent part. Independent part. All right. Please remember whenever you are talking about this down wala curve, that is nothing but the inspiration ka curve, right? And when you talk about upward curve, that is expiration wala curve. This is a normal curve. Right hand side we are going to have residual volume, which is a lesser volume, and we are going to have total lung capacity over here, which is a more volume. Let's see what questions they are going to ask you. When the restrictive lung disease is going to happen, restrictive lung disease hota hai. So the curve is going to shift towards the right hand side so r se r yaad rakhna hai what is r se r whenever i'm going to have a restrictive lung disease patient the curve is going to shift towards the right hand side mainly the problem is going to be in the expiration that's why the curve is going to be on the upward side itself and whenever i'm going to have the obstructive lung disease ulta hota hai the curve is going to shift towards the left hand side please remember this thing only over here right hand side RLD left hand side OLD if you have scooped leg pattern or scoop pattern or dog leg pattern that is going to be emphysema scooped pattern scooped out pattern or dog leg pattern ऐसा कुछ नाम दिखाई दे सो वन एक्स्ट्रा एग्जांपल याद रखो इट इज नन अदर देन एम्फाइजीमा एम्फाइजीमा ऑल राइट सो प्लीज प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट आल्सो ऑल राइट इतना ही याद रखो काफी है डेड स्पेस क्या होता है यार डेड स्पेस व्हाट इज डेड स्पेस ओवर हियर टेल मी नॉर्मल में पूछा हुआ है इट इज गोइंग टू बी एनाटोमिकल इज इक्वल टू फिजियोलॉजिकल होता क्या है ये बता दो There is only one type of uh, dead space that is physiological dead space because I'm teaching physiology, you know. Physiological dead space, on the other hand, is divided into two types. Which one? Which two types? Two A A A alveolar and A 
एनाटोमिकल एनाटोमिकल इज नॉर्मल अल्वियोलर नॉर्मली अल्वियोलर डेड स्पेस कितनी होती है यार जीरो है ना इफ आई हैव टू कैलकुलेट द फिजियोलॉजिकल डेड स्पेस हाउ कैन आई कैलकुलेट द फिजियोलॉजिकल डेड स्पेस एनाटोमिकल डेड स्पेस प्लस अल्वियोलर डेड स्पेस इज गोइंग टू बी फिजियोलॉजिकल डेड स्पेस हाउ मच इज द एनाटोमिकल डेड स्पेस मैम इट इज वन फिफ्टी एम एल इट इज वन फिफ्टी एम एल एंड हाउ मच इज दलर डेड स्पेस बचो इट इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो इन द नॉर्मल इंडिविजुअल सो जीरो किसी में भी एड कर दो दैट इज गोइंग टू बी दैट वैल्यू ओनली सो कैन आई से दैट द फिजियोलॉजिकल डेड स्पेस इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू बी वन फिफ्टी विच इज इक्वल टू एनाटोमिकल डेड स्पेस येस सो इन द नॉर्मल इंडिविजुअल माई फिजियोलॉजिकल डेड स्पेस इज इक्वल टू एनाटोमिकल डेड स्पेस बट अगर किसी में हो गया पैथोलॉजी पैथोलॉजी में वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन द पैथोलॉजी द डेड स्पेस द अल्वियोलर डेड स्पेस इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज नाउ आई कैन नॉट से नाउ आई कैन नॉट से दैट द फिजियोलॉजिकल इज गोइंग टू बी इक्वल टू एन एनाटोमिकल नाउ द फिजियोलॉजिकल डेड स्पेस इज गोइंग टू बी मोर दैन एनाटोमिकल डेड स्पेस राइट right? क्योंकि उसमें जो भी वैल्यू इज गोइंग टू एड इन टू द अल्वियोलर डेड स्पेस इवन इफ इट इज लेट से टेन इट इज गोइंग टू बी फिजियोलॉजिकल इज गोइंग टू बी वन सिक्सटी राइट सो इन दिस एग्जाम्पल वन सिक्सटी इज गोइंग टू बी फिजियोलॉजिकल एनाटमिकल इज नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज इट इज गोइंग टू बी वन फिफ्टी ओनली वन फिफ्टी वन सिक्सटी से कम होता है प्लीज एग्जाम में करेक्ट करके आना है ना और जेन्यून रिक्वेस्ट एनाटोमिकल डेड स्पेस इज मेजर्ड बाय फाउलर्स मेथड में आप कैसे याद रखे इतना सारा है याद करने के लिए जस्ट मेम्बर एनाटमी में डिसेक्शन हॉल में जाते हो देर आर डेड पीपल अवेलेबल विच स्मेल्स वेरी फाउल है ना फाउल स्मेल आती है चक्कर भी आके गिर पड़ते हैं लोग राइट सो फाउल स्मेल इज गोइंग टू कम वेन यू गो इन द एनाट हॉल टू डाइसेक्ट द डेड पीपल डेड पीपल गिवस फाउल स्मेल ओके सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट नेक्स्ट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग वैल्यू डिपेक्ट द नॉर्मल वीक्यू रेशो क्या होता है नॉर्मल वी क्यू रेशो एब्सोल्यूटली वंडरफुल लविंग इट यू नो द वे यू आर आंसरिंग द क्वेश्चन इज एब्सोल्यूटली वंडरफुल यू आर गोइंग टू रॉक द एग्जाम इट इज पॉइंट एट पॉइंट एट होता क्या है ये वी क्यू जितना वेंटिलेशन होता है वी क्या होता है और क्यू क्या होता है द अमाउंट ऑफ एयर दैट केम इन टू द लंग फॉर एक्सचेंज कितना होता है यार हाउ मच इज द वी V over here is going to be around 4.2 liter, है ना And the amount of blood that came for the exchange, it is going to be how much? It is going to be 5 liters. 4.2 upon 5 comes out to be 0.8, 0.8. है ना Now tell me one more thing that if I ask you, ventilation perfusion कहाँ पर ज़्यादा होता है, कहाँ पर कम होता है? If I ask you that, let's draw it in the another paper itself. V Q and V by Q. Okay, तीन चार्ट बनाएंगे हमने एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एपेक्स पे क्या होता है एट द एपेक्स एंड बेस योर लंग्स आर दिस ट्राइंगुलर दे आर नॉट सिलेंड्रिकल है ना यहां पर स्पेस कम है देर आर लेस स्पेस सो वेंटिलेशन इज गोइंग टू बी मिनिमम ओवर हियर इट इज गोइंग टू बी लोअर बट प्लीज रिमेंबर द परफ्यूजन इज गोइंग टू बी मच मच लोअर ओवर हियर अगर न्यूमरेटर कम है बट डिनोमिनेटर इज मच मच लो वॉट इज गोइंग टू बी द रेशो रेशो इज गोइंग टू बी इंक्रीज वाई बिकॉज द परफ्यूजन इज वेरी वेरी लेस वेरी लेस है ना वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन एट द बेस इन द बेस वी डू हैव लॉर्ड ऑफ सर्फेस एरिया the ventilation is going to be maximum the ventilation is going to be maximum as compared to the apex but there will be more blood vessels also so the perfusion is going to be much 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 more what is going to be uh, happen to the ratio ratio is going to be decrease who is the culprit always remember the culprit is going to be perfusion the culprit is going to be perfusion please remember that hai na perfusion is going to be the culprit hai na itna yaad rakho vq kahan par maximum hota hai agar ratio maximum pucha you are going to answer it as apex agar uh, unhone pucha maximum ventilation kahan par hota hai then it is base maximum perfusion kahan hota hai wo bhi base pe hoga but the ratio is going to be maximum at the apex hai na dono cheeze different hai hai na isko chhod do and uh, since i'm having uh, the lesser you can say vq ratio is more at the apex that means ventilation is comparatively more as the perfusion jitna blood aa raha hai usse kai zyada hawa aa rahi hai so much much more air is there and that uh, much much more air is helpful in the aerobic bacteria growth hai na aerobic bacteria growth is going to be uh, aerobic bacteria is going to grow at the apex so please remember the tuberculum bacterium 
that is going to grow over there. TB is going to be uh, common in the apex. Hai na? VQ minimum hota aapke. Base pe reflexes mein aate. Heads paradoxical reflex. Kya hota yaar? Newborn baby mein. Newborn baby mein. First few breaths. First few breaths are going to be. The inflation. The inflation. The baby cries and everybody is going to be happy. The inflation inhibits. Uh, stimulates further inflation. That is known as heads paradoxical reflex that is the paradox that happens only first few breaths zindagi mein dobara ye kabhi nahi hoga you are reading this for the first and last time so first and last time yehi reflex activate hota hai when the baby is born right so that is nothing but the inflation stimulates further inflation now rest of the life what is going to happen there is another reflex which will be activated that is hearing bluer inflation reflex or hearing bluer deflation reflex kya hai ye dono reflex Inflation inhibits further inflation. That is your hearing bluer inflation reflex. And in deflation inhibits further deflation. That is my uh, hearing bluer deflation reflex. Simple sa funda hai. Zindagi mein baad mein sab negativity aati hai. Jab paida hota hai, tabhi bas khush hota hai hum, right? That is the positivity. So please remember, only the newborn baby is happy, happy. Positivity spreads positivity all the time. Otherwise, this is going to happen. So please remember these reflexes, you know. Gas transport. CO2 hai, O2 hai. Do gas padde ki baut exam ke liye hai na. <laughs> Baaki gases baad mein padde na hai na. Varna dhuwa nikal jayega. So 4 ml percent. Yeah, if I have to calculate per minute, it is going to be 200 ml per minute is going to be transported. The CO2 is transported from my tissue towards the lung to exhale it outward. Hai na? Forms. Kaun kaun si form hoti hai? B, C, D. Yaad rakhna. Hai na? So, B, C, D kya hai? Bicarbonate. C is carbamino compound. Hai na? Carbamino hemoglobin. And D is dissolved form. Dissolved form. Isi... Sequence mein yaad rakho, maximum is going to be transported by the bicarbonate, then the 20% is transported via the carbamino compound. Carbamino hemoglobin kya hota hai? Carbamino hemoglobin wo hota hai, jis hemoglobin se CO2 attached hai. So carboxy hemoglobin kya hota hai fir? Bataiye, carboxy hemoglobin kya hota hai? Carboxy hemoglobin ek poisoning mein milta hai. What is that poisoning? That poisoning absolutely wonderful Prakash and Abhishek, wonderful, wonderful and bridge also. So it is going to be the monoxide. Ye kabhi bhi normal person mein nahi milta. It is not going to be found in the normal person. It is pathological. Happens in the carbon monoxide poisoning. Okay. Let's move on to the oxygen. Oxygen thoda sa zyada transported hota hai. That is 5 ml percent or 250 ml per minute. Iske do hi form hai. Either it likes to swim or it likes to go by a ship. What is the ship of the... Uh, oxygen that is nothing but oxyhemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin carries 98 to 99% of the oxygen. Hai na? Dissolved form kitna hota hai? Dissolved form is only 1 to 2%. 2 to 2. Hai na? That is 1 to 2% oxygen is transported via the dissolved form. Okay. So most of the things are going to prefer the ships. Hai na? Pani mein ships prefer karoge. Flow karna pre prefer nahi karoge. So please remember that. Iska answer solve karo. Ye solve karo. Answer do fata fata. Very good. So it is going to be alkalosis. Kaise pechana? Whenever I'm going to talk about the right shift, you have to put a right tag. Tag kya hai? Whenever you increase all these things. Then I'm going to have a right shift. Kya hoti hai, bacho, right shift? Temperature. Temperature, whenever the temperature is high, it is going to cause the right shift, hai na? Blood bank mein kya karte ho? Aap store karte ho blood ko low temperature pe. So that is going to cause the left shift, hai na? Acid. A for acid, yaad rakhna. It can be any acid. It can be carbon dioxide. It can be lactic acid. It can be, what thing? It can be uh, your uh, H plus ion also. Lactic acid kab banta hai? When you have hypoxia, anaerobic metabolism hota hai so hypoxia also causes hypoxia also causes right shift okay and g for glycolysis glycolysis may via the lubering arabicoat pathway i'm going to form something known as 2 3 bp g all these things if i am going to increase it is going to cause a right shift left shift may extra thing you have to remember that is nothing but the hemoglobin fetal hemoglobin is going to cause the left shift 
राइट टैग पुट करना है इस क्वेश्चन पे इफ यू डू इट रॉन्ग मेरे से बुरा कोई नहीं होगा है ना देन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग फिनमिना अकर्स इन द ऑक्सीजन हीमोग्लोबिन डिसोसिएशन कर्व कौन सा होता है इन द लंग्स सो प्लीज रिमेंबर एल 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 आर 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 देर आर हेल्डन इफेक्ट एंड बोहर्स इफेक्ट है ना आई एम डिलिब्रेटिंग डिलिब्रेटी deliberately writing this haldens effect and bohr's effect this is going to cause left shift and this is going to cause right shift right shift right haldens effect is going to cause uh, left shift and it is going to cause loading of oxygen on to the hemoglobin right and it is going to cause release of oxygen release of oxygen and it is going to happen in the tissues है ना सो वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एल 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 आर 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 सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट सो इफ दे आर इन द एल इट इज गोइंग टू बी हेल डेन है ना सो ये आपका आंसर हुआ ये आपका आंसर हुआ आगे बढ़ते हैं ट्रांजेक्शन ऑकर्स बिलो मेडुला वॉट चेंज इज गोइंग टू बी सीन इन द रेस्पिरेशन रेस्पिरेशन के एंड में आ रहे हैं हम चलो पढ़ लेते हैं ये ध्यान से दो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू रिपीट दैट अगेन आई एम अज्यूमिंग दैट यू नो दिस ऑलरेडी है ना सो लेट्स लर्न दैट ये आपका हुआ वी आर जी ये डी आर जी ये प्री बॉडिंगर कॉम्प्लेक्स है ना पीबीसी क्या होता है प्री बॉडिंगर कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड दिस इज द डी आर जी विच इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फाइव बिकॉज आई एम हैविंग द आई न्यूरोन्स ओवर हियर आई न्यूरोन्स ओवर हियर एंड दे आर गोइंग टू बी दिस इज माई पेस मेकर पीबीसी इज प्री बॉडिंगर कॉम्प्लेक्स विच इज द पेस मेकर ऑफ रेस्पिरेशन बोथ ऑफ देम इज द ऑन ऑफ सेंटर ऑफ द रेस्पिरेशन ऑन किया ऑफ किया ऑन किया ऑफ किया बट जब आप एफ एम ऑन करते हो फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इट इज वेरी इरेग्युलर इरेग्युलर एंड शैलो इरेग्युलर एंड शैलो रेस्पिरेशन ऐसा कुछ रेस्पिरेशन आपको मिलेगा which i don't want i want regular and deep respiration so i'm going to put something known as apneustic center apneustic center ye kya karta hai it is going to cause the stimulation of i neurons it is going to cause stimulation of i neurons and it is going to increase the depth of respiration depth of respiration but if i do not stop this it is going to cause inspiratory spasm inspiratory spasm which is known as apneusis apneusis inspiratory spasm so i have to prevent this i have to prevent this so there are two ways to prevent this what are the two ways bachcho first is i'm going to inhibit via the vagus nerve which is coming from the stretch receptor from the lung and i'm going to put one another center over here which can inhibit that also that is known as pneumotaxic center pneumotaxic center pneumotaxic center kya karta hai it regulates the rate of the It regulates the rate of the respiration, है ना सो so, ये proper respiration करवाता है Let's break it down. अगर मैंने यहाँ काटा what is going to happen if I uh, remove uh, or if I cut below the medulla? No uh, matter what, which stimulus I'm going to give that is not able to reach to my lung. So the medulla uh, below the medulla, if the cut is there, what is going to happen below medulla? No signals from the medulla is going to reach able to reach to my lung, है ना तो क्या होगा the respiration is going to be stop hai na the person will not be able to inspire he will expire hai na so please remember that aage sab likha hua hai so below medulla cut karoge to the respiration is going to stop agar aapne yahan kaata let's see the lesion is here between the pons and medulla what is going to happen at least the irregular and shallow respiration can be seen the regulation the tuning of the respiration is not going to occur now there are two things when i'm going to cut over here that is mid pontine lesion may i have to see whether the vagus is intact or vagus is cut vagus intact hai to at least one inhibition is intact so the deep respiration is going to occur but if i cut the vagus also no inhibition on the apneustic center the person is going to land up into the apneusis it is going to have the inspiratory spasm apneusis ho jayega agar maine dono nerve cut kar di to right but if i cut below the medulla below the medulla kya hoga ki voluntary respiration is not going to occur hai na iske upar aapka hota hai cortex cortex kya karta hai bachcho voluntary respiration voluntary respiration is going to happen with the help of cortex that is not going to uh, happen if i cut below the jaise 
year may once in a year you have a birthday you want to blow your candles or the cake so for that you require a forceful expiration that is not going to happen you will not be able to blow the candles via the mouth hai na haath se bujha sakte ho so now if i uh, destroy if i destroy let's say somehow uh, if i have destroyed the brain stem but the cortex is intact such as in the bulbar polio bulbar matlab jo brain stem ko affect kare right so what is going to happen if you damage the brain stem the automatic respiration is proper but the problem is that he has to uh, sorry automatic respiration is gone but the voluntary respiration is active right he has to voluntary resp uh, voluntarily respire all the time he cannot sleep because when you sleep who is going to inspire and expire voluntarily that is not going to happen so he is going to go uh, he is going to go as soon as he is going to sleep he is going to have apnea he is going to wake up and due to lack of sleep he is going to die okay that is known as a curse that is on dying curse on dying curse ये हो गया न्यूरल रेगुलेशन लेट्स कम ऑन टू द केमिकल रेगुलेशन क्या होता है ये केमिकल रेगुलेशन होता है बिकॉज ऑफ द ग्लोमस सेल देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ सेल इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द ग्लोमस वन सेल जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस देर आर ऑक्सीजन सेंसिटिव पोटेशियम चैनल विच आर गोइंग टू क्लोज एंड द पोटेशियम स्टार्ट टू एक्यूमुलेट इन साइड विच कॉज द डीपोलराइजेशन है ना सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस पोटेशियम चैनल क्लोजर्स this action potential is formed in the chemo receptor you have to remember this two names glomus cell which has the oxygen sensitive potassium channel there are two types of chemo receptor central chemo receptor peripheral chemo receptor peripheral chemo receptor is present in the carotid body and aortic body carotid body and aortic body is far away from my medulla hai na so i have to make their action potential reach to the medulla so i have to go through the nerves so who is going to carry the message from the carotid uh, body it is going to be the ninth nerve or glossopharyngeal nerve aortic body se 10th nerve that is aortic nerve what are the stimuluses that are going to be present increase in the pco2 increase in the po2 and increase in the h plus ion in the blood right and increase in the h plus ion in the csf is going to be the only stimulus remember only stimulus in the medulla that is nothing but the central chemo receptor but if i do not give you if i did not give you the option as h plus ion what is going to happen remember the po2 is already less over here so it cannot cross the membrane right and the h plus ion in the blood it is the polar molecule it has a charge it cannot cross the blood brain barrier and cannot go in the medulla now what is going to happen my co2 is going to cross over it is going to combine with the water and with the help of carbonic anhydrase the carbonic acid will be formed but it is unstable it is going to divide into h plus ion and bicarbonate and this h plus ion where it is increase it is increase in the csf so if the carbon dioxide is there in the option and h plus is there in the option go with the uh, h plus ion but if the h plus ion is not there in the option who can stimulate the central chemo receptor central chemo receptors are stimulated by carbon dioxide if the h plus is not there in the option h plus in the blood cannot stimulate the cc wo sirf pc ko stimulate kar sakta hai what is pc peripheral chemo receptor please remember that follow your heart but take your brain with you so let's talk about the brain hai na it does not matter how slowly we are going we are progressing at least hai na please remember that ye kya hai bachcho this is your somato sensory system next 20 minutes i want your full attention kyunki hum cns padhne wale hain all right so <clears throat> somato sensory system mein i want you to focus on this what is this डीपर लेयर में क्या है पैसिनियन कापसल कैसा दिख रहा है अनियन शेप कैसा अनियन दे हैव गिवन द क्वेश्चन लाइक कॉकटेल अनियन पता नहीं कौन सी कॉकटेल पी के ये क्वेश्चन बना रहे थे फालतू फालतू क्वेश्चन बनाते हैं ना सो एन बी सस्ता वाला पी रहे हैं सो कॉकटेल अनियन दे हैव आस्ट अबाउट सो प्लीज रिमेंबर कॉकटेल अनियन क्या होता है इट इज इन द डीपर लेयर एंड इट इज नन अदर दैन द पैसिनियन कापसल सो प्लीज रिमेंबर मीजनर कापसल इट इज गोइंग टू बी मोस्ट अबंडेंट मतलब सबसे ज्यादा कौन होता है मीजनर कापसल ग्लैबर स्किन क्या होता है बच्चों ग्लैबर स्किन वॉट इज ग्लैबर स्किन दिस इज द स्किन विच इज अ ग्लैबर स्किन 
वेर आई एम नॉट हैविंग एनी हेयर वैक्सिंग के बाद वाला नहीं नेचुरली पूछ रही हूँ राइट नॉट आफ्टर वैक्सिंग विदाउट वैक्सिंग आई डू नॉट हैव द हेयर ओवर हियर एंड एट द सोल सो आई एम द ग्लैबर स्किन मीजना कापसल्स आर गोइंग टू बी द मोस्ट अबंडंट ओके over there this question please remember and they are important for fine touch and two point discrimination but 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 if i ask you two point discrimination mein who is the best kya answer doge if i ask you the best kon hai please remember jab bhi ye fine touch aur two point discrimination aata hai na to mm wale lagane hain m wala dusra kon hai merkel's disc merkel's disc is going to be the best in the two point discrimination बेस्ट इन द टू पॉइंट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन ये क्या है ये क्या दिखाया हुआ है दिस इज अ ब्रेल रीडिंग वेन द पर्सन इज ब्लाइंड और ही इज नॉट यूजिंग द विजुअल इन फ्लोट वी रिक्वायर द एजेस एंड द टू पॉइंट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन सो दैट वी विल नो दैट ये देर इज अ टू डिफरेंट पॉइंट राइट सो प्लीज रिमेंबर इन द ब्लाइंड पर्सन दिस इज नोन एज ब्रेल रीडिंग ब्रेल रीडिंग में कौन सबसे ज्यादा हेल्प करता है द मर्कल इज गोइंग टू बी मोर हेल्पफुल एज कम्पेयर टू द मीजनस दोनों ऑप्शन में होंगे गो विद द मर्कल्स ओके मकस नहीं है देन यू हैव टू मार्क द मीजनस कापसल प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट है ना बेस्ट कौन होता है बेस्ट कहां पर होते हैं ये मीजनस कापसल बेस्ट होता है फिंगर टिप्स पे और लिप्स पे ओके बेस्ट आर टू पॉइंट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन इज बेस्ट That means छोटे डिस्टेंस में वन टू थ्री एम एम में ही आई कैन गेट टू नो दैट ये दिस इज अ टू डिफरेंट पॉइंट दीज आर टू डिफरेंट पॉइंट आई कैन गेट टू नो विद मिनिमम डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दीज टू पॉइंट वेर इट इज बेस्ट बेस्ट इज द फिंगर टिप्स एंड लिप्स वेर इट इज वर्स्ट ये बता दो वर्स्ट कहां पर होता है बता दो वर्स्ट इज प्रेजेंट एट द बैक है ना स्कैपुला के ऊपर इट इज वर्स्ट है ना ये क्या है कॉकटेल आनियन है ना Uh, and B asked this cocktail onion is nothing but the pacinian P for pacinian P for pressure please remember it is helpful for the pressure also it is helpful for the high frequency vibration कहाँ होता है ये बहुत deep होता है you can see over here everything is present in the superficial dermis this is present in the deep dermis है ना pacinian हमेशा deep dermis में होता है please remember that okay onion shape now coming to the free nerve ending don't get confused between the pain and pressure that measures the pressure ओके फ्री नर्व एंडिंग्स इज फॉर द पेन है ना पेन हमें फ्रीली मिलता है है ना वी डू नॉट रिक्वायर एनी थिंग फॉर दैट पेन कैन बी फेल्ट इवन ड्यूरिंग द रीडिंग आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड यू है ना सो प्लीज रिमेंबर फ्री नर्व एंडिंग्स फ्री में क्या मिलता है पेन ऑलवेज रिमेंबर फ्री में मिलता है पेन है ना नॉन हेयर स्किन में मीजनर्स आर गोइंग टू बी मैक्सिमम एज कम्पेयर टू द मर्कल्स प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट ओके प्रोटेक्टिव फिनमिना पेन इज ऑफ टू टाइप हमने पढ़ा था फास्ट पेन एंड स्लो पेन बता दो कैरी किससे होता है वॉट आर द नर्व फाइबर्स विच कैन कैरी दिस फर्स्ट रिमेंबर फास्ट पेन इज द सुपरफिशियल पेन एंड स्लो पेन इज द विसरल पेन एंड डीप टाइप ऑफ पेन नर्व फाइबर बताओ यार फटाफट फटाफट टाइम नहीं है वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड ए डेल्टा इज गोइंग टू बी द फास्ट पेन का नर्व फाइबर एंड स्लो पेन का इज सी फाइबर एब्सोल्युटली वंडरफुल अनमाइलिनेटेड सी फाइबर्स मेन न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर यहाँ पर स्लो पेन का क्या होगा एस फॉर सो पेन एस फॉर सब्सटांस पी सब्सटांस पी एग्जाम्पल दो कोई भी विसरल पेन एम का पेन एबडोमिनल पेन है ना गोल ब्लैडर वाला पेन किडनी स्टोन वाला पेन ऑल दैट पेन हिपाटाइटिस वाला पेन ऑल दैट पेन इज अ स्लो पेन ऑन द अदर हैंड स्किन इंजुरी एनी स्किन इंजुरी इज गोइंग टू बी सुपरफिशियल स्किन इज सुपरफिशियल है ना सुपरफिशियल इंजुरी मस्किटो का किस इज गोइंग टू बी योर सुपरफिशियल पेन मेन न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर कौन सा होता है ग्लूटमेट रिमेंबर समवन सेड मी दैट द मेटिंग इज ऑलवेज एक्साइटेटरी सो मोस्ट एक्साइटेटरी हॉर्मोन और न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर इज गोइंग टू बी हेल्पफुल इन द सुपरफिशियल पेन है ना वो सब जल्दी जल्दी समझ में आ जाता है ऐसे ऐसे वाले एग्जाम्पल दो तो है ना एंटीरियर देर आर थ्री हमने अब रिसेप्टर पढ़ लिए वी हैव लर्न द रिसेप्टर नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द ट्रैक्स है ना एंटीरियर लैटरल एंड पोस्टीरियर दीज आर द थ्री ट्रैक्स अवेलेबल एंट से याद रखो एंटीरियर एंट से याद रखो एंटीरियर प्लीज रिमेंबर द एंट है ना ये वाली एंट If the ant is crawling on your body, what sensation you are going to have? Are you going to have fine touch or crude touch, बच्चो <laughs> someone saying sexual crude <laughs> okay crude touch and fine touch kabhi nahi hoga hai na crude touch and itching you are going to have itching also and i don't know how to relate this but you have to remember this sexual sensation is also carried by this anterior hai na 
Now, coming to the lateral, laath mara, someone kicks you. If someone kicks you, you will be uh, having pain and you'll your temperature is going to rise. You're going to be very, very angry and your temperature is going to be very, very hot temperature. So, please remember, pain and temperature is carried by the lateral rest. All sensation is going to be carried by the posterior column. Be that the proprioception or the fine touch or the stereognosis, graphesthesia, vibration, pressure, all these are carried by this. Don't remember all this. Just remember, crude touch, itching, sexual sensation, pain, temperature, nahi hai. All of them are carried by the posterior column. Posterior column. Now, yahan par brown sikat padhenge. What we are going to run? Brown sikat. Kya hota hai? Batao, yaar. Kya hota hai? Brown sikat. Uh -huh. Batai, jaldi. Jaldi batai, varna class nahi khatam hogi aaj. Half section kar diya aapne hemi section. Aadha brain hamara ho aise uda pada hua hai. Spinal cord bhi kaart do hai na. So half section. That means hemi section of the spinal cord. If you cut the uh, half section of the spinal cord. What is going to happen? The contralateral loss of pain temperature is going to happen. Contralateral loss of anterior tract sensation. And the lateral tract sensation. Mainly pain, temperature, root touch, itching. But crude touch gaya karke koi nahi aayega. Nobody is going to come to you as uh, ma'am, I'm not able to feel the crude touch. They will be coming to you via the complaints of loss of uh, pain and temperature on contralateral side. So please remember, contralateral loss of pain and temperature, crude touch is going to be the brown sickert syndrome. What about the dorsal column? See over here what is shown. First thing, this is the anterolateral tract. Anterolateral tract over here. Anterior lateral tract, the pink wala is going to be shown over here. This pink neuro, uh, this nerve is going to be the first order neuron. This is the first order neuron which is going to have the uh, synapse in the spinal cord itself. As soon as it is going to come in the sp spinal cord, it is going to do what? It is going to uh, give the second order neuron. The second order neuron crosses in the spinal cord itself. And that's why if I cut it on the right hand side, let's say yahan par mene right mein kata. Uh, or par bhi mene right mein kata. what is going to happen see over here if I cut on the right hand side what is going to happen contralateral loss of anterior and lateral column but yaha se jo dorsal column if I see in the dorsal column the dorsal column wala same side of uh, nerve fiber is going to be cut so ipsilateral loss of all these sensation which are carried by the dorsal column will be gone so please remember contralateral loss of pain temperature and crude touch all others will be lost on the same side please remember that all right this is known as brown sickard syndrome brown sickard syndrome all right okay next next uh penfield homunculus kya hai what is this this is the uh, topographical map of your body present in your brain itself. Hai na? So how much area is given to what part depends on how much you use that part. Maximally, to handle everything, we use the hands and to see and everything, we use our face. Hai na? So maximum area is given. This is known as homunculus. This is a sensory homunculus depending on how much you use that body part. If you use that maximally, maximum area will be given to it. Maximum area is given to the hand and face especially in the hand it is given to the thumb and the lips please remember fingertips and lips simple rhyme kar hai. fingertips lips going to have maximum area trunk and hip ye dekho it to piddu piddu sa area diya hua hip ke liye and trunk ke liye the trunk and hip is going to have the minimum area ye dekho hand ke liye itna bada area hai face ke liye itna bada area hai please remember that okay what do you mean by cortical plasticity? The ability to make a new synapses, neighboring neuron ke saath, new synapses banane ki ability. For example, if the person is blind, what is going to happen? He is not having the eye, but these neurons are active. These neurons in the brain are active. What they are going to do? The neurons are active. So what they are going to do is they are going to take up the action of neighboring neurons. And this can explain the phantom limb also. 
फैंटम लिम ऑलिसो सो प्लीज रिमेंबर फैंटम लिम आया तो इधर यू आर गोइंग टू राइट कॉर्टिकल प्लास्टिसिटी और द लॉ ऑफ प्रोजेक्शन लॉ ऑफ प्रोजेक्शन कॉर्टिकल प्लास्टिसिटी इज मोर एक्यूरेट सो यू कैन राइट कॉर्टिकल प्लास्टिसिटी और राइट सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट नेबरिंग न्यूरोन्स का वर्क टेक ओवर कर लेगा सो दैट इज द एग्जाम्पल अभी दिया बच्चे ब्लाइंड होगा तो देखने की क्षमता नहीं है बट दैट न्यूरोन इज नॉट गोइंग टू फ्रीली सिट देर दे आर गोइंग टू डू द वर्क वॉट वर्क इट कैन हैव यू कैन सी दैट द ब्लाइंड पर्सन हैव अ नाइस स्मेल सेंसेशन दे कैन हैव द बेटर सेंसेशन ऑफ टच एंड स्मेल एंड हियरिंग राइट एज कम्पेयर टू द नॉर्मल पर्सन दैट इज अ कॉर्टिकल प्लास्टिसिटी ओके दैट इज द वन ऑफ द एग्जाम्पल ये क्या है स्पेशल सेंस में आ गए हम अफताल में सब कुछ पढ़ाया जाएगा दिस इज अ फिजियोलॉजी पार्ट एज सुन एज यू आर गोइंग टू हैव लाइट ऑन टू योर आईज वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन देर विल बी रेटिनाल विच इज इन दिस फॉर्मेट इलेवन सिस रेटिनाल विल बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू ऑल ट्रांस रेटिनाल कैसे याद रखोगे सी कम्स फर्स्ट एंड देन द टी कम्स एंड प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस इज आल नॉट ऑल आल क्या होता है इट इज दाइड Please remember, this is also aldehyde. This is also aldehyde. It is not alcohol. Alcohol होता तो all लगता एक मिनट दे दो. All right. So please remember that. Please remember that it is the all, not all. Okay. Let's move on. Hearing में क्या है? Just remember one thing. है ना? ये सब आपको ENT में पढ़ाया जाएगा. Just remember one thing that because of the potassium entry, I'm going to have depolarization. ये क्या बात कर रही? पोटेशियम एंट्री क्यों हो रही है बिकॉज यू डू हैव समथिंग नोन एज ट्राया वैस्कुलरिस विच इज गोइंग टू पुट लॉर्ड ऑफ पोटेशियम लॉर्ड ऑफ पोटेशियम इन टू माई स्केला मीडिया स्केला मीडिया है ना सो प्लीज रिमेंबर ड्यू टू पोटेशियम एंट्री This is the only place where the potassium is more outside. वरना हर जगह हमने क्या पढ़ा था पोटेशियम इज मोर इन साइड द सेल बट दिस इज द एक्सेप्शन वेर द पोटेशियम इज मोर आउटसाइड एंड दैट्स वाई आज सुना एंट्री राइट प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट इज ओनली प्लेस मूव ऑन टू ऑडिट कॉन्टेक्ट सुनने वाला कॉन्टेक्ट है ना इफ आई आस्क यू सम क्वेश्चन वॉट यू डू you listen to me first of all that listening skill you comprehend that thing right that means you understand stuck now okay ek bari refresh kar lo bachcho ek bari refresh kar lo all right okay i'm coming back again if i ask you one question what you do you comprehend that thing that means you try to understand what i'm asking you all right once you understood ye understanding wala kaam kaun karta hai this inferior temporal the superior temporal lobe is going to do the superior temporal lobe is going to do the comprehension work or understanding of the speech that is known as wernicke's area wernicke's area all right now you understood what i am asking you hai na you have to give the answer either via writing or via speaking out right so who is going to do that motor work when you are typing something you are moving your skeletal muscle when you are talking you are moving your vocal cord you are moving your all oral muscles so please remember that is the motor area which is the motor speech area bolna se yaad rakho broca's area broca's area is my motor speech area broca's area is my motor speech area bolna se yaad rakhna right so please remember if i have sensory aphasia that means my wernicke is defective sensation kya samajh mein aa raha hai ya nahi ye kon decide karta hai wernicke's area so can he he talk fluently yes he can talk fluently because the motor area is normal broca's is normal bolna is normal so he is going to talk nonsense things all the time the speech is going to be fluent but senseless speech hai na bahut sare logo ko देखा होगा आपने है ना यू नो सच पीपल राइट दैट इज नोन एज वर्निकेज अफेजिया और सेंसरी अफेजिया और फ्लुएंट अफेजिया बट 
इफ समन हैज द प्रॉब्लम इन द ब्रोकाज एरिया ब्रोकाज एरिया कहां पर होता है इंफीरियर फ्रंटल कॉर्टेक्स में इफ समन हैज द प्रॉब्लम इन द स्पीकिंग ही कैन अंडरस्टैंड द थिंग प्रॉपरली बट ही कैन नॉट स्पीक दैट इज नोन एज मोटर अफेजिया और नॉन फ्लूंट अफेजिया अटक अटक के बात करेगा राइट बट ही कैन अंडरस्टैंड एवरीथिंग बट ही विल स्पीक विद द uh you can say in the interruptions in between so that is known as non fluent aphasia now over here i want you to focus on this area this is the central sulcus central sulcus divides your parietal lobe and frontal lobe right now there is something known as post central post central gyrus right this elevations are known as gyri okay so post central gyrus please remember this is the sensory cortex s for s sensory cortex right and there is something known as pre central gyrus agar central sulcus ke aage hoga it is in front of the central sulcus i'm going to call it as pre central gyrus right pre is for motor and post is for sensory please remember s and s this question has been asked so please remember that that is all for this slide wernicke is broke as we have already discussed this let's come into the umn and lmn umn and lmn kya hota hai ye umn and lmn pehli cheez lmn kya hota hai and umn kya hota hai lower motor neuron disease upper motor neuron disease please remember agar maine bola upper motor neuron kya hai wo sari cheeze jo control karti hai lower motor neuron ko you do have two types of lower motor neuron अच्छा बच्चा दैट इज अल्फा मोटर न्यूरॉन गंदा बच्चा दैट इज गामा मोटर न्यूरॉन है ना सो so, अल्फा बच्चा अच्छा बच्चा को क्या करना चाहिए अच्छा बच्चा को आपको स्टिमुलेट करना चाहिए गंदा बच्चा को आपको इनिबिट करना चाहिए राइट right? बट दिस गंदा बच्चा कंटिन्यूसली माहौल बनाता रहता है ना इट फायर्स इन ए सिंक्रोनसली दैट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर माहौल बनाने के लिए माहौल क्या है टोन इन द मसल फॉर दैट इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट right so if i cut this lower motor neuron that means alpha motor neuron will not be activated gamma motor neuron will not be activated there will be no tone in my muscle the muscle will be flaccid that is known as flaccid paralysis that is known as flaccid paralysis but if i cut the upper motor neuron now what is the problem please remember i'm not going to cut the alpha motor and gamma motor i'm going to cut down the stimulation on alpha motor that means voluntarily i cannot do any activity but the problem is that inhibition on the ganda bachcha is gone mummy papa is not there in the home what is going to happen tabahi hai na it is going to uh, fire a lot more excessive firing is going to occur right so that is going to cause continuously high tone i am not going to contract it i am not going to relax it high tone is going to be there continuously contracted phase that is known as spastic paralysis spastic paralysis what is going to happen to the tone in the alpha motor neuron the tone is going to be very very high hypertonia lower motor mein kya hoga gamma gaya lower wala gaya so tone is going to be lower and dtr is dependent on deep tendon reflexes for that the tone is required if the tone is high dtr is going to be higher if the tone is low dtr also going to be low muscle atrophy if you do not use the muscle you are going to have the atrophy present but the atrophy will not be seen why atrophy kaise dikhegi it is continuously contracting right so you are not going to see the muscle atrophy you are going to have spastic paralysis over here and fasciculation and fibrillations are present in the lower motor neuron please remember upper motor neuron mein you have babinski sign babinski sign kya hota hai bachcho whenever i'm going to um, struck the foot of the person from laterally towards medially there will be fanning of the finger and dorsiflexion hai na so kya dikhega umn lesion mein dorsiflexion and fanning of all the toes fanning of all the toes like this hai na it is going to be fan away right so ye aise dur dur jayenge and the great toe is going to be dorsiflex so dorsiflexion of the great toe and fanning of all the limb that is babinski sign yahan par kaun sa dikhta hai you can see the flaccid paralysis flaccid paralysis i hope you can understand are you with me are you with me
राइट चलो आगे बढ़ते हैं स्ट्रेच रिफ्लेक्स वंडरफुल वंडरफुल यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड मोनो साइनाप्टिक रिफ्लेक्स लोडिंग रिफ्लेक्स डीटीआर मायोटैटिक एक ही नाम है सबके योर फ्रेंड्स आर गोइंग टू कॉल समथिंग टू यू योर मम्मी इज गोइंग टू कॉल समथिंग टू यू योर गर्लफ्रेंड बॉयफ्रेंड इज गोइंग टू कॉल समथिंग टू यू है ना द सेम नेम द पर्सन इज सेम है ना द रिफ्लेक्स इज सेम डिफरेंट डिफरेंट निक नेम्स आर देयर और राइट नाउ व्हेन यू गिव अ पैसिव स्ट्रेच मतलब यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू स्ट्रेच ऑन योर ओन समबडी एल्स स्ट्रेच योर आर्म व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन देयर विल बी कॉन्ट्रैक्शन व्हाई बिकॉज़ समबडी एल्स स्ट्रेचेस योर आर्म दैट विल बी इंक्रीजिंग द लेंथ ऑफ द मसल बट आई वांट टू मेंटेन द मसल लेंथ है ना सो आई नीड टू डिक्रीज इट back to the normal how this is going to happen there are length sensors available what are the length sensors muscle spindle hai na l e length muscle spindle l e l e muscle spindle are going to be the length sensors what they do what they do they are going to stimulate my alpha motor neuron alpha motor neuron कैसे स्टिमुलेट करेंगे देर आर एफरेंट फाइबर्स व्हाट आर द एफरेंट फाइबर्स वन ए एंड टू वन ए एंड टू इज गोइंग टू cause the alpha motor ka firing and as soon as the alpha motor is activated i'm going to contract acha bachcha ko kya karenge acha bachcha ko activate karenge to muscle is going to contract and because of that the length is going to come back to the normal level are you with me are you with me yes or no bataiye ji now length has been done hai na but if i excessively contract something i don't have wire and i don't want to move this wire because this is kind of loose sab इधर उधर हो जाएगा है ना सो लेट से आई कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इट आई स्ट्रेच इट नॉर्मली द लेंथ इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज बट इफ आई स्ट्रेच इट टू मच व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन नाउ द टेंशन इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज व्हेन यू इंक्रीज द टेंशन आफ्टर द टेंशन यू नीड टू रिलैक्स है ना क्लास के बाद करेंगे हाफ एन आवर मोर उसके बाद आप रिलैक्स करना राइट सो आई नीड अ टेंशन सेंसर आल्सो कौन होता है टेंशन सेंसर टेंशन सेंसर इज टेनन डन राइट टेन डन सो टेंडन इज गोइंग टू एक्टिवेट माय वन बी फाइबर है ना यहां पर वन ए एंड टू था यहां पर वन बी इज गोइंग टू बी देयर नाउ इट स्टिमुलेट्स द इनहिबिटरी इंटर न्यूरोन इनहिबिटरी इंटर न्यूरोन this inhibitory interneuron is going to inhibit this is going to inhibit my alpha motor neuron it is going to inhibit my alpha motor neuron and that is going to cause muscle relaxation now no more contraction is going to take place it is the muscle relaxation how many synapses are formed here how many synapses one synapse here and another synapse here that's why it is known as disynaptic reflex isko kya bola tha isko bola tha monosynaptic reflex kyunki ek synapse yahi pe ban raha tha bas right but over here i'm going to have two different synapses one is towards inhibitory interneuron and next is towards the alpha motor neuron die synaptic reflex isse kya hoga muscle length is going to increase so that's why it is known as lengthening reaction lengthening reaction stretch reflex se ulta kar rahe the we were doing opposite thing in the stretch reflex so that's why this is also known as inverse stretch reflex yaad rakhna hai to kya rakhoge एक चीज याद रखो दैट इज दॉलगी टेंडन ऑर्गन एंड वन बी गॉलगी टेंडन ऑर्गन एंड वन बी इंट्राफ्यूजल मसल फाइबर्स हैज टू टाइप्स ऑफ चेन फाइबर्स एंड बैक फाइबर्स न्यूक्लियर फाइबर्स टू टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूक्लियर फाइबर न्यूक्लियर बैग फाइबर एंड न्यूक्लियर चेन फाइबर नाउ बी से याद रखना बी फॉर बोथ वॉट आई मीन बाय दैट बी फॉर बोथ मीन्स इट हैज बोथ द फाइबर्स दैट इज स्टैटिक ऑल्सो dynamic also nuclear chain on the other hand has only static only static it has no dynamic hai na dynamic kisi kisi ki personality dynamic nahi hoti we can call them as chain fibers hai na but dynamic are present in the bag fiber now they can give me the change in the length or unit time change bata sakte hain that's why i'm going to call them as dynamic so they are going to tell me about velocity and motion and everything so they are dynamic fibers now what are the nuclear chain fibers chain fibers are going to tell me only the resting length before the contraction of length what was the length that was resting condition and after contraction what is the length that is also a static condition so initial and final length is going to be told to me by the nuclear chain fiber static and dynamic please yaad rakhna hai na aate hain sleep mein jo aap karne wale ho is class ke baad hai na main bhi chain ki neend songi right 
सो बैट डांस इज द न्यूमोनिक वट इज द बैट डांस बच्चो बैट डांस इज बीटा अल्फा थीटा डेल्टा बीटा वेव अल्फा वेव थीटा वेव एंड डेल्टा वेव अगर ये कहां से प्रोड्यूस होती है जस्ट एक चीज याद रखनी है आपने दैट इज रास ये इस स्लाइड में और कुछ भी याद रखने की जरूरत नहीं है जस्ट रिमेंबर द बीटा वेव इट इज गोइंग टू बी देर वेन यू स्टूमुलेट द रास सिस्टम That means very very highly active brain, highly active brain is going to be giving you the beta wave. Then alpha wave में क्या याद रखोगे Meditation position. Meditation means you are awake, but eyes are closed. Eyes closed meditating. That is your alpha position, है ना D D is seen in the deep sleep. and light sleep mein you are going to see the theta wave beta wave is also seen in the rem sleep what you are talking about yes in the rem sleep the person is in the sleep but i can see the beta wave and that's why the rem sleep is known as paradoxical sleep paradoxical sleep what are the frequencies just write down the frequencies like this 0 to 3 i'm going to have delta wave then 4 to 7 i'm going to have theta wave then 8 to 13 i'm going to have alpha wave and from 14 to 30 frequency that is 30 hertz if the frequency is given that is called as beta wave so bat dance please remember that hai na nrem and rem i just now told you that uh, the paradoxical sleep why because you can see the beta waves in this and that's why it is known as paradoxical sleep rem sleep mein bhi sapne aate hain they are known as but you remember those um, nightmares right you remember those scary dreams those scary dreams can be remember later on they are known as nightmares and the scary dreams which are not remember that is known as night terror which can be seen in the nrem sleep topping sleep walking teeth grinding and nocturnal and uresis that means bed wetting all of these are altered events which are seen in the nrem right nrem what about the rem rem may the muscle atonia is going to occur that means you don't have any tone in the any of the muscle except you want to stay alive right so that's why respiratory muscle and as the name suggests uh, rapid eye movement that means eye movement is occurring and the eye movement is going to occur by other extra ocular muscle so these two muscles are active uh, uh, except these two muscles all are going to have the atonia atonia and the spikes will be generated in the sleep in, from the ponto geniculo occipital area and that's why they are known as ponto geniculo occipital spike which is the hallmark of the rem sleep do cheeze agar yaad rakhne teen cheeze to yaad rakhna rem sleep mein pgo spike is the hallmark beta wave dikhne ke wajah se you can call it as paradoxical sleep and you can remember that all the parasomnias is going to be seen in the nrem teen cheeze at least yaad rakho is a uh, slide se hypothalamus ke different different action diye gaye hain there is nothing to teach in this slide just remember these are the nucleus name sleep wake up cycle that is known as circadian rhythm sleep wake up cycle circadian rhythm is maintained by suprachiasmatic nucleus ans ka nucleus hota hai aapka paraventricular nucleus sympathetic and parasympathetic system the anterior hypothalamic nuclei and the preoptic nucleus important for the sexual behavior and thirst control ke liye i require lateral hypothalamus please remember lateral hypothalamus also contains uh, also controls the hunger and it also controls the anger if the lateral hypothalamus is stimulated my thirst center will be activated my hunger center will be activated my anger center will be activated so it is also known as hungry hai na or hangry hai na hungry or hangry there is a terminology which is known as hangry kya hota hai hangry when you are hungry you are angry why because the area is similar similar right appetite regulation mein aata hai कुछ हॉर्मोन्स होते हैं जो आपको सटाइटी देते हैं आफ्टर ईटिंग द फूड राइट दे गिव यू सटाइटी सम हॉर्मोन इफ दे आर रिलीज दे स्टिमुलेट द हंगर हंगर न्यूक्लियस कौन सा होता है हंगर इज जस्ट नाउ वी सॉ लैटरल न्यूक्लियस ऑफ हाइपोथलामस सटाइटी इज वेंट्रोमीडियल है ना कैसे याद रखोगे आफ्टर ईटिंग द फूड वेन स्पेशली द अंकल पीपल अंकल टाइप ऑफ पीपल हाउ दे डू पेट भर गया है ना सो दे पुट द हैंड एंटीरियरली एंड मीडियली ऑन द स्टमक सो 
ventromedial nucleus please remember that is present in the hypothalamus but just for the remembering purpose and yaad kaise rakhoge you are going to remember mango mango is your hunger hormones kya kya hota hai mch is your um, melanin co concentrating hormone agrp is your agouti related protein neuropeptide y ghrelin neuropeptide y ghrelin and orexin these are your हंगर हॉर्मोन्स सटाइटी सटाइटी क्या होता है वेन यू आर नॉट नो मोर हंगरी प्लीज रिमेम्बर अल्फा एम एस एच एम एस एच भी दिया होगा एंड एम सी एच भी दिया होगा हाउ टू रिमेम्बर सटाइटी इज गोइंग टू बी कॉज बाय एम एस एच एंड नॉट बाय एम सी एच है ना सी आया तो वो हंगर करवाएगा एस आया तो वो सटाइटी करवाएगा प्लीज रिमेम्बर दैट ओके नॉट ओनली दैट द लेप्टन इज गोइंग टू बी हेल्पफुल एंड ऑल द इंटरस्टाइनल हॉर्मोन्स आर गोइंग टू बी इम्पॉर्टेंट इंटरस्टाइनल हॉर्मोन्स इंक्लूडिंग द इन शू लिन सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर ऑल दीज थिंग्स है ना स्लीप वेकफुलनेस स्लीप के लिए दो चीजें याद रखना जो जिसमें जिसमें ए है दैट इज गोइंग टू बी रेगुलेटिंग द स्लीप दैट इज गाबा एंड ए सी एच है ना और बाकी सारे हॉर्मोन्स है दे आर गोइंग टू रेगुलेट योर वेकिंग साइकिल है ना टेम्परेचर रेगुलेशन में कौन कौन काम आता है रिमेम्बर द ए सी ए सी क्या होता है यू मस्ट हैव सीन द विंडो ए सी है ना विंडो ए सी क्या करता है इट हेल्प्स अस इन द टेम्परेचर रेगुलेशन क्या करता है ये इफ यू स्टैंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ द ए सी when the environment is hot you are going to stand anterior to the ac and when the environment is cold thand lag rahi hai but you don't have heater you are going to stand at the posterior side of the ac so please remember when you want to adapt in the cold environment you are going to stand posteriorly just remember as this as the hypothalamus anterior khade honge jab you are um, having the summers that is hot adaptation and vice versa don't be afraid to start over it's a chance to build the something बेटर है ना सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द न्यू सिस्टम है ना इजियर सिस्टम थैंकफुली जनरल फिजियोलॉजी फटाफट से कवर करते हैं जनरल फिजियोलॉजी होमियोस्टासिस हमें सब ने पता है कि दिया था ये डब्ल्यू बी के नॉन ने है ना एंड मिल्यू इंटीरियर वॉज गिवन बाय द क्लाउड बर्नार्ड हाउ टू रिमेम्बर एम आई जब एम आई होता है तो इफ द पर्सन डजेंट कम टू अस ही इज गोइंग टू गो इन द क्लाउड सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर मिल यू इंटीरियर गिवन बाई द क्लाउड एंड रेगुलेटरी सिस्टम आर देर मोस्ट कॉमन सिस्टम मोस्ट कॉमन सिस्टम कौन सा होता है नेगेटिव फीडबैक नेगेटिव फीडबैक इज द मोस्ट कॉमन सिस्टम इफ समथिंग इज आस्किंग फॉर मोर 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 दैट इज गोइंग टू बी पॉजिटिव फीडबैक most common negative hai so we are not going to talk about most common we are going to talk about smart studying we are going to talk about feed forward and uh, the positive feedback system iska answer kya hoga bachcho negative feedback ka answer hoga baroreceptor why i'll tell you we don't have time so i have to go fast fast hai na feedback mechan uh, feed forward mechanism first of all feed forward kya hota hai feedback kya hota hai feed forward if i talk about feed forward even before the variable has been changed the correction has been started hai na when you study after the exam or before the exam you study before the exam you are correcting your things you are correcting your answers even before going to the exam by giving lot of gts hai na that means you are anticipating what is going to happen what is going to come in the exam and you are studying that so what are the examples of such thing the correction is occur even before the variable has been changed temperature regulation please remember only the core body temperature regulation is going to occur via the feed forward mechanism shell body temperature negative feedback hota hai just yahan pe itna yaad rakhna and just before the starting of the exercise your heart rate is going to be increased duk 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 right that is going to be your feed forward system even you think about the food i know you must be hungry right now so you think about the food or even if you see the food you are going to be having the gastric acid secretion started that is that means you are not eaten the food right now but still you are having the gastric acid secretion that is your feed forward mechanism gain kya hota hai bachcho gain kya hota hai gain is the uh, efficiency uh, to measure the efficiency you are going to have a gain just formula yaad rakhna correction upon error is the gain hai na kitna efficiently your regulatory mechanisms are working that is nothing but gain all right so positive feedback is slide gayab hai yahan se so i think i have to write it ek bar hi likh lo that is very very important positive feedback mujhe dikha nahi kahin pe all right before going to go towards the positive feedback h2 clamp likh lo h2 clamp is the 
हेड्स पैराडॉक्सिकल रिफ्लेक्स हेड्स पैराडॉक्सिकल रिफ्लेक्स हॉजकिन साइकिल हॉजकिन साइकिल क्लॉटिंग कैस्केड क्लॉटिंग कैस्केड एल एच सोच एल एच सोच एक्टिवेशन ऑफ डाइजेस्टिव एंजाइम्स यस और नो आर यू विद मी एम इज फॉर मिल्क लेट डाउन रिफ्लेक्स कुछ बच्चे अभी सो के उठे हैं गुड इवनिंग लिख रहे हैं हमारी गुड इवनिंग तो हो चुकी थी हमारी गुड नाइट होने का टाइम आ गया है पार्चुरेशन रिफ्लेक्स राइट दीज आर द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ पॉजिटिव फीडबैक है ना हम हेड्स पैराडॉक्सिकल देख चुके हैं ओपनिंग ऑफ सोडियम चैनल कॉजेस ओपनिंग ऑफ मोर सोडियम चैनल कैन बी सीन इन द एक्शन पोटेंशियल क्लॉटिंग कैसकेड एल एस सबको पता है डाइजेस्टिव हेंजाइम हम उसमें पढ़ेंगे किसमें जीआई में मिल्क लेट डाउन रिफ्लेक्स एंड पार्चुरेशन रिफ्लेक्स हैपेंस बिकॉज ऑफ द ऑक्सीटोसिन प्लीज रिमेम्बर दैट ऑल्सो सेल मेम्ब्रेन में आता है सेल मेम्ब्रेन में सिंगर निकोसल हम सबको पता है मैक्सिमम इज गोइंग टू बी प्रोटीन्स प्रोटीन सबसे ज्यादा होते हैं प्लीज रिमेम्बर फिफ्टी टू फिफ्टी फाइव परसेंट फिफ्टी टू फिफ्टी फाइव परसेंट आई गोइंग टू है अबाउट कार्बोहाइड्रेट मोर देन और इक्वल टू फाइव परसेंट इज गोइंग टू बी द कार्बोहाइड्रेट Which is the main lipid? It should be main lipid. Protein कहाँ से आ गया? Main lipid. We are going to talk about main lipid. कौन सा होता है? Main lipid is your phospholipid. Phospholipid, है ना? And lipid absent कौन सा होता है बच्चों? Triglyceride is no, ne never, never is going to be present. तीन तिगाड़ा काम बिगाड़ा हमें तीन तिगाड़ा नहीं चाहिए तो याद रखो तीन तिगाड़ा काम बिगाड़ा ट्राइग्लिसराइड आ गया काम खत्म है आपका है ना बिकॉज इट्स अ सैचुरेटेड प्रोटीन हाईएस्ट कंटेंट किसका होता है हाईएस्ट कंटेंट में हम लिखेंगे प्रोटीन नॉट द फॉस्फोलिपिड है ना सो so हम प्रोटीन लिखेंगे प्रोटीन लिखेंगे है ना यहाँ पर लिखा हुआ है एम्फीपैथिक लिपिड कौन सा होता है एम्फी मींस दोनों प्रॉपर्टी है एम्फीपैथिक लिपिड क्या होता है जिसमें दोनों प्रॉपर्टी है हाइड्रोफोबिक आल्सो एंड हाइड्रोफिलिक आल्सो फिलिक एंड फोबिक है ना दिस इज द हेड पार्ट ऑफ द फॉस्फोलिपिड एंड दिस इज द टेल पार्ट ऑफ द फॉस्फोलिपिड वन इज हैविंग हाइड्रोफिलिक प्रॉपर्टी वन इज हैविंग हाइड्रोफोबिक प्रॉपर्टी सो दिस इज नन अदर दैन दी फॉस्फोलिपिड विच इज गोइंग टू हैव द एम्फीपैथिक प्रॉपर्टी सोल्यूबिलिटी इसी के वजह से आती है हु इज गोइंग टू हैव द मैक्सिमम सर्फेस एरिया यू कैन सी द टेल इज गोइंग टू हैव अ मैक्सिमम सर्फेस एरिया एंड दैट्स वाई एंड दैट्स वाई इट इज अलाउिंग माई लिपिड सोल्यूबल सब्सटेंसेस टू क्रॉस द मेमरेन वेरी वेरी इजिली सो प्लीज रिमेंबर लिपिड सोल्यूबल सब्सटेंसेस कैन क्रॉस द सेल मेमरेन वेरी वेरी इजिली स्टेम सेल की तरह रखना हमेशा अडेप्ट करना जल्दी जल्दी डिफरेंट डिफरेंट चीजों से All right. So solubility. That means lipid soluble substances can cross the cell membrane easily. ये चीज याद रखना I'm telling you again and again because इसी पे पूरा आपका endocrine system is based है ना solubility is going to given by the lipid. So they will allow the lipid soluble substances. Another question is who is going to give you the flexibility? The cholesterol is going to give you the fluidity and flexibility. All other things are going to happen via the proteins proteins all right let's move on gap junction kya hota hai ye gap junction it is allowing the transport to happen from one cell icf of one cell to icf of another cell first cell se leke second cell mein shortcut bana diya group mein message dala at a time many people can read that message what is the benefit it can cause the quick transport shortcut hai na so it is going to cause the quick transport of electrolyte and because of which all the muscle fibers let's say in the heart or in the gall bladder or in the urinary bladder all the muscles can contract at the same time because of the same change in the electrolyte quick change in the electrolyte so that is going to act as a syncytium kya hota hai bachcho syncytium it is the सिंगल यूनिट एक्टिंग एज अ सिंगल यूनिट 
single unit all of the muscles are going to act as a single muscle unit and that is known as syncytium on the other hand agar barricades laga diye aapne tightly band kar diya this is the cell membrane of one cell this is the cell membrane of another cell barricading laga di aapne road ko close kar diya you close the road or occlude the road and you put the jam what is going to happen no transport is going to happen between the cell which is known as paracellular transport Paracellular transport is not going to happen. It will inhibit the paracellular transport. Please remember the jam is junctional adhesional protein. Jam laga diya junctional adhesional molecules. Right. So this is present in the blood brain barrier and this is going to be what thing? This is going to be present in the nephrons. So kya karna hai? Tight junction mein occluding jams and the clouding. Close kar diya road hai na? Barrigates laga ke. Right. So, we can solve this question later on. ECF mein kitna volume hoga? If you can calculate, you just have to remember one formula over here. 60, 40, 20 rule. What is 60, 40, 20 rule? My total body water is going to be 60% of the weight. The ECF, uh, ICF is going to be 40 and 20% is going to be the ECF. That is 60, 40, 20 rule. Yaha par extracellular fluid pocha hai. That means 20 se multiply karna hai. 70 into 20 upon 100 that is going to be 14 so my answer is going to be 14 over here so please remember the 60 40 20 rule asani se sare questions solve ho jayenge please remember that body weight body weight jo bhi body weight diya hai let's say it is 100 percent out of that my 60 percent is going to be total body water i'm going to divide that into two parts intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid out of which 40% is going to be the intracellular, 20% is going to be the extracellular fluid, which I'm going to divide into interstitial fluid and plasma. Kaun sabse bada lag raha hai par? Ye wala hai na? So I'm going to give the maximum percentage to it, right? So 15% is going to be your, what thing? It is going to be the interstitial fluid. If I take 100% as my ECF, then what is going to happen? I'm going to make a four parts of it, three parts. That means 75% I'm going to give to the interstitial fluid and remaining 25% of the ECF, I'm going to call it as plasma. Here 5% of total body weight, hai. don't get confused, hai na? of ECF. And this is jo purple color mein likha hai of body weight. So, dhyan se padna body weight pucha hai ya ECF pucha hai. All right, let's move on. A, B, C, yaad rakhna. A by C, hai na? Kya hai ye A by C? If I have to calculate the body volume, I am going to call it as A by C. That is, A is the amount of, amount of dye and C is the concentration of the dye, hai na? Concentration se divide karungi. But in the body, there is no ideal situation. So what I need to do, I have to subtract whatever dye is metabolized or excreted from the body. A minus E upon C is going to be the formula for calculating the volume. Please remember this formula. All right, all right, all right. Let's solve the questions later on because we are running out of the time, hai na? So, inhone yaha par interstitial fluid poocha hai. So, interstitial, jo bhi I, I se aata hai, that is going to be indirect method. There are going to be direct method and indirect method. Direct method mein you are going to use the dye, right? Indirect method mein you are going to use two dyes, hai na? What are the indirect methods se calculated um, volumes? That is... The intracellular fluid, how do calculate karoge? total body water minus ECF, right? And how do you calculate karoge? ECF se aap plasma minus karoge. Let's see over here. For the one and last time, I'm going to tell you about this body water. Hai na? So, we will keep plasma, right? This is interstitial fluid. In dono ko mila ke humne bol diya, ECF, right? And this is my ICF. Agar sab kuch mila dhu mein, so that is going to be total body water, hai na? Total body water में से मैंने अगर ICF हटा दिया, that I'm um, sorry, total body water में से मैंने ECF हटा दिया, I'm going to get the ICF. That's what I have written over here. Total body water से ECF हटा दो, है ना? ICF बच जाएगा. ECF में से अगर मैंने interstitial uh, this ECF में से मैंने अगर plasma हटा दी, I'm going to get the IF IF, right? 
अब डाइस पढ़ते हैं हम डाइस पढ़ते हैं डाइस कौन कौन से होते हैं पहली चीज अगर टोटल बॉडी वाटर मेजर कर रहे हो व्हाट इज द फॉर्मूला फॉर वाटर एच टू ओ सो यू आर गोइंग टू यूज डी टू ओ टी टू ओ एंड अमाइनो पायरिन और एंटी पायरिन दीज आर द डाई फॉर टोटल बॉडी वाटर एंड व्हाट आर द डाईज फॉर द ईसीएफ ईसीएफ के लिए कौन सी डाई होती है साइमन इज द डाई है ना क्या होता है सुक्रोस इन्यूलिन इन्यूलिन मैनिटोल मैनिटोल and then you have the uh, simon is the mannitol m a n m a and n is the sodium iothalamate or radio isotopes likh do radio isotopes hai na most accurate is going to be inulin sucrose simon yaad rakho mansi yaad rakho one and the same thing right remaining is the plasma plasma is having the asthma asthma kaisa hota hai blue blue so kaun si blue dye evans blue dye you are going to use and if that is not in the option radio labeled albumin can be used because albumin is a heavy molecule it cannot come outside of the plasma it cannot come outside of the plasma that's why i'm going to use the plasma over here so yahan par interstitial fluid ka pucha hua tha to kya answer aayega inulin jo ecf ko measure karega right and evans blue jo aapke plasma ko measure karega isko minus kar doge you are going to get the interstitial fluid all right next let's move on to this phagocytosis kya hota hai phagocytosis दोनों पे देर इज नो रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ग्रेडियन दैट इज द आंसर लेट्स टॉक अबाउट ट्रांसपोर्ट अक्रॉस द मेम्रेन ये कुछ सिमिलर सिमिलर सा लग रहा है स्टडिंग इज वेरी हार्ड है ना स्टडिंग एंड फॉर गेटिंग इज वेरी इजी दैट इज पैसिव एक्टिव पैसिव में डिफरेंस क्या है दिस गोज अगेंस्ट द ग्रेडियंट ग्रेडियंट के अगेंस्ट जाता है दिस गोज अलोंग द ग्रेडियंट है ना ए कौन यूज करता है वेन यू गो अगेंस्ट द ग्रेडियंट पढ़ाई करने में एनर्जी लगती है फरगेटिंग में एनर्जी नहीं लगती सो जाओ अपने आप भूल जाओगे चार महीने बाद है ना सो फर्गेटिंग इज इजियर वी डोंट टू डू सम डिफिकल्ट वर्क है ना एक्टिव में देर आर गोइंग टू बी थ्री वेज थ्री थिंग्स इन द एक्टिव एक्टिव में क्या होता है प्राइमरी एक्टिव सेकेंडरी एक्टिव एंड The vesicular transport, vesicular transport. Primary active में क्या होता है बच्चों Primary active में I have pumps. कौन कौन से pumps? Sodium, potassium pumps and uh, the calcium pump, hydrogen pumps. P P P. याद रखो P for primary, P for pump. S for secondary, S for symports. सिम्पोर्ट अब डिफरेंस क्या है सिम्पोर्ट में भी तो एनर्जी लग रही है एनर्जी इज यूज एवरीवेयर बट प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस एनर्जी इज यूज इन डायरेक्टली इन डायरेक्ट यूज ऑफ एनर्जी इज देयर टू क्रिएट द ग्रेडियंट द प्राइमरी पंप यूज द एनर्जी एंड दिस इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन द प्राइमरी पंप सिम्पोर्ट एग्जाम्पल दो एस जी एल टी है ना एस जी एल टी बोल लो या एन सी एक्स दैट इज द एंटीपोर्ट है ना क्या होता है NCX? सोडियम कैल्शियम एक्सचेंजर राइट जो भी सोडियम सोडियम वाले हैं ना दैट इज गोइंग टू बी इफ दे आर सिम्पोर्ट और एंटीपोर्ट दे आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन द प्राइमरी पंप बिकॉज द एनर्जी इज यूज टू क्रिएट द ग्रेडियंट है ना वेजिकुलर ट्रांसपोर्ट में आएगा आपका एक्सोसाइटोसिस एंडोसाइटोसिस एंड ट्रांससाइटोसिस ट्रांससाइटोसिस प्लीज रिमेंबर वेजिकुलर ट्रांसपोर्ट इज ऑल्सो एक्टिव है ना ये क्या पूछा हुआ है फैटी एसिड का ट्रांसपोर्ट पूछा हुआ है इसमें फैटी एसिड में आपका ये वाला आएगा क्यों बिकॉज रिमेंबर आगे हाँ डिफ्यूजन आते हैं पैसिव में पैसिव में आप डिफ्यूजन की बात करते हो सिंपल डिफ्यूजन फैसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन रिमेंबर सिंपल डिफ्यूजन में यू रिक्वायर नो कैरियर प्रोटीन नो एनर्जी एनर्जी भी नहीं चाहिए कैरियर प्रोटीन भी नहीं चाहिए राइट सो वॉट आर द एग्जाम्पल गैसेस एंड ऑल द लिपिड सोल्यूबल हॉर्मोन्स लिपिड सोल्यूबल वाइटमिन दे आर क्रॉस्ड वाई आर द सिंपल डिफ्यूजन दैट मीन्स सी ओवर हर इफ यू इंक्रीज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ सब्सटेंस द रेट ऑफ डिफ्यूजन इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज लीनियरली ऐसी एक स्ट्रेट लाइन आएगी दैट स्ट्रेट लाइन इज नथिंग बट सिंपल डिफ्यूजन स्ट्रेट लाइन सिंपल डिफ्यूजन और राइट बट 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 इन द फैसिलिटेटेड वन आई रिक्वायर द कैरियर प्रोटीन प्रॉब्लम क्या है 
carrier protein are having limited capacity yes they are going to increase the speed a bit in the first go but the saturation is going to occur hai na jaise hi the saturation it is going to reach up to their final limit ab jaise aapka saturation banta ja raha you cannot grasp any more uh, what thing information right similar saturation is going to happen in the carrier protein so please remember aise kuch parabola type uh, uh, this thing graph is shown that is nothing but your carrier protein they have saturational kinetics they follow saturational kinetics hai na ye straight jab ho jata hai v max that means they have reached their maximum limit smallest step in the right direction end up in the biggest step in the life let's take a smallest step towards next kidney that is next system hai na kya dikhaya hai do nephron dikhaye hain what are they they are functional unit structural and functional unit dhyan se dekho this is going deeper in the medulla let's say this is cortex this is outer medulla and this is inner medulla just i'm going to take 20 minutes more hai na 20 और मैक्सिमम 30 मिनट्स है ना कॉर्टेक्स इनर मेडुला आउटर मेडुला जो इनर मेडुला में जाता है वो क्या है द इनर मेडुला में जक्स्ट्रा मेडुलरी नेफ्रॉन्स जक्स्ट्रा मेडुलरी नेफ्रॉन्स जो कॉर्टेक्स में है सबसे ज्यादा दैट इज नोन एज कॉर्टिकल नेफ्रॉन्स क्या क्या डिफरेंसेस है बताइए जल्दी जल्दी क्या क्या डिफरेंसेस है इसमें कॉर्टिकल नेफ्रॉन्स किसके लिए इंपॉर्टेंट होते हैं यार सबसे ज्यादा ब्लड फ्लो कॉर्टेक्स में जाता है याद रखो है ना और कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ यूरिन में कौन इंपॉर्टेंट है यार कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ यूरिन में हमारे जक्स्ट्रा मेडुलरी नेफ्रॉन्स इंपॉर्टेंट है कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ यूरिन में है ना वासा रेक्टा किस में होती है वासा रेक्टा आर नथिंग बट द ब्रांचेस ऑफ पेरिटिबुलर कैपिलरी जो कि आपके इनसाइड वाले न्यूरोन में इनसाइड uh, वाले नेफ्रॉन में होते हैं सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट वासा रेक्टा इज प्रेजेंट इन द जक्स्ट्रा मेडुलरी नेफ्रॉन्स है ना जक्स्ट्रा मेडुलरी जक्स्ट्रा मतलब क्या होता है न्योर जक्स्ट्रा मेडुलरी नेफ्रॉन्स राइट तीन लेयर होती है ग्लोमेरुलर फिल्ट्रेशन मेम्ब्रेन की इधर थ्री लेयर्स राइट व्हाट आर द थ्री लेयर ग्लोमेरुलर कैपिलरी एंडोथेलियल सेल्स बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन एंड एपिथेलियल सेल्स ऑफ बोमेंस कैप्सूल राइट इफ आई ड्रॉ लाइक दिस सो सपोज दिस इज द एफरेंट आर्टीरियल ग्लोमेरुलस इफरेंट आर्टीरियल राइट एंड दिस इज द बोमेंस कैप्सूल राइट so there are going to be endothelial cells and their basement membrane right what is the function of the basement membrane mainly basement membrane is going to have lot of negatively charged molecule they are going to have maximum negatively charged proteins what is the function of this negatively charged protein fatafat se batao are you there with me haan ji क्या होता है इनका फंक्शन यस डेफिनेटली दे आर गोइंग टू रिपेल द नेगेटिवली चार्ज सब्सटेंसेस स्पेशली द एल्ब्यूमिन एंड प्रोटीन्स दे विल नॉट अलाउ द प्रोटीन टू फिल्टर इनटू माय बोमेंस कैप्सूल आई कैन नॉट अफोर्ड टू लूज द प्रोटीन राइट प्रोटीन इज माय बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक राइट सो दे आर गोइंग टू बी हेल्पफुल इन द रिपेल रिपल्शन ऑफ द प्रोटीन सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट सेलो प्रोटीन इज वन ऑफ द नेगेटिवली चार्ज प्रोटीन पहला छन्नी के बारे में बात करते हैं कौन सी छन्नी चाय वाली छन्नी हाँ ऐसा ही कुछ है ना सो इट इज एक्टिंग एज अ स्ट्रेनर है ना जिसमें से चाय छनता है ना हम चाय पत्ती ऊपर रह जाती है सो इट इज एक्टिंग एज अ स्ट्रेनर राइट सो हाउ इट इज डिपेंडेंट दैट विच इज गोइंग टू गेट फिल्टर विच सब्सटेंस इज गोइंग टू गेट फिल्टर एंड विच इज नॉट गोइंग टू गेट फिल्टर इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द साइज एज वेल एज चार्ज प्लीज रिमेंबर इफ द साइज इज लेस दैन टू नैनोमीटर इट इज गोइंग टू बी फ्रीली फिल्टर्ड that substance is going to be freely filtered if the size of that molecule which is coming in the glomerulus is more than 4.5 nanometer it is not filtered it is not going to get filtered now if it falls in between it is dependent on the charge okay if it is positively charged it is going to get filtered if it is negatively charged it is not going to get filtered example is albumin albumin if i lose these negatively charged protein which were there inside the basement membrane what is going to happen they will allow the albumin to come into my filtrate to come into my bowman's capsule 
क्या डिजीज बोलोगे इफ द एल्बम इज प्रेजेंट इन साइड द यूरिन दैट मीन्स आई डोंट हैव दीज नेगेटिव प्रोटीन्स इन माई नेफ्रॉन आई एम गोइंग टू कॉल इट एज Yes, please. I'm going to call it as nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome. All right. Very good. Protein urea is going to be there, है ना? So इस slide पे नहीं लिखते हैं. Otherwise confusion हो जाएगी. Protein urea मतलब ही आपका nephrotic syndrome. Nephrotic syndrome is going to be there, है ना? बात करते हैं ट्यूबुलर ट्रांसपोर्ट की फटाफट आंसर दो फटाफट फ्री करेंगे आपको पीसीटी इज गोइंग टू डू मैक्सिमम वर्क सबसे ज्यादा हार्ड वर्किंग कौन होता है डॉक्टर्स हाँ या ना बिल्कुल हाँ जी हाँ देखो 11 बजे भी हम लोग पढ़ रहे हैं ना सो यस ट्यूबुलर ट्रांसपोर्ट पीसीटी इज गोइंग टू बी मोस्ट हार्ड वर्किंग पार्ट इट इज गोइंग टू डू मैक्सिमम रीअब्जॉर्बन ऑफ ऑल सब्सटेंसेस बट मेडिसिन इतनी आसान होती तो बात ही क्या होती सब एक्सेप्शन तो देर ना सम डॉक्टर्स डू नॉट रीड है ना नाम खराब करते हैं ना सो मैक्सिमम रीअब्जॉर्बन ऑफ ऑल द सब्सटेंसेस एक्सेप्ट व्हाट आर द एक्सेप्शन प्लीज रिमेंबर टेल मी व्हाट इज द एक्सेप्शन ओवर हियर द एक्सेप्शन रीअब्जॉर्बन ऑफ ऑल द सब्सटेंसेस एक्सेप्ट द मैग्नीशियम The magnesium reabsorption is going to happen where? It is going to happen in the PCT? No. Where it is going to happen? It is going to happen in the ascending limb of loop of Henle. Ascending limb of loop of Henle. So please remember that maximum secretion of all the substances is going to happen in the PCT, but except the potassium and urea. Potassium secretion is going to happen where? But so potassium secretion is going to happen in the डिस्टल कॉन्वलेटेड ट्यूब्यूल एंड सी डी आई कैन कॉल टूगेदर एज डी टी है ना एंड यूरिया का सिक्रीशन कहाँ पर होता है प्लीज रिमेंबर इस पर मैंने क्वेश्चन डाला हुआ है यूरिया सिक्रीशन इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन द लूप ऑफ हेनले स्पेशली द असेंडिंग लिम ऑफ लूप ऑफ हेनले असेंडिंग लिम ऑफ लूप ऑफ हेनले प्लीज प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट और राइट चलो आगे बढ़ते हैं एस डी एल टी क्या है बच्चों Now please remember SGLT is PCT. PCT में क्या है मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ एस जी आर एस जी एल टी टाइप टू यू डू हैव टू किडनीज वन इंटेस्टीन सो प्लीज रिमेंबर एस जी एल टी वन मैक्सिमली प्रेजेंट इन द इंटेस्टाइन बोथ द टाइप्स ऑफ एस जी एल टीज आर प्रेजेंट इन द किडनी बट मैक्सिमली टू एस जी एल टी टू टाइप्स दैट इज नाइनटी परसेंट आर एस जी एल टी टू टाइप्स आर ओनली 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 प्रेजेंट इन द पी सी टी सो ग्लूकोज रिऑब्जॉर्बन ओनली कैन हैपन इन द पी सी टी प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट है ना आगे बढ़ते हैं लूप ऑफ हेनले में आते हैं डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन पूछा जाएगा डायरेक्ट आंसर देना क्या है लूप ऑफ हेनले में इज समथिंग नोन एज काउंटर करंट मैकेनिज्म वॉट इज काउंटर करंट मैकेनिज्म काउंटर मीन्स अपोजिट करंट मीन्स फ्लो है ना किस लिए इंपॉर्टेंट है ये We want to conserve the water. क्यों करना है वॉटर कंजर्व वाई यू वॉन्ट टू कंजर्व द वॉटर बिकॉज माई बॉडी सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ माई बॉडी वेट इज मेड अप ऑफ वॉटर आई वॉन्ट टू कंजर्व द वॉटर फॉर दैट वॉट इज रिक्वायर्ड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द यूरिन इज रिक्वायर्ड सो दैट आई कैन अब्जॉर्व मोर एंड मोर वॉटर इन साइड माई ब्लड एंड यूरिन शुड बी कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड राइट सो हाउ आई एम गोइंग टू डू दैट विद द हेल्प ऑफ हाइपर टोनिक मेडुलरी इंटरसिशम ओके जी मान लिया आई हैव टू डू द हाइपरटोनिक मेडुलरी इंटरस्टिशियम इन साइड माई किडनी हाउ कैन आई डू दैट आई नीड टू थिंग्स फॉर दैट वॉट आर द टू थिंग्स दैट आई रिक्वायर्ड काउंटर करंट मल्टीप्लायर विच कैन मल्टीप्लाई मल्टीप्लाई द ग्रेडियंट है ना तीन सौ से बारह सौ तक multiply the gradient inside my interstitium right and who is going to do that it is going to be done with the help of ascending limb of loop of henle as well as the medullary collecting duct medullary collecting duct okay ji what they are going to do they are going to create they are going to create the hypertonic medullary interstitium how they are going to create by absorbing lot of salts from the tubule into the medullary interstitium right and that's why they are going to increase they are going to multiply the osmolarity of the intestine via four times that is 1200 so is 1200 milli osmol per liter is the maximum osmolarity possible right ji okay what is the next thing that is important counter current exchanger is also important 
what is the counter current exchanger ge it is nothing but the vasa recta what the vasa recta is going to do it is going to maintain now you have created it you have created the momentum via attending these classes it is important to maintain this momentum right till the time of exam so how that is going to do that is uh, going to happen via continuous study and same over here that medullary interstitium needs to be maintained throughout right and that is going to be done by the vasa recta how the vasa recta doesn't allow that concentration to get diluted it absorbs lot of water via water reabsorption back into the uh, blood it is going to cause the maintenance of hypertonic medullary interstitium let's move on forward uh, there is uh, dt that dt means distal tubule distal tubule mein you are going to have cd that is collecting duct as well as distal convoluted tubule kaun se kaun se do cells hote hain please remember p cells and i cell question is going to come on this okay p cell and i cell p cell kya hota hai principal cell राइट आई सेल क्या होता है इंटरकैलेटेड सेल इंटरकैलेटेड सेल व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ प्रिंसिपल सेल व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल सेल हां जी बताइए क्या रोल होता है प्रिंसिपल का और आई सेल्स का हाउ टू रिमेंबर प्रिंसिपल दो दो आयंस आर प्रिंसिपल व्हाट आर द टू प्रिंसिपल आयन सोडियम एंड पोटेशियम आई एम गोइंग टू रीअब्सॉर्ब द सोडियम एंड आई एम गोइंग टू सिक्रीट द पोटेशियम That is the main thing. Via that I can reabsorb the water also. But principal role क्या होता है? See over here. Via the ENAC channels and via the sodium potassium, um, this sodium chloride uh, reabsorbing, uh, this channel I'm going to reabsorb lot of sodium in the DCT and ENAC channels are mainly present in the CD. All right. So via that I'm reabsorbing the sodium and via rom k channel renal outer medullary potassium channel i am secreting the potassium okay just remember this i kya karte hain fir i cells i am going to remember like this right what is i i is doing the acid secretion i don't want acid in my body so i am going to secrete acid via the intercalated cell yahan par dekho yahan par acid secrete ho raha hai and this is also throwing out the acid outside who is going to stimulate these cells these cells are stimulated by aldosterone aldosterone is going to stimulate both of these cells so please remember aldosterone is going to act on the dt and it is going to stimulate principal cells and i cell adh adh kya karta hai bachcho adh is going to act on the v2 receptor uh, after acting as v2 receptor it will increase the aquaporin 2 aquaporin 2 what the aquaporin 2 is going to do aquaporin 2 is going to help me to reabsorb the water that is h2o so please remember v2 receptor aquaporin 2 and h2o v2 kyun bola because the adh is also known as vasopressin ha ya na vasopressin so please remember vasopressin ka ye role hota hai Let's move on to the TMG. क्या था TMG? Transport maximum या tubular maximum of glucose है ना तो expected value क्या होती है जी इसकी Expected value होती है 375 सेवेंटी फाइव एम जी पर मिनट बट एक्चुअल रियालिटी में क्या होता है एक्चुअल वैल्यू इज वेरी वेरी लेस दैट इज वन एटी टू टू हंड्रेड मिलीग्राम पर मिनट हो या नहीं हो यहाँ पर So, ये जो डिफरेंस आता है द डिफरेंस इज नोन एज रीनल स्प्ले क्या बोलते हैं डिफरेंस को रीनल स्प्ले है ना एक्सपेक्टेड क्या है कि सबको आए कितने मार्क्स टू हंड्रेड थ्री हंड्रेड आउट ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड बट आते कितने हैं टू हंड्रेड है ना वी आर ओके विद दट बट वी वॉन्ट मोर है ना ये दिल मांगे मोर द डिफरेंस इज नोन एज रीनल स्प्ले रीनल स्प्रे ठीक है याद रखना अब आते हैं क्लियरेंस पे व्हाट इज द क्लियरेंस बच्चों व्हाट इज द क्लियरेंस क्लियरेंस इज सिंपल फंडा व्हाट इज द क्लियरेंस का फंडा दैट अगर कोई सब्सटेंस सिर्फ फिल्टर हो रहा है ओनली गेटिंग फिल्टर नीदर रीअब्सॉर्ब नॉर सिक्रीटेड हाउ मच विल कम इन टू द यूरिन वट एवर इज फिल्टर दैट इज गोइंग टू कम इन द यूरिन वट इज सच सब्सटेंस दैट सब्सटेंस इज नथिंग बट इन्यूलिन इन्यूलिन How that is useful? 
it is the most accurate most accurate substance for the measurement of gfr gfr measurement ke liye most accurate substance hai if i say that little little secretion will happen what is going to happen yes except it will uh, the gfr will be there that means maximum let's say 20% is getting filtered only 1% or let's say 0.5% got secreted it is very very close to the gfr but it is not accurately measured but if that is present endogenously i am going to prefer that substance i don't have to give it ivly okay so what is that substance that is nothing but the creatinine creatinine is that substance right so it is the most common substance which is used for the gfr estimation and most accurate ucha you are going to answer it as inulin right both are used for gfr estimation if i filter the substance but completely secreted hai na let's say 100% came in the renal plasma flow 20% got filtered and 80% now the 80% got 80% is got secreted how much is going to come into the urine this 100% is going to come in the urine complete secretion kon hai as a substance para amino hypuric acid kiske liye use karungi renal plasma flow ke liye use karungi main para amino hypuric acid renal plasma flow ke liye i'm going to use it why because whatever came into the plasma it came into the urine it same same so i'm going to measure the renal plasma flow if the substance got filtered and completely reabsorbed it hai na our tubule reabsorbed it completely tubule se reabsorb ho gaya how much tubule se reabsorb ho gaya how much whatever got filtered that completely got reabsorb back again so that is going to cause what thing that is going to cause the complete secretion urine mein kitna aayega 0% 0 0 anda aayega anda hai na what is the such substances the glucose glucose is completely reabsorbed because it's a salary that is energy hai na amino acid that is also energy it is complete reabsorbed back again glucose aaya urine mein what you are going to expect diabetes mellitus hai na kuch gadbad zarur hai daya kuch to gadbad hai hai na so if the glucose uh, came into the urine of the patient you are going to suspect something is wrong hai na clearance ka formula yaad rakho it is uv by p u is the urinary concentration of the substance urinary flow rate is v and plasma concentration is going to be your p u and p is the concentration urine ka concentration and plasma ka concentration v is nothing but urinary flow rate राइट प्लीज रिमेम्बर दैट आते हैं जी एफ आर पे जे जी सेल्स मैक्यूला डेंसा एंड लास्ट सेल तीन चीजें इंपॉर्टेंट होती है जे जी अपेरेटिस इज फॉर्म बाई थ्री थिंग्स है ना वॉट कैन बी द क्वेश्चन दैट कैन बी आस सिंपल है लैसिस सेल पे कोई क्वेश्चन नहीं पूछेगा बट बिकॉज इट हैज नो रोल पर से इन द जे जी बीपी मेंटेनेंस और एनी अदर थिंग इट इज जस्ट यूज एज एंटी इंफ्लेमेटरी सेल्स दे कैन आस्क यू वट विच आर द कीमो सेंसर्स आर देर कीमो सेंसर्स आर मैक्यूला डेंसा है ना ये वाले जो सेल्स दिख रहे हैं आपको दैट इज मैक्यूला डेंसा नाउ व्हाट केमिकल दे आर गोइंग टू सेंस दे आर गोइंग टू सेंस द सोडियम एंड क्लोराइड प्लीज रिमेंबर सोडियम एंड क्लोराइड ग्रैन्युलर सेल्स व्हाट दे आर गोइंग टू सिक्रीट दे आर गोइंग टू सिक्रीट द रेनिन कैसे होता है इनका वर्किंग वेन एवर यू आर गोइंग टू हैव हायर जी एफ आर दे आर गोइंग टू एक्टिवेट द रास सिस्टम है ना एंड दे आर गोइंग टू कंस्ट्रिक्ट दिस एफरेंट आर्टीरियल एफरेंट आर्टीरियल का कंस्ट्रिक्शन कर देंगे वेन एव आर द जी एफ आर इज गोइंग टू बी इंक्रीज द जे जी अपारेटस इज गोइंग टू बी एक्टिवेटेड एंड द जी एफ आर इज गोइंग टू बी ब्रॉट बैक टू नॉर्मल अगेन इतना याद रख लो है ना रास सिस्टम एक्टिवेट हो जाएगी और रास सिस्टम से आपका एफरेंट आर्टीरियल कंस्ट्रिक्ट हो जाएगा सो लेस प्लाज्मा इज गोइंग टू कम लेस फिल्ट्रेशन इज गोइंग टू अकर सो दैट इज गोइंग टू बी Definitely increase GFR होने पे they are going to get activated and the result is going to be decrease in the GFR. That is not the stimulus. Okay, that what's that's what I wanted to tell you. Okay, 
नाउ देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ फोर्सेस है ना क्या दो टाइप ऑफ फोर्सेस होते हैं फर्स्ट इज द हाइड्रोस्टैटिक प्रेशर एंड सेकेंड इज द ऑनकॉटिक प्रेशर हाइड्रोस्टैटिक प्रेशर इज द पुशिंग प्रेशर इट पुश द वॉटर अवे ऑन दी अदर हैंड ऑनकॉटिक प्रेशर इज द होल्डिंग ऑन प्रेशर दिस प्रोटीन्स आर लव टू होल्ड ऑन टू द वॉटर है ना सो दिस इज द ऑनकॉटिक प्रेशर कितना कितना होता है वैल्यू दिया हुआ है हाइड्रोस्टैटिक प्रेशर इन साइड द Glomerulus is going to be 60. Bowman's capsule mate is going to be 80. Now my question to you is, what is the oncotic pressure in the Bowman's capsule? बताइए कितना होता है oncotic pressure? क्योंकि colloid osmotic pressure is nothing but the oncotic pressure that is uh, in the uh, glomerulus. It is going to be 32. Absolutely wonderful, Prakash Subhash. It is going to be zero. Why? Because this is present because of the proteins. यहाँ पर प्रोटीन्स आए ही नहीं तो इट इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो एंड हाउ टू कैलकुलेट दिस नेट फिल्ट्रेशन प्रेशर कैसे कैलकुलेट करेंगे एच पी माइनस ओ पी एच पी माइनस ओ पी एंड एच पी माइनस ओ पी जस्ट यहाँ पर आपने क्या लगाना है पहले ग्लोमेरुलस है ना एंड देन यू आर गोइंग टू पुट द बोमेंस कैप्सूल का प्रेशर ओवर हियर पहले हाइड्रोस्टैटिक प्रेशर से ऑनकॉटिक प्रेशर माइनस करो 60 से 32 माइनस करो है ना और उससे 18 माइनस करो राइट सो यू आर गोइंग टू गेट अराउंड 10 एम एम एच जी प्रेशर राइट एसिड सिक्रीशन में आते हैं एसिड सिक्रीशन इज डिफरेंट एसिडिफिकेशन इज डिफरेंट है ना मैक्सिमम एसिड सिक्रीशन इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन द पीसीटी बट पीएच में कोई चेंज नहीं आता क्यों नहीं आता इफ आई एड टेन मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ एसिड एंड टेन मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ बफर व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन pH is not going to change unless and until the pH is not going to change i'm not going to call it as acidification right kyunki humne sare buffers use kar liye hain but if they ask mass maximum acid secretion where it is going to occur it is going to occur in the pct Ma, the acid secretion is also going to occur in the cd and dct but please remember it is going to be much much lesser but we don't have any buffer to न्यूट्रलाइज इट है ना यहाँ पर लेट से हमने पांच ही मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ एसिड डाले बट वी डोंट हैव एनी बफर टू एड इन टू इट डेफिनेटली द पी एच इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज द पी एच इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज बिकॉज वी यूज ऑल द बफर इन द पी सी टी सेल्फ सो दैट्स वाई द एसिडिफिकेशन इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन द डी टी दैट इज सी डी और इन द डी सी टी राइट वाई बिकॉज देर आर नो बफर्स नो बफर्स टू न्यूट्रलाइज द पी एच राइट नॉर्मल यूरिन का पीएच क्या होता है बच्चों सिक्स टू एट है ना और मिनिमम क्या होता है फोर पॉइंट फाइव दैट इज नोन एज लिमिटिंग पीएच दैट इज द मिनिमम लिमिट ओके मिनिमम लिमिट वेरी 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 गुड राइट लेट्स मूव ऑन ओके सो स्मॉल स्टेप्स नॉट द जाइंट स्टेप्स अबाउट टू मोस्ट लास्टिंग चेंज छोटा छोटा पढ़ेंगे और मार्क्स ले आएंगे है ना एंडो और जीआई बचा है छोटे छोटे सिस्टम से वी आर गोइंग टू फिनिश इट ऑफ है ना याद रखो वी हैव टू डिवाइड द हार्मोन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन द लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द रिसेप्टर लिपिड सोल्यूबल या वॉटर सोल्यूबल आर यू अलाइव गाइज यू आर देयर और नॉट प्लीज लेट मी नो आर यू अलाइव इंट्रा सेल्युलर एंड एक्स्ट्रा सेल्युलर रिसेप्टर्स है ना तो क्या क्या करना है इंट्रा सेल्युलर में आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट न्यूक्लियर साइटोप्लाज्मिक या बोथ याद कैसे रखोगे न्यूक्लियर में देर इज अ न्यूमोनिक विच इज नोन एज न्यूक क्या है मैडम ये न्यूक It is nothing but the thyroid hormone, vitamin A or vitamin D, which can act as a hormone, which are going to have the nuclear receptors. What is the cytoplasmic receptor for? Only through the cytoplasmic receptor, my mineralocorticoid is going to act. What is the mineralocorticoid, sir? But I, ye please, it is none other than the aldosterone. Aldosterone, right? और बाकी बच्चे ग्लूकोकॉर्टिकॉइड एंड योर दिस थिंग सेक्सटीरोइड दे आर गोइंग टू एक्ट थ्रू द बोथ राइट सेक्सटीरोइड्स मेनली एक्ट थ्रू द न्यूक्लियर सेक्सटीरोइड्स दे आर मेनली एक्ट थ्रू द न्यूक्लियर रिसेप्टर मोर देन साइटोप्लाज्मिक प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट इफ यू वांट टू चूज वन गो विद द न्यूक्लियर रिसेप्टर सच एज प्रोजेस्ट्रॉन टेस्टोस्ट्रॉन ईस्ट्रोजन दे एक्ट थ्रू द मैक्सिमम थ्रू द न्यूक्लियर रिसेप्टर है ना सो न्यूक्लियर में याद रखना न्यूक्टैड थाइरोइड तो याद ही रखना राइट कैसे याद रखोगे विच आर द लिपिड सोल्यूमेंट जिसके एंड में ऑइड ऑइड आ रहा है थाइरोइड कॉर्टिकॉइड स्टीरोइड राइट सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दे आर गोइंग टू कम अंडर द लिपिड सोल्यूबल हॉर्मोन 
let's say these are not lipid soluble hormone they are water soluble so i have to check whether they are pig hormone or not if they are pig they are they must be dirty dirty hai na so what is dirty tyrosine kinase tyrosine kinase is going to be uh, the receptor for this pig hormone what is the pig hormone prolactin insulin and ग्रोथ हॉर्मोन ग्रोथ फैक्टर दिस इज द रिसेप्टर पाथवे पूछा तो क्या बोलोगे इंसुलिन इज गोइंग टू एक्ट वाया मैप काइनेस मैप काइनेस करके कुछ पाथवे होता है उससे वो एक्ट करता है राइट नो बडी इज गोइंग टू आस्क यू अबाउट दैट बट प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस ग्रोथ हॉर्मोन प्रोल एक्टिंग दे आर गोइंग टू एक्ट वाया जैक स्टार्ट पाथवे जैक स्टार्ट पाथवे इसके साथ साथ याद रखो लेप्टिन भी जैक स्टैट पाथवे से काम करता है सो लेप्टिन प्रोलैक्टिन एंड ग्रोथ हार्मोन दे आर गोइंग टू एक्ट थ्रू जैक स्टैट पाथवे याद रखोगे ना करो प्रॉमिस की याद रखोगे एंड देन इफ इट इज नॉट लिपिड सोल्यूबल नॉट पिग हार्मोन दे आर गोइंग टू एक्ट वाया जीपीसीआर प्रोटीन क्या होते हैं ये जीपीसीआर प्रोटीन दे प्रोड्यूस सेकेंडरी मैसेंजर कौन कौन से सेकेंडरी मैसेंजर आई पी थ्री डी ए जी साइक्लिक एम पी या साइक्लिक जी एम पी अगर ये है नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड या ये है ए एन पी दैट इज एट्रियल नाइट्रीयूरेटिक पेप्टाइड दे आर गोइंग टू एक्ट थ्रू साइक्लिक जी एम पी नहीं मैम ये वो भी नहीं है ये लिपिड सोल्यूबल भी नहीं है ये पिग हॉर्मोन भी नहीं है बट दे आर कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल हॉर्मोन इफ दे आर कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल हॉर्मोन मैडम तो देन दे आर गोइंग टू एक्ट थ्रू द आई पी थ्री डी ए जी एग्जाम्पल दो एग्जाम्पल इज वेजो प्रेसिन नाम में ही है प्रेस कर रहा है वेसल्स को दैट इज नथिंग बट द एडीएच बट मैम एडीएच तो वी टू से एक्ट करके एक्वापोरिन टू ओपन कर रहा था यस इफ इट इज गोइंग टू एक्ट थ्रू द वी वन रिसेप्टर इट इज गोइंग टू बी यूजिंग द आई पी थ्री डी एच ई बट प्लीज रिमेंबर एडीएच अगर एक्ट कर गया वी टू रिसेप्टर से इट इज गोइंग टू ओपन अप द एक्वापोरिन चैनल इट इज गोइंग टू एक्ट थ्रू द साइक्लिक ए एम पी प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट राइट देन कम्स द ऑक्सीटोसिन यूटराइन कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग के टाइम पे माओ एपिथीलियल सेल्स ऑफ द ब्रेस्ट दैट गेट कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस ऑक्सीडोसिन दैट बिकम्स द कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल हॉर्मोन अगेन राइट देन कम्स द एड्रीनलिन एड्रीनलिन इफ इट एक्ट थ्रू द अल्फा वन रिसेप्टर कॉजेस वेजो कंस्ट्रिक्शन देन असिटाइल कोलिन इफ इट एक्ट थ्रू द एम वन एम थ्री एंड एम फाइव रिसेप्टर्स right and the angiotensin 2 at least at least please remember for me vasopressin v1 receptor and these three hai na angiotensin v so please remember these and gnrh ghrh and trh gnrh grh uh, and trh what are they they are not contractile hormone but medicine itni aasan hoti to baat hi kya hogi Please remember these are exceptions. They are not contractile hormone, but they act through the IP3 DAG. IP3 DAG. Rest all hormones. If they are not lipid soluble, if they are not pig hormones, they are not NOANP. They are not contractile hormone. They are not GnRH, GHRH, or TRH. All of them are going to act through the cyclic AMP. As simple as that, है ना पर पहले you have to exclude all the things, है ना Please remember that oxytocin, prolactin ये क्या करता है This is going to help in the ejection of milk, right? I can write it as ejection, है ना Ejection. So please remember oxytocin is going to be helpful in the ejection of milk. Prolactin is going to help me in the production of milk. ऑक्सीटोसिन पे बहुत सारे क्वेश्चन आए हैं बच्चों बहुत बहुत सारे सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट डोंट डू अ मिस्टेक इन दिस इजेक्शन ऑफ द मिल्क इज गोइंग टू हैपन विद द एडीएच है ना ग्रोथ हार्मोन एंड आईजीएफ इसका क्या फंडा है ग्रोथ हार्मोन से एक ही चीज मैं अगर आपको बोलूं सो प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस इज गोइंग टू कॉज डिक्रीज इन द इंसुलिन सेंसिटिविटी इफ इट एक्ट डायरेक्टली बट इनडायरेक्टली देखो इंसुलिन लाइक एक्टिविटी ये करवा रहा है दिस अ मेजर डिफरेंस राइट एंड लाइपोलिसिस ये करवा रहा है ये एंटी लाइपोलिटिक एक्टिविटी करवा रहा है बट इफ यू वांट टू रिमेंबर वन थिंग प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस थिंग सो ग्रोथ हार्मोन इफ इट एक्ट डायरेक्टली इट कैन प्रोड्यूस डायबिटीज राइट सो इट कैन प्रोड्यूस डायबिटीज सो दैट्स व्हाई इट इज नोन एज डायबिटिक हार्मोन ऑल्सो 
growth hormone is also known as a diabetic hormone if it acts directly it decreases insulin sensitivity that means it can provoke the insulin resistance so it is like a diabetic hormone please remember that okay next come the thyroid hormone thyroid hormone may you have to remember few things see over here first of all see over here concentrate over here for the next two minutes hai na? Pehli cheez, I have to trap the iodine, but iodine cannot be trapped directly. So I'm going to trap iodide molecule, right? With the help of the sodium. So sodium iodide symport, symport, konsa active transport hota hai, primary active ki secondary active, bataiye ji. First of all, see over here, sodium bahar ja raha hai, to cell mein sodium kam rahega, to cell mein yaha se humne sodium andar liya through the gradient it is acting through the gradient first of all we decrease the sodium inside and via that gradient use i'm going to take sodium inside as well as the iodide inside wonderful it is the secondary active transport but that was not sufficient why because the thyroglobulin is there inside the colloid it is not inside the cell so i have to send this iodide molecule into the colloid which is going to do that pendrine molecule is going to do that okay so please remember this is known as trapping of the iodine trapping of the iodine is going to happen with the nis that is the sodium iodide symporter as well as pendrin protein pendrin protein right nis kaha kaha par hota hai ye aapke breast mein hota hai ye aapke uh, placenta mein hota hai this is also present in the thyroid glands okay this is also present in the parotid glands but it is not present in the pituitary gland please remember that except pucha jayega or pituitary option mein hoga so mark the pituitary please remember that okay then humne iodide under riya tha not the iodine hai na i minus liya tha i2 nahi so i need to create i2 now what i am going to do i am going to add two i's over here and i am going to make the oxidation kaun sa enzyme help karega in all of this the tpo is going to help me thyroid peroxidase is going to help me out okay oxidation is going to happen right then i'm going to bind that uh, iodine hai na so iodide se humne iodine banaya hai na tpo ke help se right that is oxidation then i'm going to do binding which is also known as the conjugation or organification conjugation or organification right kya kya maine I'm going to attach uh, iodine onto the tyrosine amino acid. I'm going to form MIT and DIT with the help of thyroid peroxidase again, right? So I'm going to attach the th one iodine on the tyrosine that becomes monoiodotyrosine. Two iodine on the tyrosine that becomes diiodotyrosine. Once MIT and DIT is formed, I'm going to cause the coupling of them, coupling coupling of them right so coupling is going to occur that means i am going to form t3 and t4 ye kaise hua if i attach ek iodine already tha mit was there i attach di to to it that means mit was there mono iodotyrosine was there di iodotyrosine came and mixed with that it becomes tri iodothyronin that becomes t3 if dit was there i attach di2 to, to it it becomes thyroxine that is nothing but the tetra iodothyronin right that is t3 t4 now once the t3 t4 is formed where it is formed it is formed inside my colloid i need to endocytose it and keep it in the vesicle and then what i'm going to do i'm going to exocytose it into the blood vessel exocytose it into the blood vessel right so endocytosis and release whenever i'm going to have the stimulus i'm going to release it so please remember everything is going to be done with the help of tpo hyperthyroid mein kya hoga weight loss hoga yahan par safety pin dekh lo aur isko heat adaptation nahi hogi hypothyroid mein usko thand lagegi and it is going to cause the weight gain cold adaptation is going to be very very poor and he is going to have weight gain hai na insulin secretion from beta 2 cells please remember insulin is going to have insulin independent channels that is glut 2 receptors kaha kaha par hote hain beta cells mein glut 2 receptors hote hain kidney mein bhi hote hain and you do have liver pe bhi 
यू डू हैव ग्लूट टू रिसेप्टर्स है ना एंड ग्लूट फोर रिसेप्टर्स आर प्रेजेंट एडिपोसाइट कार्डियो टिश्यू एंड योर स्केलेटल मसल है ना एंड वी डू हैव अगेन द पोटेशियम चैनल ग्लोमस सेल में कौन से थे कीमो रिसेप्टर में ऑक्सीजन सेंसिटिव पोटेशियम चैनल ओवर हियर वी आर गोइंग टू हैव दी ए टी पी डिपेंडेंट पोटेशियम चैनल बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू ब्रेक डाउन द ग्लूकोज एंड फॉर्म द ए टी पी राइट सो इट इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज द ग्लूकोज बाय आर शिफ्टिंग इट फ्रॉम ब्लड टू द सेल क्या करता है ये इंसुलिन इज गोइंग टू एक्टिवेट ओपन अप लॉर्ड ऑफ ग्लूट फोर चैनल्स ग्लूट फोर चैनल्स वाई आर दैट वॉट इज इट गोइंग टू डू ब्लड से ग्लूकोज लेगा एंड इट इज गोइंग टू पुट अप इन टू द टिश्यूज इन टू द सेल and that's why in the blood my glucose levels are going to go down and that's how i'm going to get prevented via the hyperglycemia hyperglycemia all right adrenal gland adrenal gland mein teen layers hote hain uh, first of all two layers are there first is the medulla and outside it is going to be the cortex cortex is divided into g f r what is g f r zona glomerulosa fasciculata and reticularis G never goes with G. इससे ग्लूकोकॉर्टिकॉइड्स नहीं रिलीज होंगे G never goes with G. Please remember, it is going to release the mineralocorticoid. Fasciculata is going to be releasing the glucocorticoids. Reticularis is going to release the sex steroids, है ना? Sex steroids are going to be released from the reticularis. What about the medulla? Medulla is going to release the epinephrine and norepinephrine. Medulla is going to release epinephrine and norepinephrine. अप्लाइड एस्पेक्ट क्या है कॉर्टिजोल बढ़ गया क्या होगा कुशिंग्स डिसऑर्डर है ना कुशिंग्स में क्या दिखता है स्ट्राया दिखते हैं बहुत सारे स्ट्रेच मार्क्स दिखते हैं बफेलो हम दिखता है मून फेस है ना एंड लेमन ऑन स्टिक अपियरेंस क्या होता है लेमन ऑन स्टिक दैट मीन्स द हैंड्स एंड द लेग्स आर गोइंग टू बी एक्टिंग एज द स्टिक है ना एंड द फैट इज गोइंग टू गेट एक्यूमुलेटेड इन द सेंट्रल जोन सेंट्रल जोन राइट लास्ट पार्ट इन द एंडो दैट इज कैल्शियम होमियोस्टासिस प्लीज रिमेंबर पीटीएच इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द कैल्शियम बट इट इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज द फर्स्ट इट इज गोइंग टू डू द बोन रिजॉर्बन इट इज गोइंग टू ईट अप द बोन टेक द कैल्शियम एंड पुट इट इन टू माई ब्लड कैल्सिटोनिन क्या करेगा कैल्सिटोनिन इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज द कैल्शियम इन द ब्लड एंड डिक्रीज द फॉस्फेट इन द ब्लड but what it is going to do it is going to take that calcium and phosphate form a paste with the water and attach that paste on to my bone so what it is going to do it is going to actually inhibit the bone resorption it is helping me to strengthen my bone right so it is going to prevent the bone resorption on the other hand calcitonin and the vitamin d is going to be absolutely opposite it is going to increase both the things कैल्शियम भी इंक्रीज करेगा भी फॉस्फेट भी इंक्रीज करेगा कैसे बोन रिजॉर्बन करके नो इट इज गोइंग टू री एब्सॉर्ब द कैल्शियम एंड दिस फॉस्फेट फ्रॉम द जी आई टी एज वेल एज फ्रॉम द किडनी इट डजेंट एक्ट ऑन द बोन एक्ट ऑन द बोन वेन एवर इट इज एक्सट्रीम कंडीशन बट प्लीज रिमेंबर इफ द वाइटामिन डी इज हायर इट इज गोइंग टू री एब्सॉर्ब द कैल्शियम एंड फॉस्फेट फ्रॉम द जी आई टी एंड किडनी हेल्प मी इन द बोन मिनरलाइजेशन जब ब्लड में बढ़ेगा तो ऑटोमेटिकली इट इज गोइंग टू शिफ्ट इन टू द बोन सो इट इज गोइंग टू हेल्प मी इन द मिनरलाइजेशन राइट एक्चुअली दिस कैन बी वाइस वर्सा ऑल्सो है ना क्योंकि अगर मिनरलाइजेशन कैल्सिटोनिन क्या कर रहा है इट इज पुटिंग दैट इन टू ऑन टू द ब्लड सो प्लीज रिमेंबर कैन बी पॉसिबल दैट दिस कैन बी अपोजिट बट प्लीज रिमेंबर वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन टू दीज वैल्यूज और राइट जस्ट वेट करो टेन मिनट्स में हम जी आई भी खत्म कर लेंगे राइट सेरोसा लेयर मुझे बताओ सेरोसा लेयर किस में नहीं होती है इसोफेगस ऐसा इकलौता दिस थिंग द ऑर्गन इज देयर वेर द सेरोसा इज एबसेंट ओके एंड वी डू हैव मस्कुलरिस लेयर देन वी हैव सब म्यूकोजा लेयर एंड फाइनली द म्यूकोजा लेयर इंट्रेंसिक में देर आर टू नर्व फ्लेक्सिस वॉट आर द टू नर्व फ्लेक्सिस बच्चो फर्स्ट इज द मीजनर्स फ्लेक्सिस एस एस बड़ा लिख लेते हैं मीजनर्स फ्लेक्सिस विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज सब म्यूकोजल फ्लेक्सिस राइट एंड आई हैव माइंट्रिक प्लेक्सिस ऑल्सो माइओ मीन्स क्या बच्चो 
विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज और प्लेक्सिस और बैक्स प्लेक्सिस राइट मायोब क्या होता है मसिल सो दिस इज गोइंग टू गिव मी द मोटिलिटी मोटिलिटी है ना मोटी वाली मोटी नहीं मोटी मीन्स द कॉन्ट्रैक्शन एंड रिलैक्सेशन पेरिस्टाइसिस वाला एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू कॉज द सिक्रीशन सिक्रीशन है ना सो याद रखना एस एस से सिक्रीशन होता है राइट right? एंड मायो से क्या होता है मोटिलिटी आती है राइट देन एक्सट्रेंसिक सिस्टम क्या होता है it is your ans system the sympathetic system if the sympathetic system is activated it is going to inhibit the secretions via inhibiting the mesner's plexus and it inhibits the motility via inhibiting the uh, myentric plexus also parasympathetic system kya hota hai yaar parasympathetic is rest and digest it is stimulating the motility and it is going to stimulate the सिक्रीशन ऑल्सो सो इसीलिए बोलते हैं कॉन्स्टिपेशन हो गया तो क्या करो रिलैक्स करो राइट मोटिलिटी इंक्रीज राइट पेरिस्टाइसिस पेरिस्टाइसिस कैसे होता है यार पहले बताओ वॉट आर द पेस मेकर सेल्स पेस मेकर सेल्स आर इंटरस्टिशियल सेल्स ऑफ कहाल विच वी हैव ऑलरेडी रिटर्न इंटरस्टिशियल सेल्स ऑफ कहाल राइट वॉट दे आर गोइंग टू डू वंस दे आर एक्टिवेटेड दे आर गोइंग टू इंक्रीज द कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल वेव है ना तो कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल वेव कैसे आती है यार पहले तो मुझे फूड बोलस बनाना पड़ेगा राइट फूड बोलस के आगे देर आर सम न्यूरोन्स विच आर गोइंग टू गेट स्टिमुलेटेड विच इज गोइंग टू कॉज रिलैक्सेशन इन द फ्रंट फूड बोलस का रिलैक्सेशन रिलैक्सेशन कौन कौन से करते हैं यार नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड एंड वी आई पी वेजो एक्टिव इंटेस्टाइनल पेप्टाइड एनओ वी आई पी they are going to cause relaxation so this will look something like this okay this will look something like this relaxation karenge and at the back what is going to happen at the back there will be constriction there will be constriction who is going to help me in the constriction acetylcholine serotonin and even the substance p substance p is going to be helping me out to contract what is going to happen aage se pressure kam ho raha hai piche se pressure bad raha hai the food particle is going to move forward that is known as peristalsis this is known as anterograde help this is known as retrograde retro se push kar rahe hain anterior se dilate kar rahe hain so that i can go aage no vip aage ja raha hai मास मूवमेंट क्या होता है मास मूवमेंट मास मूवमेंट इज नथिंग बट दी डेफिकेशन पॉटी आना इज नथिंग बट मास मूवमेंट सिंपल मैसिव वेव ऑफ प्रोपल्शन दैट इज नथिंग बट मास वेव है ना वन टू थ्री टाइम्स अ डे इज नॉर्मल तीन से ज्यादा बार आ रही है तो चेक करवा लो थोड़ा एंटीबायोटिक प्रोबायोटिक ले लो है ना इट इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग इन द इन्फेंट्स एंड एज सुन एज दे ईट दे फील द अर्ज टू गो टू द पॉटी है ना कैसे आती है एज सुन एज द न्यू फूड कम्स इन द स्टमक न्यू फूड कम्स इन द स्टमक इट इज गोइंग टू स्टिमुलेट द कोलोनिक एक्टिविटी राइट बट रिमेंबर वॉट एवर द वॉट एवर फूड ही हैज जस्ट नाउ इट एंड दैट इज नॉट गोइंग टू कम आउट द प्रीवियस रेमनेंट पार्टिकल वॉट वॉज देर द फीस इज गोइंग टू कम आउट वाई बिकॉज इट इज क्लीनिंग द जी आई टी फॉर बेटर ऑब्जॉर्बन ऑफ न्यू न्यूट्रिय दैट आर कमिंग थ्रू द स्टमक है ना so stomach uh, as soon as the food is going to come in the stomach that is going to activate the peristalsis in the colon so that we can clear out that feces particle all right so please remember this is known as mass movement what is migratory motor complex yaar hunger pangs jo aapko abhi aa rahe hain पेट में चूहे दौड़ना दैट इज योर हंगर पैंक्स ये कब आते हैं जब आपका पेट खाली होता है खाने के बाद नहीं आते दे आर प्रेजेंट इन द इंटर डाइजेस्टिव फेज यू हैव इटन योर लंच लॉन्ग बैक नाउ यू आर वेटिंग फॉर योर डिनर सो इन ड्यूरिंग दिस फेज यू आर गोइंग टू हैव दंगर पैंक्स एंड टिल वॉट पॉइंट इट इज गोइंग टू गो होल फ्रॉम द स्टमक इट इज गोइंग टू क्रॉस ओवर टिल द इंटेस्टाइन दैट इज डिस्टल आइलियम स्टमक एंड डिस्टल आइलियम में दैट मीन स्टमक एंड इंटेस्टाइन में यू कैन सी दिस माइग्रेट इन मोटर कॉम्प्लेक्सेस कितने बार के लिए होते हैं नाइनटी टू वन हंड्रेड एंड टेन मिनट्स ओके नाउ वॉट दे आर डूइंग दे आर ऑल्सो रिमूविंग द रेमन पार्टिकल्स वॉट एवर वर लेफ्ट देर राइट इफ द न्यू गेस्ट इज कमिंग यू क्लीन योर रूम 
right so same happens over here if the new food is coming we are going to remove the old particles and that's why it is going to clear the git clean the git that's why we call it as sweeper of the git or it is known as broomstick of the git who is going to help us out motilin motilin is secreted by mo cell and please write down it is not m cell it is mo cell okay now gastric acid secretion there are three phases remember maximum acid secretion is going to happen in the gastric phase right and the gastric acid secretion will be reduced and the bicarbonate secretion will be started as soon as my food goes in the intestine intestine cephalic phase of gastric acid secretion kahan pada tha which regulatory mechanism bachcho please batao mujhe fatafat se batao i cannot wait now feed forward system feed forward wonderful wonderful right and who is going to help us out mainly in this two vagus is going to help us out acetylcholine is going to help us out when you are thinking of food <laughs> i am talking about the food hai na delicious food burger pizza aur hum desi log hain to dal roti dal makhani ya fir paneer jo bhi aapko pasand ho hai na if you see the food if you think about the food or the smell of the food is coming aroma of the food is coming your vagus nerve is stimulated and 20 to 30% of the gastric acid secretion will start as soon as the food goes in the stomach that is also going to activate the vagus and that will cause the maximum acid secretion that is nothing but 60 to 70% of the secretion ye solve karo inaccurate kaun sa hai isme aapko yaad karna hai silk ya g silk g cell se nikalta hai gastrin s cell se nikalta hai secretin i cell se i cell se kya nikalta hai bachcho i cell se nikalta hai c c k you have to remember this two hai na aur k cell se nikalta hai g i p i kis mein aa raha hai i isme aa raha hai but i cell yahan par hai k isme aa raha hai par k yahan par hai so that's why please remember these two are different hai na l cell l cell se kya nikalta hai batao बताओ बताओ एल सेल से क्या निकलता है आई एम गोइंग टू हैव जी एल पी राइट एंड एमओ सेल से जस्ट नाउ वी टॉक्ड अबाउट मोटेलन है ना नाउ दे हैव रिटर्न एम सेल्स ओवर हियर तो ये गलत है ये इनएक्यूरेटली मैच है एम सेल्स क्या होते हैं दे आर माइक्रोफोल्ड सेल्स व्हिच आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द इम्यूनिटी आपने पढ़ा होगा गाल्ट क्या होता है गाल्ट जी आई टी एसोसिएटेड ल्यूम्फॉइड टिश्यू विच आर प्रेजेंट इन दस पैचेस है ना सो दीज आर द माइक्रोफोल्ड सेल्स दे आर प्रेजेंट इन माई पेयर्स पैचेस दे गिव द इम्यूनिटी दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू रिलीज द मोटेलिन तो जी सिल्क एमओ याद रखना है ना अब आते हैं पराइटल सेल्स पे पराइटल सेल्स पे आई एम गोइंग टू हैव थ्री थिंग्स विच आर गोइंग टू इंक्रीज माई एच प्लस एसिड सिक्रीशन कौन कौन से है वेगस नर्व विच इज गोइंग टू रिलीज द एसिटाइल कोलिन राइट देन हिस्टमीन कौन से रिसेप्टर पे एक्ट करते हैं प्लीज लिख लो एच टू रिसेप्टर पे अगर आप इसको ब्लॉक करना चाहोगे फार्मा हो चुकी है बता दीजिए ये सारे टिडिन 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 वाले ड्रग कौन से होते हैं हिस्टमीन ब्लॉकर्स होते हैं और एसिटाइल कोलिन को ब्लॉक करने के लिए ये वाले रिसेप्टर स्पेशली एम वन के लिए पायरसिपिन पहले यूज होती थी अब नहीं यूज होती है ना एंड इफ आई वॉन्ट टू ब्लॉक दिस then acetyl coli uh, this uh, h plus secretion is reduced slightly but if i block this proton pump itself that to reverse irreversibly that is going to be your ppi ppi but who is going to inhibit the acid secretion somatostatin is going to inhibit the acid secretion please please remember that okay please remember that yahan pe inhibit likh do all right coming to the uh, second last <laughs> slide uh the iron reabsorption you have to remember that iron reabsorption ke bare mein kya pucha hua hai right iron cannot be reabsorbed in the fe3 plus form ferric form mein nahi ho sakta we have to convert that into ferrous form apna apna as as wala form bhi wo apnayega kab jab as wala form hoga hai na so we need to convert that from fe3 plus to fe2 plus now once i convert it with the help of reductase dmt1 is going to help me to reabsorb from the lumen into the cell 
So please read the question carefully whether they have asked reabsorption into the cell question pucha hua hai into the enterocyte then my answer is going to be DMT1. But if they asked into the capillaries from the enterocyte my answer should be ferropotin ferropotin all right and please remember this is the hephistine hephistine kya hota hai hephistine is going to help me to convert this fe3 plus into fe2 plus back again kyun kyunki fe2 plus hi hai which can cross the cell membrane all right fe3 plus mein it cannot cross the cell membrane so hephistine is going to help me out to convert that into fe2 plus and who is going to transport transport the iron transferrin transferrin is going to transport store kis form mein hota hai apoferritin mein store hota hai store hota hai all right transfer hota hai transferrin mein all right so please remember that now two question on this topic two question on this topic delicate very delicate hormone uh, a vitamin kaun sa hota hai b12 nazuk kali hai na kaun hota hai chui mui vitamin b12 very chui mui hai na it requires protection from everywhere protection from the stomach this acid is given by the heptocorin which is released from the uh, salivary gland remember there are two things about the इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर कहां से रिलीज हुआ इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर इज रिलीज फ्रॉम द पर राइटल सेल्स पर राइटल सेल्स ओके बट द इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर इज नॉट गोइंग टू बाइंड टू द वाइटामिन बी ट्वेल्व इन द स्टमक इट सेल्फ इट इज गोइंग टू गो इन द ड्यूडन फर्स्ट वेन द हेप्टोकोरिन इज सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम द वाइटामिन बी ट्वेल्व देन ओनली द इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर इज गोइंग टू बाइंड टू इट एंड वेयर दिस वाइटामिन बी ट्वेल्व इज गोइंग टू गेट रीअब्सॉर्ब प्लीज रिमेंबर टर्मिनल आइलियम में आपके विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व का रीअब्सॉर्बन हो जाता है अगर मैंने लगाया क्या एंटीबॉडीज आई हैव क्रिएटेड और जनरेटेड एंटीबॉडीज अगेंस्ट माय पराइटल सेल्स द इंट्रेंसिक फैक्टर कैन नॉट बी प्रोड्यूस एंड इट कैन नॉट प्रोटेक्ट माय विटामिन बी ट्वेल्व इन द intestine from various enzymes so i'm going to have the pernicious anemia where the vitamin b12 deficiency is going to be there this is the homework for you you have to do the homeostatic points right most common regulation kaisa hai jaise for example negative feedback is the most common regulation main lipid kaun sa hai phospholipid barriers kaun hote hain tight junction सेंसेशन कौन होता है कैप जंक्शन वाटर का रूल क्या पढ़ा है हमने सिक्सटी फोर्टी ट्वेंटी रूल टोटल बॉडी वाटर आई सी एफ एंड ई सी एफ है ना देन डाइज यूज फॉर दिस इज द साइमन एंड प्लाज्मा इज द इवांस का ब्लू डाई है ना इवांस का ब्लू डाई एक्टिव एंड पैसिव लिख लो प्राइमरी एक्टिव सेकेंडरी एक्टिव वेजिकुलर ट्रांसपोर्ट इसमें आता है आपका डिफ्यूजन एंड ऑस्मोसिस डिफ्यूजन में आपका सिंपल डिफ्यूजन एंड फैसिलिटेटेड डिफ्यूजन लाइक दैट यू हैव टू कवर ऑल द स्लाइड दीज आर द होमियोस्टैटिक पॉइंट यू हैव टू हैव टू रिमेंबर ओके डायवेलेंट कैटाइन कौन सा होता है डायवेलेंट पूछा तो मैग्नीशियम ये कौन सा इक्विलिब्रियम पोटेंशियल इज गिवन बाई विच फॉर्मूला नर्स्ट इक्वेशन नर्स्ट इक्विलिब्रियम लाइक दैट नोकिया बाइंडिंग साइड से ये वो सब कर लो राइट इफ यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम प्लीज 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 लेट मी नो इन द ग्रुप इट सेल्फ राइट अगर नहीं आता है वी कैन सॉल्व दीज पॉइंट अगेन राइट नाउ थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बींग विद मी थैंक यू सो 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 वेरी मच अ लिटिल प्रोग्रेस ईच डे एड सब टू बिग रिजल्ट यू हैव टू हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस वाई बिकॉज रिमेंबर I know that you are going to feel anxious. I know that it is going to be difficult, but you have to continue. अगर यहाँ पर give up कर दिया, you are going to lose the race. Final time पे आके nitro booster on करना होता है, गाड़ी को shut off नहीं करना होता. So please remember, no matter. I know that दुख 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 is going to happen all the time, but nitro booster on करो, गाड़ी को stop मत करो. This is the final line. You are very near to the final line. You have to turn on your nitro boosters. Anna, thank you so much for being with me till the last moment of this class. Very, very, very good. All right. Thank you, thank you for being such a nice student. Such a nice, nice, wonderful comments I saw. It feels very lively. Otherwise, it feels very stupid to talk to the camera. Okay. Yes. If you pass me, please let me know also that, uh, ma'am, we have passed. I'll be uh, feel immensely happy. All right. 
चलो टेक केयर बाय बाय गुड नाइट हैव अ गुड मील एंड हैव अ गुड स्लीप बिफोर स्लीपिंग प्लीज 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 सॉल्व दैट होमियोस्टैटिक पॉइंट्स ओके बाय बाय पार्टी करो चिल मारो रिलैक्स करो इट्स टाइम फॉर द डायस्टॉल ओके गुड नाइट गुड नाइट थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच और राइट बाय बाय गुड नाइट